What's the most awkward thing that's happened at a sleepover? Probably about 14. This girl decided to have a big slumber party for her birthday. Well, she was stereotypically uncool, wore t-shirts with wolves on them, bragged about how far she could stick the arm of her glasses up her nose, and kind of always smelled like dogs. I was about one social rung above her. My friend and I were the only people that showed up at her big party. Her mom made us hot dogs, and dinner was silent. Her dad arrived and started screaming about how her two gigantic German shepherd hadn't gotten enough affection today. He ended up throwing a hot dog at the girl's mother. Later on I made a joke of the word, gracious as, gracias because I was 13. Her dad pulled me into the kitchen and screamed at me. I was shaken up and scared so we all went to bed. In the middle of the night my friend and I woke up with the girl sitting upright between us and shaking us awake. We tried to figure out what was going on, and she just said, you know, we could kiss. Having no interest in such things at that age, I was thoroughly disturbed. My friend called her mom, and claimed we were sick, and had to be picked up immediately. It was just too much discomfort for one night. 13 or 14 years old. All night RPG session, pen, and paper, with my buddies in my friend's basement. His awesome and very traditionally Chinese mom brings us course after course of food throughout the evening as I vainly try to GM an adventure where my friends are more interested in creating and game simulations of being drunk. GURPS had a skill for that, like everything else, than in actually playing the game. The night wears on, and we finally pass out with dawn quickly approaching. Shortly afterward I wake up with a start. My stomach didn't like the awesome Chinese food as much as the rest of me did. Jump up off the basement floor and bolt for the bathroom, only I'm really tall and have a problem with passing out when I get up too quickly. Black out in the doorway and full hard. Wake up a moment later with my friend standing over me. That's when it hits me, that looming feeling of dread, when you realize that you had just sheet your pants in front of a room full of your peers. Is this real, or am I dreaming? These terror-filled thoughts are interrupted by a renewed gurgling in my stomach. Apparently it is all too real. I claw my way into the bathroom and slam the door shut on my startled friends. I pull my pants down and unleash a foul kind of hell in the toilet even as sheet continues to soak into my ill-fitting jeans. This happened in the 90s. But wait, there's more. Suddenly I need to vomit because this delicious food apparently cannot leave my body fast enough. I do the only rational thing that can be done and start puking into the garbage can as I continue to add to the mountain of poop underneath me. Apparently I had offended some vengeful deity that day because, obviously, the basket is wicker. So there I am, pooping everything that can be pooped as I vomit into a garbage can that is, at best, straining it. The floor us covered in vomit, my pants are full of sheet, and that's the day that my social anxiety started. Welcome to the next decade of your life, kid. TLDR. Rolled a critical fail on not cheating everywhere. Edit. Thanks for the double gold. Reddit. I'm glad that my most shameful moment could turn into one of my most prideful. Edit 2. Triple gold now. Holy crap. I appreciate it, stranger. But let's spread this joy around to some of the other amazing stories in this thread. I have a story of embarrassing sleepwalking while blackout drunk. When I was around 15, I was staying the night at one of my best friend's house. We decided to steal a bottle of whiskey from his parents' kitchen and walk down to the park down the street to drink it. It was around 10pm. I immediately started taking big chugs, dead sober and no tolerance. About 30 minutes later I was blackout drunk, but do remember small tidbits. We climbed the roof of the elementary school nearby, right next to the park, and tried to break into the classrooms. Eventually I became became somewhat belligerent and my friend got annoyed. It took him about an hour to get me to leave with him. This is where my memory fades completely. We walk back to his house, and, apparently, my friend told me to just lay down on the couch in his living room. At this point he was really fed up with how drunk I was, and just wanted to go to sleep. He said I agreed, and laid down on the couch as he went to his room. And this is where things get a little weird. I get up, in the middle of my sleep and I walk into his older brother's room and just stared at him in his sleep. My friend had just changed rooms a week ago with his older brother, 
so I guess in my blackout stupor I assumed it was still his room. He wakes up and asks me what the hell I'm doing. I say nothing and proceed to lay on the floor. His brother is weirded out but decides to just leave me be and let me sleep on the floor, probably assuming I'm drunk. About an hour later, according to him, he awakens to me rolling around and puking all over his floor. At this point I'm entirely incoherent, so he decides to just deal with it in the morning and leave me be. About an hour or so after that, I get up and walk into his parents room across the hall and start puking all over their floor. His parents are pissed, needless to say, but somewhat understanding. His mom gets up, cleans up the puke, I'm completely blacked out, and takes me to the shower. She takes my clothes off, except for my underwear, and puts me in the shower and turns it on. This is all according to her, god knows what exactly happened, and what I was saying. For all I know, my dick was popping out of my boxes, I never felt the need to ask. Anyways, the next morning I woke up in his basement with nothing but underwear on, that is stiff from dried puke. With virtually no memory, after we decided to try and break into the school. I talked briefly about what had happened with him and his family as I grabbed my clothes and left. Most embarrassing night of my life. This was both awkward and kind of scary. I was 8 or 9 years old. My friend was having a birthday party and a bunch of us were sleeping over in the basement. The basement itself was pretty creepy and we had spent much of the night telling horror stories until we eventually went to sleep. At around 2am, we were woken up by one of the girls stomping up and down the stairs. She was yelling and crying, I can't remember what she was yelling specifically, but it was basically nonsense. It basically looked and sounded like she was possessed. A few of the girls started asking her to go back to sleep, and she basically just angrily screamed no, and continued going up and down the stairs. Finally, she eventually stopped, without a word, and walked back to bed found out in the morning that she had been sleepwalking and on top of it had wet the bed. She was really embarrassed and we all felt really awkward at breakfast that morning. TLDR friend woke us all up acting like she was possessed by some kind of demon, turned out to be sleepwalking and peed the bed. My friend in high school had the house where all of our friends would play Smash Brothers tournaments until our eyes bled, then go to sleep in his massive RV parked outside. I wasn't, and still am not, a morning person, so I'd usually be the last one out of the RV. One night, I fall asleep on the pull-out bed in my jeans and all, with just a blanket covering me. As I wake up, I'm still in that half-awake half-asleep haze, and I feel something rustling in my nether regions. I figure it's just morning wood, and go back to sleep. Then it happens. I feel it again, wake up for real this time, and my dick is outside of my zipper. Pants still on, blanket still covering, and as I look over, my friend is laying next to me, he and I being the only two in the RV, staring directly at the ceiling. I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, and prayed he didn't just pull my binus out of my pants while I was asleep, so I packed up and headed home. Lo and behold, an hour later I get a text saying he was so sorry, he didn't know what he was thinking. Yeah man, you pulled my dick out of my pants while I was sleeping. I'm gonna need a little space. TLDR, my Venus beauty rest was disturbed. Update, I've lost contact over the years after he went to a different college, but he's now in a happy relationship after he came out a year or two ago. The worst part of this story is until my girlfriend and I met, he was the only one, besides me, to have fondled my twig and berries. My friends were ruthless with those jokes. When I was about 11 my new next door neighbors moved in, and the youngest son around my age invited me to a sleepover. He was a nice enough fella if I recall, but when we went into his room and he was showing me around, he goes one secretary I forgot something. Well when you have to piss like a metherfica, that one secretary feels like an eternity. I considered finding the nearest bathroom, but was worried I'd get lost or be intruding. I know, no logic there, but I was 12, and they were the first Jewish family I'd ever met so everything was a bit odd. Anyway, sure enough I pissed myself real good, and before Ben could make it back to his room, I bolted to the door to walk back home of course. I'm not trying to hang out with this guy with piss all over myself. 
On my way out the mom asks me why I'm leaving and my response, which I thought at the time was a pretty good one on the spot, and looking back certainly is not. I said you know, sometimes you just need to go home. I walk next door to my house, tossed the urine covered shorts in the laundry basket, and went upstairs doing whatever the fuck I did when I was 12 for the remainder of the evening. At dinner my parents confronted me in an odd manner, acting as if they caught me doing something, and my mom asked, so you were wearing your red shorts this morning. You changed since then. Is there anything you want to tell us? In the first lie I can ever remember in my life, I promptly responded well, I was playing with my hot wheels, and was moving all over the house, putting them in my pocket to carry them, and I decided these pair of shorts have bigger pockets. So I put them on to carry more Hot Wheels they called me out on that sheet right away, but I'm pretty sure I played with hella Hot Wheels that night anyway. Does a boy scout trip count? Well if it does here it goes. I was in BS in an inner city area. The older kids were dicks. Well my first weekend trip my dad loaded me up on goodies to share. I fell asleep and the older kids raided my bag and took just about everything. So it sucked, but whatever. I go home and tell my dad, and he was pissed but really composed, which was odd for my Irish longshoreman dad. So next month is my next trip and my dad made a big batch of brownies, but told me not to eat any, or share with my friends. He told me leave them in my bag like I did last time. Sure enough I woke up, and they were gone, and three kids were sheeting themselves like crazy. Yup my pops tex lacks the brownies. He showed up that same morning to the campsite with another goodie bag for me to share. Never had my bag raided again tldr older boy scouts robbed my treats so my dad literally made them sheet themselves. Too late to entertain anyone with this post, which will surely be buried but here goes. I was on a camping trip in the far north, Arctic, and there was a night where about 6 people managed to get a decent night of sleep in a room of a local's home. We all shared the room and everyone fell sound asleep because they were exhausted from days of hiking. Except me, that is, because I don't sleep often and was wound up with the storm outside. In the middle of the night, as I'm laying there looking out the window, I hear a really really weird sound. Like this rubbing of silk. It gets more and more intense and for a moment I'm having this horror story moment where there just has to be some weirdness coming to get us all. The sound turns into a slight thumping and gets more and more intense. I look around and to my shock, see what is going on. One of the shyest girls I have ever met, I mean, I'm talking an extreme level of shyness, is face down, as up, finger faking the ever loving sheet out of herself. As far as I could tell, she was out cold and having some wonky such dream. It was really awkward. I didn't want to watch, so I didn't, but it was a small room, close quarters, and there was no escaping the sound of skluck thump, skluck thump, skluck thump, skluck, 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 skluck. She finally awoke with a start, and out of the corner of my eye I saw her look around the room, probably realizing what happened, and praying to holy baby Jesus that nobody saw. I have three short stories that are actually quite funny. First one be like 12, and have a friend over that is a few years younger, little brother of my sister's best friend. In the middle of the night I wake up to crying. Turn on the lights, the friend has somehow gotten stuck in his sleeping bag, and was upside down in it. I was crying with laughter, while getting my parents to help out. Second one I'm 21 at a party, everyone drinking having a good time, and we sleep in his yard in different tents. One tent had three persons lying in it, and it was a small one person tent two girls and a guy were sleeping there. At a moment the guy wakes up, because he gets poked in the back. Turns out one of the girls was furiously masked too, baiting but the lack of room caused her to poke him in the back with her elbow. He got annoyed and asked if she needed help, or would finish fast. She didn't got disturbed, and said she was almost done. And last but not least this happened to a friend of mine. First time he was sleeping over at his girlfriend's house they went clubbing and went home. In the middle of the night he started sleepwalking and walked right into her parents bedroom and climbed into bed with them. Best part, they noticed him getting in bed with them but they didn't care and let him sleep. The next morning he awoke in between his in-laws. It's a few years later now and he and the girl are happily married with two kids. 
the wedding toast was just hilarious. This may not fit the theme exactly since I was a little older when this happened, but here is my sleepover story. So I was 17, and it was my first week of college. I had met a guy at the DDR machine, and we hit it off pretty well. He invited me over to his apartment one day to meet his roommate's cat. I took the bait and went over. We ended up watching movies, playing with the cat, and hung out until 4am. Around that time he told me that I should probably head back to my dorm. I insisted that he either walk me back or let me crash on the couch until morning. I was new to the campus and had no idea how to find my way back to my dorm that night. He said I could sleep in his room, so I got a pillow and got on his floor and tried to sleep. The lights went off and after a few minutes he climbed out of his bed and joined me on the floor. A few minutes later he insisted that I just sleep in his bed because it was much more comfortable. I was tired and that night had gone well enough, might as well cuddle, right? Well, I was just lying there next to him in bed and I noticed some slight vibrations. I didn't pay any mind to it because I figured it was nothing. Soon after I felt something hit the side of my face. The guy apparently was mass too, baiting without me noticing, and just hid on my face slash in my hair. I didn't know how to react, so I just started awkwardly laughing and made him clean my face slash hair. TLDR got invited over to meet a cat got just in my hair. Well, not really a sleepover. I mean I was like 25. Anyway, my wife and I had gone on a snowshoeing trip to somewhere around Yosemite with a couple of her co-workers, a dude and a chick who were not together. We stayed at a hostel one night, and the room we got had a full-size bed and two bunk beds. One would think, given we were the couple and they were the single people, we'd get the bed. But, it came up that we were all in the same room, and tired from snowshoeing, and wouldn't be doing anything but sleeping so who cares. So I took the top bunk, the least desirable bed in the room, my wife the bottom bunk, and the other two shared the full bed. This room was small, as you would expect in a hostel, with a shared bathroom for like 5 other similar rooms. So cramped, my wife could have easily reached out touched the other people's feet from her bunk without stretching. So I wake up in the middle of the night, because I'm not comfortable, but before I can roll over I hear the sound of a very jowly bulldog trying to get the last of the mayonnaise out of a very drooly slick jar. It's the only way I can describe it. As my ears tune in more, I hear soft moans of passion and whispers of delight. Now, rumor has it the dude with us was hung like a female teacher in a Japanese cartoon. Which is to say, a cork like a Pringles can with an apple on top. And it sounded like he was jamming it into a 5 gallon bucket of pudding. At first I'm frozen, like, I can't move, I can't move, this is so weird, but then I was like man fuck that. So I rolled over, and they stopped. Oh my god do you think they can hear us? The stupid chick with the cavernous bus he says. The dude mumbles something incoherent in reply. I roll over again, and I hear my wife roll over too. It's quiet for a bit, and then, a slow sharp, and a low moan. Followed by another. And then another another and another another another, and there at it again. I guess he somehow managed to finally come, even though he was faking what sounded like a plastic grocery bag bulging with fish guts, because the frequency eddied, swirled, and finally died after one final scala, accompanied by a barely stifled HNG. The next morning everyone was sleeping at a chaste distance. I was up first, and went to the bathroom. You know how you don't notice a smell in a room, until after you've left and come back? Yeah. Yeah. It was bad. It. It. I felt immediately saturated with the stink, and like Agent Smith I can't, but feel as though I was somehow, infected by it. So I guess not really sleepover, not really awkward so much as horrible, but who gives a fact no one's gonna read this anyway. When I was 16, I stayed over at my friend's house. We had been out to the cinema and had come back and were watching another film at his house. His elder sister, who was about 21 at the time, came rolling in at about 1am and stood in the doorway to say goodnight to us. Now, I had a massive crush on his sister and, as this was in South Africa, we were lying on these fold-out camp bed things in only a pair of shorts each as it was a hot night. 
Being 16 and able to, I got a near instantaneous erection at the sight of his sister, my dream woman, so as she had walked off, and we were in a room lit only by the TV, I pulled my shorts down to reveal my raging manhood and uttered the now immortal line Jesus, Mike, this is what your sister does to me. His sister had come back into the room we were in through a door behind us, and, as my goods were on display, leant over and tapped me on the head, and said thanks Mart, but could you turn the volume down a little bit? To this day, I have never heard laughter so loud and uncontrollable, as that which was coming from my best friend. I'm gonna go with the first hand job I ever got. It was at a church retreat and we were both in separate sleeping bags. The initial tug job itself wasn't entirely awful, despite being mildly chaffing, but she didn't notice when I had finished. So for approximately 20 seconds, this girl who had been nice enough to christen my penis with its first contact with another consenting female, mashed my dick into limpness with unrelenting adolescent fury. I eventually asked her timidly to stop and murmured that I was done. The next day word obviously spread like hell, which is expected of teenagers. However it would be noted that my mom was one of the facilitators of the retreat and I spent the next two days in constant fear of her finding out. Combine that with bashful glancing eye contact during breakfast and similarly uncomfortable encounters during various leadership and spirituality exercises and it made for an quite an awkward experience. That, and you know, forgetting a change of clothes and spending Saturday and Sunday in my cum encrusted boxer briefs was a real nifty constant reminder. TLDR first HJ at a church retreat plus teenage shame equals a story for my friends at home to laugh at me about. Sick. In the fifth grade I spent the night at my now lifelong friend's house for the first time. They had just had their carpets replaced earlier that day or week. On the way into the house's mom said boys, take your shoes off when you get inside. I was like fuck that. We got a video game to play and ran upstairs. We were hanging out playing Turek 2 for like an hour when we got thirsty. I went downstairs with my buddy to get some Gatorade. On our way to the kitchen we saw this amorphous lump sitting in the living room. Upon further inspection, it was a huge pile of dog sheet. Upon further further inspection, it had been tracked in on my shoe and went all the way from the kitchen through the living room, up the stairs, and into the bonus room fac. So we grab some red Gatorade and keep playing Turek. Meanwhile, his mom, who is as southern and mild-mannered as they come, is on her hands and knees on the stairs cleaning dog sheet off her new carpet. In retrospect, I don't know why I wasn't cleaning. About 20 minutes later I got excited during our video game adventure and spilled half of my red Gatorade onto the, seemingly, only area of the carpet not tainted with dog sheet. After we finished playing Turek I decided I would only drink water for the rest of the night. I was slightly mortified at all the destruction I had caused. We started faking around on the treadmill in his bonus room. Despite my poor beverage handling abilities, I decided to drink some water while faking around on the treadmill. I fell off and spilled my water all over their answering machine and fried it. After that I clogged the faking toilet which overflowed at 3 in the morning. My friend had to go wake up his mom and tell her. The next morning, these patient souls had somehow not murdered me or kicked me out of their home. So I ended up breaking a few more items. My buddy and I started hawsing around on his old antique bed. I jumped off a chair and onto the bed and cracked the bed frame. Fuck. My buddy then showed me the sand dollar his grandfather brought back from Florida for him. I crushed it in my hand. TL. Doctor broke what seemed like every faking thing in my friend's house the first time I went over. Didn't go over again until high school. Casualty list. Dog sheet tracked all over new carpet red Gatorade spilled on new carpet broken answering machine clogged and overflowing with sheet toilet at 3am broken antique bed frame broken sand dollar destroyed my welcome in that house. Edit hey, I'm glad so many of you enjoyed my story. To whoever asked why my friend trusted me with that sand dollar I have no idea. It was as if, as soon as I held it, I knew I would destroy it. And I did. I realized what a little bastard I was that night, although none of it was intentional. I still break sheet sometimes, but now it's mostly my girlfriend's stuff. Luckily she is very patient and forgiving. Thanks to someone out there for the gold. 
I saw my cousins on my dad's side for the first time since I was a small child at a family reunion. My older male cousins thought I was pretty cool for my age, so they invited me to come play Guitar Hero and video games all night with them before the second day of the reunion. All was well, I was popular among them, I could belt Tenacious D's best songs in a great little fat kid voice, and I had the body of a heavy lifter. I woke up the next day with my head under the edge of the couch. I pulled it out and looked around, all of them are staring at me. My aunt was more composed, she offered me a muffin, and we all silently got into the car. Last night was fun. I said, trying to break the silence. Why is everyone being so quiet? No answer. Finally as we pulled into my grandparents house my cousin said, you talk in your sleep. When we got there mom scooped me and my siblings into the car and we went home, foregoing the second day of the reunion. Nobody has ever told me what I said, why it was so bad, and to this day I haven't been invited to a single family function since. In my sleepless nights my brain burns white hot to know what I did or said. I was actually thinking about this yesterday, and wondered what happened to the kid, and how he is now. This was 1993 or 1994, I was going to a Catholic school, and I was about 9 or 10. It was my friend's birthday and he invited all of the boys, 15 of us, in our class to a sleepover. That's what most of us did for our birthdays. But he invited every boy instead of just a few of his really good friends. There was this one kid Ryan that none of us really liked. He was way too touchy with us, and always followed John around. He made us uncomfortable. We were all children, mind you and this was the early slash mid 90s. Well anyway, cut to the morning. Ryan was the first one to wake up. And I don't remember who woke up second. But whoever it was started yelling that Ryan was leaning over John while he was still asleep and was about to kiss him. Sure enough, when we were woken Ryan sprung up and ran outside. John's parents told all of everyone else's parents and we all told everyone else at school what happened. Ryan never came back to school. I feel bad for him. I can't imagine what it must have been like for him and his family to deal with something like that. I wish we had handled it better and that we had been more accepting. I even knew gay people back then. I feel ashamed of myself for telling other people that Ryan tried to kiss John while he was sleeping. I really hope he's happy and comfortable with who he is. I can't explain how bad I feel about having any part in that situation. I wish I knew then what I know now. Okay, so I'm a sophomore in high school at this point. I had just moved to this new city a few months ago, and I was just starting to make some friends. I used to go to this really uptight private school, and was a bit sheltered from a lot of sheet. I wasn't even allowed to go to sleepovers with over girls there, because my parents were afraid I'd get into trouble with the public school riffraff, so this was actually my first sleepover. Let's call the girl Jane. When I arrived at Jane's house, I was having a lot of fun. I had known these girls for about 3 months, and I was already pretty close to them. Around 3 o'clock in the morning, Jane sneaks into her mom's liquor cabinet and steal a bottle of tequila, and brings it back into the room. Now, I'd never had a drink in my life. It was such a scary thing to think about. One thing led to another, and I'd somehow taken about 3 shots of tequila. I'm a lightweight myself so that hit me like a freight train. I was dizzy and pretty jiggly, so I decided to go lay down in Jane's bed. Everyone was started to settle down and get comfortable on the couch or the floor after a while. Jane climbs into bed with me, and I start to freak out. I'd never been in a bed with another girl, and it was terrifying. Next thing I know, Jane is uncomfortably close to me, and has her arms wrapped around my waist. I'm super freaking out now, and I try to push her off. However, being somewhat intoxicated, I only give a weak attempt. She pulls me towards her and kisses my neck. I'm so confused as to what's happening and I have no idea what to do. I try to pull away and she grabs my face just puts her tongue in my mouth. What really scares me is that I'm starting to get into it. So I say fuck it and start sloppily making out with her. Having no kissing experience, I'm sure it was awful. Fast forward to today, and I'm still friends with her, and it's pretty kick ass. TLDR sheltered sophomore me gets drunk, and makes out with my friend. Me and two friends had a sleepover at another friend's house when we were maybe 12, 13. 
and we were trying to figure out things to do after we played Dungeons and Dragons. Friend of mine decided to create a game where it would test our real life thief abilities by turning off all the lights in the house and sneaking around the house in the pitch black. The object of the game was to throw a tennis ball at the person and you only had 3 tennis balls. We had 1 minute to find a place to start slash hide, so I went snuck upstairs really quietly into the computer room. A few moments later I hear one of my friends come into the room, but he didn't notice slash see me. Then my other friend came in the room. I eventually said something, and we just decided to turn on my friend's computer and play some Diablo 2. So my other friend is downstairs crawling slash sneaking around, and we hear him throwing tennis balls and them bouncing off the walls. It was pretty awkward to know that he was down there in the pitch black throwing tennis balls and things he thought were us, but it was even more awkward because we knew he was cheating by throwing more than the three balls he was allowed to throw. We let this go on until he broke a lamp, and we heard oh shit. We see the downstairs light turn on then he walks upstairs, and opens the door to the computer room, and sees us playing Diablo 2 on his computer. You dickheads, I broke my mom's lamp. When I was 15, I had went over to my buddy's house to play video games, and crashed there for the night. It was his sister, his sister's friend, him and me. Well everything started out normal, we played video games and his sister and her friend were busy being beachy about us playing video games. As the night moves on, I'm still up playing video games and my buddy is asleep on the couch behind me. At this time, his sister and her friend are sitting in the living room with me watching me play games. Then they start to talk amongst each other, until his sister's friend blurts out, Do you think it would wake him up, if I gave him a blowjob right now? 15 year old me playing, I think Guitar Hero at the time, could only respond with what? Then she ask again, but this time his sister replies, yeah and he would probably like it. So as you guessed it, she crawled over to the couch, pulls his pants down, and begins to blow him. As you could guess what my friend did, he woke up shocked, but proceeded to let the Vegas alarm clock keep going. But that was not the awkward part. Well as my friend is getting blown on the couch, his sister looks at me and asks if I want a blowjob too since her brother is getting one on the couch. Well 15 year old me, as any boy at the age, didn't even hesitate with saying yes. Now I will say, his sister, she wasn't what you would call a 10. But like I always say, sometimes you got to get with a 4 to appreciate an 8. So out of view of my buddy, she slides my pants down and begins to go to town. But, according to my Johnson, this mission was a no-go. After a minute or so, she looks up and says, is there a problem? Here is the moment where you can either fight or or flight. Her brother and her friend already know that I'm having trouble, and I was red-faced like crazy. So I told her to hold on, and I got up, and went to the bathroom, shut the door, and gave myself a pep talk while fluffing my junk. Finally when I get solid or at full salute, all pride aside I open the door, walk through the living room with my pants around my ankles in front of my buddy in the back of the head of the girl that was blowing him and say let's do this. I then proceeded to get a blowjob. It was okay. TLDR slept over at my buddy's house. When he went to sleep his sister's friend woke him up by giving him a blowjob. His sister offered to give me one which I accepted but was unable to get it up. So I excused myself to the bathroom to pep talk myself and get myself stage ready. Then walked through the living room with my pants to my ankles in front of my friend to his sister so she could give me a blowjob. Damn being late, but I actually have a good story for once, even if it technically happened the next day. So when we, girls, were about 12 or 13, me and maybe 7 other girls organized a big surprise birthday party for one of my friends. Nearly our entire class were in on the idea, and the plan was that us 8, or whatever were going to have a sleepover at my house, then go out for the a few hours in the early day, then come back to my house when surprise. Our entire class would be waiting for us at my house. Neat, right? So on this VIP goost list of people that were going to spend the night at mine there were me and her other two closest friends, some fairly close friends and then, then there was Taylor. Taylor, pronounced like Taylor, had been a risky move because she was actually in the year below us which meant that most of us didn't know her very well. 
However, the birthday girl, let's call her Sarah, and Tenna had been getting on really well in the past week or so, a week being years in terms of longevity of girls' friendships back then, so we decided, sure, it's about who Sarah would want to be there, not who we want there, right? So Taylor is, after some discussion, invited and very grateful to be with the cooler, older girls. To put some context in, Sarah was a very very popular girl, not only was she very beautiful, she's a model now, American Apparel plus some magazine covers, but she was also one of the smartest girls in our year, very brave and very witty. Down to earth too, definitely not a beach. I miss her. Tenna probably looked up to her in some ways because hey, she was nice. The night progresses, and we have a lot of fun. Watch some movies, eat crappy food, gossip and the usual. Taylor, of course, is a bit shy, because she doesn't know everyone as well, so that's understandable. We are trying to make her have a good time too, and she is. We had thrown out a bunch of mattresses, sleeping bags and duvets on the living room floor, so that we could all sleep together, and obviously ended up crashing around 4am. Wake up the next morning, everyone is still in good spirits. Until Sarah goes upstairs. Her mother had gotten her a really fancy digital camera for her birthday, because she's mad for photography. Upon awakening, she discovers that this brand spanking new camera is covered in toothpaste. Toothpaste in the lens. Toothpaste inside the battery holder. Toothpaste between all the buttons. Sarah absolutely breaks down, and no one knows what to say. Ten minutes later, when goes to her bag, she discovers that all of her clothes had been shredded to little pieces by a pair of scissors. At this point, it becomes obvious that this was a personal, targeted attack and certainly no accident. It doesn't take long until accusations start flying around towards everyone, including my parents and my brother. After a massive crackdown, and after all the girl's parents had been caught, Taylor eventually confessed the following day after more things came up, like the disappearance of Sarah's treasured bracelet, found three years later in a box of cleaning supplies in the back of my bathroom, because Taylor swore she didn't touch that, and also some more of her stuff. She had explained to everyone at the party that she saw someone go upstairs after everyone had gone to sleep but couldn't see who it was and was throwing out all these reasons why another poor girl Ella was definitely the one who did it. The whole experience was just very weird to me because she was so secretive about it. I could somehow more understand if she had gone up to Sarah and punched her in the face. She had been there for over 12 hours, hung out with everyone, hugged Sarah, then when everyone else fell asleep she lay awake for what could have been hours, silently plotting, until she actively decided to sneak upstairs and use sharp objects to physically harm things that were precious to Sarah. After the cutting incident, Taylor became Taylor for a long time. She left the school that summer and moved to Colorado with her psycho mother. TLDR the birth of a potential psychopath's adoration for scissors. This happened to me when I was 16. It was the night of a friend's 18th birthday, but he was having it at a nightclub, so after trying unsuccessfully to get in, me and a couple of friends left for a house party that another person was having the same night. On the way we picked up a lot of drink, I think I personally bought a 70cl of vodka, a 6 pack of beer and a big bottle of blue WKD, which is enough to kick 23 year old me up the ass, never mind 16 year old me. So we get to this party, and there's loads of people there, and it turned out to be amazing fun. We all got smashed, and I think me and my friend left around 1.30 in the morning or something. Now my house was about 30 minutes away from the party we were at and my friend's was only 5 minutes away, so he asked if I wanted to come crash at his which I was happy to do, since it was cold and his was closer. We get back to my friends, and he offers me his bed to sleep in as his sister was at her boyfriend's that night, so my friend was gonna crash in hers. So I'm lying in my friend's bed for around 2 minutes before the room starts spinning, and I sit up and think to myself this is pretty bad, I need to get to a toilet before I. The thought is interrupted when I then spew all over my friend's bed and all over myself, an acidic pool of vodka, beer and blue WKD mixed in with that night's dinner slowly being absorbed by my friend's blue patterned quilt and mattress. I quickly panicked, realizing the gravity of the situation, and got out of his bed to head for the toilet. As I opened the door, 
to go to the bathroom my friend's little westy dog bounded into the room like a tiny hairy ninja and immediately started devouring my vomit. I wold tried to stop him, but I had bigger problems to worry about as I could feel another spew coming on. I closed the door behind me, went down to my friend's bathroom, and spewed my guts up again. Once I had finished I realized that I was also covered in spew all over my chest and on my boxes. So I cleaned my chest up quite easily, but was struggling to clean my black boxer shorts. So in my still drunken stupor I thought to myself that toothpaste would obviously be the best option for not only getting rid of the sick on my boxes, but for getting rid of the smell. So I smothered quite a large handful of white toothpaste onto my boxes, washed out what I could, and called it a day ready to conquer the sheet show upstairs in my friend's room smelling like a polo or mentis factory, wearing wet boxes with dodgy looking white stains on them. So I walked back upstairs to my friend's room quite proud of myself, until I opened the bedroom door, only to see my friend and his parents standing in the room looking in horror at the mess I had left, my friend's dad trying to restrain their dog from chowing down, if I hadn't been so embarrassed and mortified I might have found it funny, that my friend's dog had a little vomit mustache, but nothing in this moment was funny, the world would have opened up, and swallowed me whole, and I would have been happy for it to do so. But my friend's parents were just staring at me covered in toothpaste and sick with a look of complete disgust on their faces. I cleaned myself up a little more, put on my clothes, and went home to my own bed, after apologizing for like 15 minutes, and trying to explain myself, badly. Before leaving I secretly left behind whatever money I had left in my wallet on their kitchen table, around 30 pounds or so, with a little note on top apologizing again. I still haven't slept at his house since then. TLDR. I got completely smashed at a party, spewed all over my friend's bed and myself, was forced to let his dog eat it, and then stupidly used toothpaste to clean myself up. Oh I've got something for this. One summer five friends and I were at a friend's house for a birthday party. So there was six girls all 14 or 15 years old, and we were playing truth or dare. The questions were getting pretty sexual, and it got to the point where we were all naked. Someone then took a dare to have to run around the block naked. She decided she didn't want to do it by herself, so all six of us snuck out her window and ran a lap around the block bare as naked. This was at about 3 a.m., so we didn't think we'd see anyone and weren't too worried. We do the lap, didn't see anyone, it was all good. We go to sneak back in her room, and her older brother was letting the dog out the door to the backyard, which is right by her window. So her brother, about 18 at the time, saw his sister and five friends completely in the nude, running down the street towards their house, just stands there, and didn't know what to do. It was awkward as fuck. He just stood and stared, and we were all so scared he was gonna tell we just stood there as well. He eventually just went in, and we took the door in, and promptly put as much clothes as we had with on. Needless to say, now that we're older we all joke about it with him, but at the time it was not scared awkward naked stare down. TLDR. 6. 15 year olds, truth, or dare, naked jog, older brother, awkward stare down. Sleepover? Well hopefully this counts, running a scamish, towards me that is, the royalties were brutal, business is a franchise for a company that recruited university students. Meetings we are forced to attend are basically pep rallies for a bunch of first and second year university students. Now, on the way up my dad gave a ride to this rather pretty girl from the same city as me. She didn't have a car and I think she chipped in for gas. I'll come back to this. Meetings begin, bullshit and pep rallies abound, we all get back at about 1am. Next day starts early, 7am if I recall, I go to hit the sack. We are each roomed four to a room, so I'm sharing the room with three other guys two of them were really best buds and were running a double sized turf together. But naturally, university kids being what they are, a bunch go out drinking, these two included. 3 a.m. give or take, I'm half asleep, when they stumble into the room three of them actually, and guess who they brought back to the room? The girl who caught a ride with me. I turn over because we have to be up stupidly early, and I don't really care what the hell they're doing anyway. Five minutes later I hear bed springs creaking, and can blurrily see forms making humping motions on the bed next to mine. 
Yep, those fakers were having a drunken threesome with two other people in the room. I was honestly shocked. I mean, who the hell expects that to honestly happen? It went on for a whole faking hour, presumably because they were trying to be quiet while I was literally 4 feet away from them. I told them to shut the hell up at least 4 times and threw sheet at them in desperate yawn for any amount of sleep. I can't honestly remember what happened after because I think they were quiet enough that I passed out at 4am. Got pissed as hell because my boss beached me out for not being cheery enough at the rally next day. My complaints got me a room change and the whole thing was never spoken about after. You could cut the silence on the car right home with a blunt rusted knife. Never had the heart to tell my dad since he went on about what a sweet and nice girl she was. TLDR. Rooming with three strangers in a hotel became a threesome when two brought back a girl and faked her four feet from where I was trying to sleep. This happened maybe a couple years back when I was 18 and I was visiting my father. Now after my parents divorce he married another woman who already had four kids. So this time they were all home. Some with their girlfriend slash boyfriend plus me and my brother. Space was scarce, so I slept on a mattress in a hallway outside two bedrooms. The mattress was in a corner and there was a bookshelf or something similar on the other side of it, so I only got on and out of it through the one open end. In one of the rooms there are my stepsister and her boyfriend. In the night I wake up, but am forced to think I'm dreaming, because something really weird is going on. In the dark, I see a figure standing next to the end of the mattress, facing towards me. And then, he starts peeing. Holy shit. On the mattress, and on my faking feet. As I was drowsy, I don't remember exactly what I said to him, but I can imagine my language was pretty foul. I would probably have yelled at him, and hit him, if I wasn't more than half asleep and just surprised as fuck. So I just manage, to sit up at the other end of the mattress. After he's done, I go take a shower, luckily there wasn't almost any pee on my feet, and go sleep on the living room sofa. They broke up soon after, the guy was a bit weird. I never said anything to him afterwards, not that we said more than some greetings before this thing, so I don't even know if he was walking in his sleep. I really really hope so. Edit TLDR, a guy pees on me. My friend and I used to walk around the neighborhood sometimes late at night. We'd never actually do anything it was just cool to walk around at night when everything was dead. I should reiterate that this was a very small town and it wasn't that often that you'd even see a car after midnight. So this one time we are staying at his place, playing video games, eating junk food, the usual. It's warm out and windy good night for a walk. His two half brothers are also over and one of them wants to come. All hell broke loose that night. We are walking down this road, right in the middle of it and it's somewhat lit. We learned to do that. To not scare people who would then go on to call the police about prowlers. There were houses on either side of this road, but we weren't close to them. As one of their side yards came into view, this old woman was out letting her dog sheet at like 3am. She didn't see us, but the little yappy dog did. She screamed when she turned and saw us. We bolted. The police were there in less than 5 minutes, driving around the block and illuminating every bush with both of the town's police cars. So we end up diving into a random and pretty hidden area, while his half-brother is absolutely freaking out about getting caught. Just get down, we say, but he panics, and runs a different direction entirely. As soon as the coast was clear we gave chase, because we didn't want him busting back into the house, and waking everyone else up, who'd be pissed we went out. He was fast, though, and we were sure we got to the house well after he did, we sneak in. Quiet, just in case. There on the couch is his dad getting a blue job from the wife of this guy he works with. The guy he works with was sitting there jerking off. There were likely illegal substances involved. About that time they're freaking out and screaming at us and trying to put clothes on. Oh now there are two police cars parked outside. They caught the half brother. In the end everything worked out alright. The police weren't too mad. The woman that called was freaking out saying she got held up at gunpoint and we threatened to kill her dog. They knew it was absolute bullshit because they knew us. They were trying to scare us enough so that we'd not go out again but didn't count on the half brother turning himself in. 
Having to explain it to my parents, censored, of course, was the worst part. Upon hearing just how it started out I was grounded for something like a year. That's when I learned to build my own covered flashlight out of parts I scavenged, so I could read at night, and wire up some telephone parts, to be able to talk to friends. Using sleepover loosely, I once got my older brother drunk for the first time, wit, right, back when we were about 14 or 15 and still living at home. I'd been saving up a nice smorgasbord of booze from varying sources, and trust me, when I say we mixed everything that night. Switching back and forth between wine, beer, and all colors of the liquor rainbow. It wasn't an ungodly amount in some, but it got the job done. We eventually turned in, and I woke up to the sound of my brother Ralphing all over the place in his lofted bed. I advised him to puke over the side, rather than his sheets, but some damage had already been done. He had enough in him to really soak his comforter, and plenty more to launch an ice booze waterfall six feet down onto the floor as well. Being the dutiful accomplice that I am, I hid the sheets and helped him clean up the mess. The next afternoon I was home alone and took it upon myself to wash all the bedding to save both our necks. The only problem was that I'd never really done laundry and completely overstuffed the old washer we had before forgetting to even switch the load over. The awkward moment came later when my mom returned home to find the washing machine overflowing with soapy water and utterly broken. It would have been hard enough explaining that I broke it doing my own laundry, but things must have smelt even fishier considering it was my brother's. I somehow circumvented the real reason for the mishap, though I honestly don't remember how. Pretty damn funny, now that I look back on it. Maybe one of these days I leave and tell my parents. My friend's little brother liked to play with his poop from the toilet. It was my number one fear back then to go over his house and get assaulted by his socially oblivious little brother with poop. Kids in kindergarten, so it was almost excusable. There are a couple times I remember him stomping around their houses while me and my friend are playing N64. His mom yells at the little tyke saying, put the poop down. Go flush it. You aren't getting dessert tonight. Everyone played it off that this little guy wanted to do it and nothing could be done. But I was mortified and honestly scared whenever this guy went to the bathroom because he could come out of that bathroom braverhood style and end my world with poop. The little guy liked me, but he knew I was scared of the poop, that little gremlin. Hey Carpeggio, I was just in the bathroom. Starts chasing me with open hands. Well, sheet got real. Literally. I was over there one day and this little mogli was in his underwear causing up a particular storm in their house that day. Me and the mate was playing perfect dark on N64 having a perfectly good time. Toilet flushes my guard is down. In runs a little devil with poop in his wake. He's got me in his sights. His fingers and palms were brown. My reaction is that of a gazelle in the Serengeti. Eyes wide and panic mode on. I'm jumping over every household object in my way. I'm a terrified deer who just stumbled in front of a truck. He chases me around the house and I get caught in a corner. He's got me. He then slows his roll, rather menacingly I might add, and says, I got you. Arms outstretched and poop touchdown imminent. I'm realistically thinking about kicking this little kid. It's poop or a Spartan kick. I'm weighing over the options with what couple seconds I have left. My friend, at the last second runs in, and save the day. Thank God. He grabs him back, gives him a swat on the butt, and tell him to wash his hands. I was relieved, he was embarrassed as anyone could be, and that poop fiend was planning his next ambush I'm sure. It was an extreme thing that happened. Okay, throw away cause duh. I was 11. My neighbor was another a boy about my age. We used to hang out daily, just doing kid stuff, video games, skateboarding, taping each other to poles, etc. So we are at my house one night. His mom was kind of a drunk. So she was unconscious at his place. At times like these he'd come sleep over and we'd stay up till too late drinking soda and eating bajol bites. Recently, my cousin from SoCal had come to visit and had introduced me to Anim, Ranma one half to be specific. Ranma one half changed my world forever. It had boobs. Amazing, wonderful, artfully animated boobs. I was smitten. 
I knew I just had to share this with my buddy, so my mom took us to Blockbuster and thought nothing better of letting us rent some cartoon movie about fractions. So, like I said, it's late, his mom is in an alcoholic stupor back at his house, my mom is likewise asleep in her room. We sneak out into the living room and fire up the good old VCR and pop in the tape. If you've never watched Ranma one half, go check it out, it's on YouTube. I thought it was funny at 11, and that was when most of the sexual jokes went right over my head. However, boobies. So he and I are watching these episodes, rewinding multiple times to watch the boobies, and we are both feeling pretty tingly down there. He was needing his crush, and I asked him what he was doing. He goes on to tell me about the time he walked in on his older brother in hand to gland combat, and subsequently got a lesson in liquidating the inventory. I thought it sounded swell, so we both sit in silence, watching boobies, individually sanding wood, when the video finishes. We turn everything off, and head to my room. I was an 11 year old with a waterbed, don't ask me why, I'm just blessed. We get in my bed, and are laying there on out stomachs, still feeling tingly, and I can feel him rocking the boat. He's thrusting into the bed, and I'm feeling the waves. Conversation turns from the boobers we'd been watching to the willers we'd been wielding, and he asks to see mine. I whip out my little soldier, turtle neck intact. He does the same, and again, I'm behind the curve. He shows me how he can pull his foreskin all the way down and up, and says it feels cool. I'm game. So we sit there getting to know ourselves for a while before an idea strikes us. What if we have a sword fight? He's game. We smash our gentlemen's heads together and wiggle them around like weasels wrestling. Feels good man. Eventually we are whipping our wires all over the place and then he says, watch this. He takes his foreskin and pulls it up over mine and envelopes my wiener with his extra skin. I reach down and hold it on mine and we both start alternately thrusting, effectively faking his foreskin. After a while we switched foreskins and tried it with mine for a while. This goes on for about an hour or so, we tried different configurations and the like, before we got tired. Sleep came, and the next morning nothing was said. To this day, 20 plus years later, we've never spoken about it. Fun times. Mine happened when I was around 20. Three dudes go over to one dude's apartment, and get cheat faced playing Golden and Killer Instinct Gold. Eventually we all pass out. The guy whose apartment it was takes his bed, and the rest of us pass out on the floor of his room. In the middle of the night, I hear rustling sounds, followed by very wet smacking and slurping and heavy breathing. The dude whose apartment it was, had said earlier, that his girlfriend was coming over, so I assumed she was just blowing him thinking we were all asleep. He took forever too. About the last thing I wanted to hear. I get up the next day a bit later than everyone else. I ask him, is Jenny, his girlfriend, still here? I wanted to ask about her new car. He looks at me like I'm crazy. Jenny never came over, dude. How drunk were you last night? Everyone laughs at me, asking if this was my first time with alcohol and sheet. I get mad and say, okay, if she didn't come over, which one of you sucked his dick last night? I tell them about the nasty slurping display I heard. The room goes silent. Turns out that no one sucked his dick. The dirty bastard decided to lube up and smack nuts in a room full of passed out friends. The smacking and slurping was the sound of him applying and reapplying lotion to his junk, trying his hardest to climax while drunk. We didn't pass out at his house again after that. So I was at summer camp, and for whatever reason several of us decided to sleep under the shelter house instead of in the tents or cabins. I was the nerdy kid who liked to read books so much that I stayed up after everyone else had gone to sleep, reading by flashlight. So the three or four other teenaged boys had gone to sleep maybe half an hour or so ago when I start to hear this rustling noise of nylon. It wasn't just brief and random, like someone adjusting in their sleep in a sleeping bag, but rather ongoing and repetitive and fast, some dude jerking it. And he wasn't quiet about it either. Not that mass do, baiting in a nylon sleeping bag is silent, but then he started making faking animal noises. Maybe he was just breathing heavy, but it sure came out as this lowing moan. Now I wasn't exactly hiding the fact that I was still awake. I had a maglite pointed at a Star Wars book, reading about Luke and Exican or some sheet. 
If Mr. Mass knew, Beta had bothered to look over, he would definitely have seen me. Maybe he did, and he didn't care. If so, simply saying something aloud was just going to be socially awkward. On the other hand, I didn't want to be lulled to sleep by the dulcet tones of Mastu, Bation, so I wanted it to stop. My solution, shine my flashlight on him. He freezes, all is silent. But, I can go back to reading my book. Moments later, he resumes. What the fuck, guy. New Year's Eve 2009 we had originally planned to go to my friend's family's farmhouse, but there was a really bad storm and the power got knocked out there. My other friend, whose parents are really chill, decides to have everyone over at the last minute, since his parents knew all of us really well. Everyone got really drunk throughout the night. Someone had set in the room next to where we were playing beer pong in. Overall a good night. At around 6 in the morning the guy who was banging earlier, myself, and another one of my friends are in the basement bathroom smoking a bong, since at this point we are already starting to feel the hangover. We all get baked, and walk out to see that the entire floor is pretty much occupied, with a blow up mattress in the middle of the floor. The mattress is being shared by this guy, the guy's sister, and the sister's best friend. It didn't click in my mind at first, but when I walked out of the bathroom I saw that the guy was making out and getting a hand job from his sister's best friend with his sister right next to him. Everyone who was smoking went to find a spot on the ground to sleep and then it seemed to hit us all at the same time and we all burst out laughing. He says he doesn't remember it happening, but things seemed awkward between the two for the next few months. A kid with whom I wasn't particularly friendly at school invited me to a sleepover, and, because I didn't want to be mean to him, I said okay. Totally didn't want to go, but I was too much of a bussy to tell him no. So it turns out the sleepover is going to be at his dad's place, because his parents were recently divorced. They took me to this big stadium event to see the power team, which was explained to me as a really cool show involving feats of strength. Turns out the power team are a bunch of Baptist evangelists who attribute their massive steroid use to power bestowed on them by Jesus. Because Jesus needs phone books ripped. And he definitely needs some walks punched through. Apparently Jesus also needs more converts. So among the incredible peer pressure, this amazing show and me being 11 years old and totally not cognitively prepared to resist brainwashing I accepted Lord Jesus as my personal savior. After that, we went back to the father's apartment which had no furniture in it. We slept on a foam mattress pad on the floor, attended morning worship, and then they dropped me off back at home with my shiny new bible. My parents called that guy up and said some decidedly unholy things about how they felt about his ninja recruiting their son to his church under the guise of a sleepover. I never hung out with that kid again. Less awkward than hilarious. Four of us were sleeping over at a friend's house, who had one of those families. They were always yelling and screaming and cursing, not in a serious cruel way, but a hilarious comedic real life Jersey Shore kinda way. Both of the parents are extremely overweight which just adds to the hilarity, that is their family. Anyway the mom warned us early in the night, that the upstairs bathroom was clogged, so we were not to use it under any circumstances. Of course, around 11pm or so someone's in the downstairs bathroom and this one friend of ours starts freaking out that he has to take the worst dump. He waits for about another 10 minutes and just yells fuck it and runs into the bathroom. At this point, we are all sort of chuckling because we know my friend's mom is gonna skin him alive when she finds out. Our friend took a military style sheet though and made it out before she noticed. About a minute later we all smell this rancid stench coming from the bathroom, and you just hear this wail coming up from downstairs, Eric. You and your friends are for who act as mom was screaming bloody murder that sheet water was dripping through the floor to the downstairs, while our friend's obese dad, in nothing but witty tight as mind you, is in his lazy boy laughing his as off muttering oh you boys are fake now over and over again. My friend's mom finally makes it up the stairs, and the friend who took the dump just blurts out it was Chris. Chris was our friend's older brother, and had just got home, so he didn't know about the clogged toilet, and made the perfect fool guy. So our friend's mom bellows something akin to a washout and charges a very confused Chris with a broomstick, while the dad is laughing so hard in his lazy boy, that the thing's back breaks and he goes tumbling to the ground. 
By this point the rest of us are in teats from laughter until the dad decides to blame his broken chair on us. So an obese, witty tighty clad middle aged man starts chasing Eric around the house while his mom is chasing Chris around the house with a broom, both of them screaming and yelling and cursing. One about the sheet flow that is still coming out of the toilet and the other for laughing at him as his chair broke. You think this is funny you little facts. Wait till I catch you a mask and you you are live. Piece of sheet chair. The rest of us are laughing so hard that we just ran out of the house and cracked up on the front yard while we hear screaming and banging from inside the house for another good 15 minutes until both Eric and Chris come outside and declare that we are gonna play some man and for the next couple hours since it's probably too dangerous to go back in the house for a while. I'll never forget that sheet show. Age 13, me and my best friend Greg had a sleepover. We were flipping through channels and came across the awesome fuzzy born channel that would show a titty every now and then but had good sound. Anyways, he told me to leave so he could rub one out. I told him I pound salt because I wanted to go first before the channel went out. He said okay, look do your thing and I'll do mine just don't look at each other. I said deal. So we got set up with the necessities, like drink snack for afterwards and a napkin that came with the pizza and wings from earlier. We went to town and my buddy started laughing and said there's only one napkin I said take it, I'll shoot mine into the green tea bottle. As I was jerking the picture came clearer than I had ever seen before in life, I was too hard to aim it, right and I shot my load so hard I missed the bottle and it flew up to the their family picture and landed on his mom's face. His mom heard us laughing and came downstairs we shut the TV off and went to bed before she saw us. The next morning we were eating breakfast and his mom looked up and saw a stain on the picture. It was dried by then, so she scratched at it and then smelled it and then tasted it. To this day I'm not allowed to make mama jokes to Greg. When I was in 8th grade, I had my first sleepover. It was me and about 6 other friends. Back then we were a world of Warcraft nerds, and I was under the impression we'd just do that all night. I get there, and we watch an X-Men movie, and then go up to my friend's room and start playing. I plop myself on a beanbag chair and log in. As the night goes on people get less interested, but I stay focused on the game. At around 11.45pm I hear Born coming out one of my friend's computer. I look over, and three of my friends are laying on the ground, dicks out jerking off. I try and go back to the game, but a minute later, another friend, he didn't bring his computer, grabs mine and goes to the corner and starts jacking off over there. Then two other kids get some girl on webcam and start jacking off to her, they were on the bed. I hide under my beanbag for what seems like an eternity, until one of my friends all of a sudden grabs the beanbag chair off of me. He is standing above me jacking off and immediately roll away as he attempts to ejaculate on me. I hid in the bathroom for the rest of the night and didn't sleep a wink. I bolted out of there at 5am. I refused to let anyone sleep over at my house or ever sleep over at another person's house because I thought sleepover was just a cover for a circle jerk. I had a good friend sleep over at my house for the first time last year and I pulled him aside and asked is it possible that we could avoid doing what normally happens at sleepovers? I told him the story and he faking laughed his ass off. When I was around 16 or 17, one of the guys at my high school had a sleepover for his birthday party. Now it's important to realize that this guy was not my friend. He was that one kid that nobody liked, loud and awkward, and generally a douchebag. More than once my circle of friends tried to distance ourselves from him, but he clung on like a faking leech. Our class size was only about 50 kids total, so we all knew him, and it was just aggravating, because there weren't many ways to get away from him. He was a single child, his mother gave him whatever he wanted, and there were more than enough home problems for him to have turned out the way he did. But hey, even though nobody liked him, he still had money, and money meant crazy parties. So his birthday rolls around, and he wants to do some laser tag and sleep over at his place. So, with nothing better to do, and a distinct love for the laser wars, I attend. The party consisted of me, a few people from school, his ex-girlfriend, and his UU buddies. So all in all, we had three girls, and nine dudes. 
Now, the party kicks off with a faking limo pulling up to his house, us piling in, and driving from MD to Vata play a laser tag. While in the limo, things turn into one big cuddle pile. I'm pretty confused, but apparently, this is normal for the UUs. So my head ends up on one girl's lap while we talk and shoot the sheet during the drive. I'm still confused, but I'm a hormonal teenager and still pretty confused about most everything, so I don't question. Skip past laser tag. We come back around 11 or 12 at night, and we are all still energized from the games of laser tag. The birthday boy's mom goes to sleep, and we start playing Halo, and it turns out that, while waiting for his turn, one of the guys discovers the liquor cabinet is unlocked. So while still on a buzz of soda and cake, we all start drinking. This is where things start going wrong. See, birthday boy's ex likes to drink. A lot. So she starts taking shots of whiskey and doesn't stop. And we talk about how hot she is, and her and another guy start huking up and go down to the bathroom. At the same time, the guy and girl from school both go and steal a bedroom to huck up in. Meanwhile, I'm upstairs with a girl laying across my lap clear drunk off arrows telling me about astrology before she gets up and starts making out with one of the UU guys. So, I'm bored, and I want to go get my laptop. Which is in the room with the first couple getting it on. So I bang on the door, and the guy throws my bag across the room, so the laptop slams against the wall, and then locks the door, after I grab it. The first cork block of the night has occurred. Now, you may have noticed that none of these guys are the birthday guy. And he's pretty peeved that his ex and this other guy are faking. So he storms off into the faking snow in his boxes, pretty faking drunk. And because his ex and the other dude are being so faking loud that you can hear them from two houses away, I go and have to bang on the door for them too. I talk with the guy, and it turns out that she was saying all sorts of stuff, mostly that I chalk up to her being drunk, but it's still some pretty damning stuff about birthday boy. But I send him off to go talk to him to smooth things over when the most disgusting sound emerges from the bathroom he was in. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to put two and two together, she was drunk, he didn't have a condom, and she's probably vomiting her guts out right about now. So I do what any gentleman would do, I go into the bathroom and hold her hair out of the toilet as she proceeds to puke up a storm. I make sure she's okay, all the while there's more yelling from outside as the birthday boy and his now ex-friend fight, and I just sit there trying not to stare and barf at the hot chick currently trying to cry and vomit all at the same time. A few hours pass of this, and she eventually calms down and just stays clinging to me for support as she tries to sober up, unable to keep anything down. Well, what's a guy to do? I've cork blocked two couples tonight, my laptop is broken, the birthday boy is duking it out with another guy as the other guys try to keep them apart, and the girls are oblivious to it playing Halo, while I play the medic for this evening. I have to help the girl get dressed, and with my unknowing ways, I can't figure out how the hell to get a bra on her, and she's too drunk to do it either. So I get her cleaned up, wipe her face off, and get her clothed, all the while she's saying the room is still spinning. So I go and try to get her some more water, and in the meantime have to get the birthday boy and the other guy from pulling knives on one another. The other guy decides he's had enough and leaves, while the birthday boy goes back upstairs and plays more Halo. I figure the best thing to do is get the drunken lass into a bed where she can be horizontal for a while and rest, so I prop her up and put my BSA training to use and carry her to the bedroom where she promptly vomits on the bed. Cue more cleanup. The next few hours are a blur of me using about 3 rolls of paper towels to make sure she has a somewhat clean surface to pass out on. At this point, everybody else is wondering if she's alright. She is, but she doesn't want anyone else to see her, I guess she was truly embarrassed about the whole affair, and I just ended up staying with her, wiping off the bed, and cleaning her up, and changing the trash bag in the wire trash can every so often. Once she's passed out completely, I end up playing medic elsewhere, making sure everyone has enough water, the scrapes and bruises from the fights are properly bandaged, and all the liquor is cleaned up before the mom who I can only assume sleeps like the dead, wakes up. I didn't get any sleep that night. But morning comes, the girl wakes up still drunk but not barfing, and is slowly munching on leftover pizza as the rest of everyone tries to be relatively coherent. 
She doesn't remember much, but is glad I stepped in to stop the faking, and I make sure to see her off when she finally does get picked up. The rest of the party is basically people apologizing for being drunken idiots to me, while I cleaned up and me trying desperately to put my laptop back together. I know I'm too late, but I'm sharing anyway. When I was somewhere around 8, I was invited to a sleepover party at her house, which was also a funeral home like in 6 feet under, but in the early 80s. We all knew it was a funeral home in advance, and kudos to the parents to make sure that the parents knew just in case the kids were uncomfortable. I also remember a vague assurance that the upstairs door wouldn't be used in case of deliveries. Imagine, if you can, a gaggle of 8 year old girls in their little jam is doing what 8 year old girls do, giggling, playing silly games, and most likely trying to scare the sheet out of each other because we're in a funeral home. It's late, after dark, the rest of the house has gone to bed. We're all in the living room with our sleeping bags strewn out everywhere. Suddenly ding dong, rings out across the house. The gaggle of 8 year old girls, in unison, get up and run screaming in a high pitched banshee harmonic demon waking glass shattering level of terror, waking up the parents, and babbling about who knows what at the door. We calmed down in the presence of calm authority as 8 year olds tend to do, and went about our night. Later, we found out that the person who rang the doorbell was, in fact, delivering a body super duper late at night, hadn't gotten the message not to come to the normal house door, and had run away terrified at the high pitched demonic screaming emanating from the house. I'm quite sure that gentleman rethought his career choice after that experience. TLDR 8 year old girl sleepover party at funeral home. Doorbell rings, screaming gaggle of girls, delivery man runs away in terror. The two sleepovers I've been to in my whole life I was never able to fall asleep. The first one was with 6 to 10 people. We all played 007 Agent Under Fire's multiplayer until we found something else to do. In the middle of the night, after everyone was asleep, I went upstairs to the bathroom to pee, trying to be as quiet as possible. I came back out of the bathroom and started heading down the hall to the stairs when I heard a sound coming from my buddy's older sister's room. Her door was open a crack, so I looked in. Stark naked, Mastu, baiting furiously. She finished, then she saw me. Or at least I think she did. She looked towards the door, and then turned her bedside lamp off. She asked me the next week, if I knew what friends with benefits were, and if I'd be interested. I passed that opportunity up like an idiot. She's still kind of cute. The awkward part of this story is me. The other story is only with my friend who lives out in the country. He has two older sisters and both of them were gorgeous. It was about 6am when I got up to pee and ran into his pantsless sister in the hallway. She had a laundry basket under her arm. Being polite, I asked if I could help her with the laundry. So I did laundry with my buddy sister while she was in her underwear. Pretty sure she thought I was gay. That one wasn't so awkward for her as it was for me, though. At that point, I had a huge crush on her, even though she was like 2-3 years older than me, so I'm sitting there doing laundry with this girl in her underwear, and trying not to pop a boner. TLDR missed opportunities. Edited for clarity and better sentence structure. At my friend Tora's house in 5th or 6th grade. Thought super religious friend's mom was asleep. Told the farmer's daughter joke, where the traveling sales guy chooses to fack the cow instead. Like a ninja, she emerges from the dark hallway, having heard the entire joke and, and I get in trouble. Jesus is apparently disappointed in my language. Awkward. Fast forward later that night, Tori, who successfully Rashambo wed us for the leather couch, is nonchalantly romancing the bone between the seat cushions while Gabe and I are trying to sleep on the floor. Everyone is just ignoring Tori, since we were 12. Everyone that is, except for Delta Force Mom who spots his clandestine under blanket violation of the couch. It was freaking middle of the night dark. How did she do this? Anyway she starts to cross the room, and I'm like hello, and try to melt into my sleeping bag. Tori finally notices her approach and hastily leaps off the couch, wrapped up in the blanket. They're face to face now, and in hushed tones, she demands to know what he's doing. I can tell at this point he's furiously denying all nocturnal shenanigans, but she's wearing him down. His shoulders finally slump, 
his head drops, and then horror of horrors she makes him open his blanket to see the evidence. I screamed silently. TLDR. Mom catches friend humping the family couch. Checks for Bonner. When I was about 7 or 8, I had a persistent classmate who would always invite me to sleep over at her house. I wasn't a huge fan of the girl, but I was always friendly to her because she didn't have a lot of friends. My parents are both from Jamaica and they didn't let me go to sleepovers because they didn't understand the American tradition of having their children sleep in strangers beds. I told her that my parents didn't allow me to go to sleepovers. One day this girl aggressively called my parents directly to ask them if I could sleep over. They thought it was cute, so they agreed to drop me off for a sleepover. I wanted no part of it. This girl took no time making things weird. The first thing she did when we got to her bedroom was get naked. She proceeded to poop in the bathroom connected to her bedroom with the door open while describing that the stool was hard and grunting. I was mortified. When she finished up her number 2, I thought she was going to get dressed, but I was wrong. Next on the docket, she did butt naked cartwheels in her bedroom. I was still wearing my winter coat and gloves, standing horribly uncomfortable in the corner of the room. Her mom walked in during her nude acrobatic routine and started to scream, what the hell are you doing? I was relieved that her mother was going to fix the situation, restore order, and have the girl put her clothes on. Wrong. Her mother was actually upset that the bedroom window was open and the naked gymnastics continued. I promptly called my parents to come pick me up immediately. This may be a bit late, but this was back in maybe 7th grade. An old neighbor slash childhood friend moved to a huge house and was having a birthday party. Invited me and my best friend. There must have been about 12 kids sleeping over all around 12 to 14. His new group of friends were, weird to say the least. I was glad I came with my buddy. Anyways it gets late and my friend and I are chatting before we are about to go to bed. Then the other kids decide to start playing truth or dare. Keep in mind, these are all guys. So it started off pretty innocent. They were daring each other to do stupid sheet like jump off the bar stool and tell the truth about their first kiss or what have you. Then there's this one kid, we'll call him Drake who's kind of leading the whole thing. Keeps pushing sheet weirder and weirder. Dares one kid to pull down his pants and run around the couch. Weird. Okay whatever. This is when my buddy and I notice our friend's mom at the other end of the room. No one can see her cause it's dark. We pretend to fall asleep and try not to laugh hours off point then Drake decides to dare the kid again. He said something like Reggie, I dare you to take your pants off and stick your bonus in my butt. My friend and I start dying, and at this point his mom is right by us, and she's like I don't ever want to hear you say that again Drake. She calls all of our parents, and sent us home at like 1 in the morning. Luckily she explained to my parents and my buddies, that we were sound asleep at the time. Ha. Huh. I've got one. I was 11 years old, and we were having a birthday sleepover of a classmate of ours. It started great, watching Snoop Dogg in some movie. It was about 2 a.m. when the movie ended. This is where the horror began. After 11 p.m. the night programming on the TV consists of nude girls telling you to call them. We were 11 years old and pretty pumped up on hormones. So when we finished the Snoop Dogg movie, we changed the channel and stumbled onto the naughty. We weren't dumb enough to actually call the girls, but we did watch them for some time. This one kid codenamed Jay begins to put up this act of Roxy the Russian hooker, which means that he pulls up his shirt like a cliche cowgirl and tries to get into your sleeping bag. We all have a laugh about it until it gets a little weird. He doesn't stop. He keeps jumping us trying to get into our sleeping bags. After a while or two friends of mine and I get enough of his shenanigans and go to the kitchen for a drink and to discuss how to handle this situation. When we come out of the kitchen we get to see an image which would haunt us forever. Jay and the birthday kid whacking their little pricks to see who has the longest. Jay was bleeding out of his little pecker from all the whacking and laughing hysterically within the background the moaning of 40 something year old woman on the TV. It was the longest night of my life. True story. I went to my friend's house in the 8th grade. I switched schools in 7th grade so I didn't have a lot of friends. I was very happy to hang out with people other than my cousins. 
he had a double-sized bed against the wall and a couch against the same wall. He was in the bed, and I was on the couch sleeping, somewhat linearly if you can imagine. We stayed up talking about junior high stuff, and got on the subject of girls, specifically the hotties. Suddenly, my friend was like man. I have a boner. Want to mass do, bait? I was like nah man. He said come on, other good friend's name, has done it with me, it's cool I said no I'm all set. He proceeded to bust out a big bottle of lube, almost empty, from his Patriot's locker. He asked you sure you don't want some, or do you want to just go dry fire? I still said nah man I'm all set. He then mass do, baited behind me in the dark, talking to me the whole time. He finished into a towel, and went to put it in his hamper. He then hit me in the face with his cum towel, and said now you're in the club. He was referring to a club of friends, that he has wiped his cum on, to which I'm the only member, or at least was at the time. I was like what the fuck, but I was not a very confrontational person, I'm still not, and I didn't have a lot of friends, so I never really got mad about it. Also the cum never really got on me, I felt a bit of moisture but that's about it. We are still friends to this day by the way, 9 years later, very good ones actually. Nothing like this ever happened since. TLDR, a new friend wiped cum on me, remained friends for life. I was in 8th grade, and I had just moved to a small town in western Massachusetts from New York City a few months ago. I finally made some new friends, some of the cool kids from the school at that, and I was spending the night at one of their houses with a bunch of the other guys. The transition of moving from a big city, where 99% of the friends I grew up with and the kids I went to school with were of any other ethnicity than white to a place, where 99% of everyone was white was a little intense. There was quite a bit of culture shock for me. I had to get used to a lot of different things, the way kids talked, the things they did for fun, so a lot of the time I assumed when someone said or did something I wasn't really familiar with, it was just a matter of regional diversity, in a manner of speaking. Anyway, back to the sleepover. So we are all sitting near the TV, maybe 8 or 9 of us in total, and we had just finished watching Jude, Where's My Car, which was a classic for us at the time. All good wholesome young dude fun right? Then someone turns on some Skinamax, with some sweet soft core born in full swing. I thought that was a little weird. All of the sudden people start grabbing pillows and blankets, pulls their benizes out, and starts to mass do, bait watching Skinamax. I was mortified. I couldn't follow suit, I felt incredibly uncomfortable. But everyone seemed completely normal, like this was a regular occurrence. Some of them even wonkied it right out in the open. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to leave and be ostracized for being weird, a little ironic, when I think back on it, but there was no way I was going to mass do, bait with, and in front of all of my new friends. Just wasn't gonna happen. Then everyone started to grab sandwich bags to cineclimax into, some just walked right over to the garbage can and finished up in there. I didn't say a word and stared straight into space until all of this was finished. After this little mass do, Bation party, a bunch of cute girls from school, had snuck over to hang out with us, it was at this point maybe 12am or so. No one said a word about it, like it was some unspoken bro rule to wank one out with a group, before hanging out with ladies. Who was I to say otherwise? I had never witnessed anything like that before. To this day I have no idea what that was about, and I'm almost positive this isn't something that's happened to most people. One of the more uncomfortable things to have experienced as a teen for sure. I have one that I'm far from proud of, but fuck it, I'm writing it anyways. My stepsister is three years younger than me and a high school freshman while I was a junior. She had a few sleepovers with her friends, most of whom were pretty hot instead of sleeping in her room, which was large enough to hold all of them. They choose this time to sleep downstairs in the living room. My bedroom was also downstairs, and about 30 feet at most away. As I'm the cool older brother and a few even thought I was cute, I decided that my night would be spent with them. It was fun, they were all wearing sleepy clothes which added plus 10 to their hotness. As the night wore on, I was getting rather horny as 17 ish year old boys tend to do when around budding females. They eventually go to sleep, and I head over to my room. 
Well, one of the girls decides that it is too hot to sleep in her sleeping bag and lays on top of it in a pajama top and shorts. She was by far the hottest of the girls. I creep into the kitchen next to the living room where they are sleeping. The kitchen, you see, has a viewport or hole cut into the wall so you can look into the living room. I stood there staring at them and fapped. I fapped hard and long. I didn't think about the mess I would make, I only thought about the half naked girl's mere feet from me. Underneath the window area was the oven and I just did all over the stove top and oven front. As ninja like as I could, I paper toweled the oven face clean and got most of the DNA off the stove top, but not all of it. The next morning, my stepdad decides to cook breakfast and nothing smells better than crusted cum cooking at 350 degrees. Okay. So my one friend has this issue, where he's not lactose intolerant per se, but when he has milk, before he goes to bed he sleep talks so bad you can literally have hour long conversations with him. I decided to take advantage of it one night. So we had milkshakes before bed, middle schoolers by the way, and around 1 or 2 am he starts mumbling to himself. I thought it'd be fun to videotape it, and try to get him to divulge some secrets. I started asking him things like, would you plow Lydia his crush at the time, to which his response was I'd plow her driveway cause us no, she might, full funny, but not really getting anywhere. So another hour or so talking to my semi-conscious friend left me entertained, but about to give up, and go to sleep. Suddenly he starts up a new topic, and says his brother is friends with some guy, named Drama from MTV. I told him he was lying. He said no no. Call him his number is, .911. Give me a phone. Okay I wasn't about to give him a real phone, so I have him a plastic cup, a hard one, not a soft kitty cup, but hard plastic meant to be used in place of glassware. He takes it swiftly from me, and pokes it a couple times like has dialing. Suddenly he yells hello, and slams the cup against his forehead so hard it bout cracks the cup. He wakes up hurting, and mad as all hell, yelling at me, while I'm there on the ground practically pissing my pants, laughing like an idiot with a video camera. TLDR friend talks in his sleep, thinks he's calling someone, nearly knocks himself out. I had this girlfriend in third grade. Her family was super Mormon and really strict about guys, but for some reason they all really liked me. They knew we were crushing on each other, and knew I wasn't religious. They were pretty weird about all of her friends being Mormon except for me for some reason. Yet, for whatever reason, they never had a problem with me being around, and even was okay with me sleeping over. Anytime I slept over they would put this king-sized air mattress out in the living room and her, I, and her younger siblings would all sleep on it. One night she wet the bed and just drenched the both of us. She woke up so embarrassed and mortified that she tried to blame it on her little sister, who it obviously was not, and her parents woke up from the fight they got into, and they believed it was the little sister. Her dad got really angry at her little sister who just started crying. It was really upsetting, because I kind of understand why she did that, but I tried to tell her that I didn't care, and it wasn't a big deal. Like, if somehow she would have known that I wouldn't have cared and even would have helped her clean it up surreptitiously, apparently her dad was kind of a tyrant. When it came to wetting the bed, it would have been quiet and peaceful and not a big deal. Her mom came out and I helped her clean everything up. Oddly enough they didn't even really care that I was there and I ended up staying the night anyway. Breakfast was pretty normal and we all went out and played in the park across the street. I really liked that girl. Her dad changed jobs and moved away shortly after that, and we lost touch. TLDR parents can really fuck with their kids. Warning, this is kinda gross I was around 12 years old. My parents went out to a party with friends and left me at their house with their daughter, who was a few years older than me and pretty cute. We were having a fun night watching movies in their newly finished basement, very 80s, lots of black leather modern furniture and white carpet everywhere, but something we ate didn't agree with me, and my stomach grew increasingly vocal. I tried to shrug it off, because the closest bathroom was right around the corner from the couch and I didn't want to stink up the whole basement. My stomach pain started getting worse and worse as the night went on, and finally I realized I was facing imminent sheet, whether I liked it or not, and I excused myself to the bathroom. 
As soon as I stood up I realized I had waited too long and could feel the intense pressure build up in my colon of an impending liquid sheet evacuation. I darted into the bathroom and started undoing my pants, but it was too late. Just as I started to lower my pants a spray of poop water blasted out of my ass and sprayed all over the white carpet. I was distraught and had no idea what to do. I tried to clean it up, but being 12 didn't know how futile that was and succeeded only in firmly grinding the sheet into the fibers of the carpet and ruin a couple of their hand towels in the meantime. Eventually the daughter got concerned and came to check on me, knocking on the door. I claimed I was okay, just not feeling well, also a lie, as expunging the sheet had instantly made me feel 100% healthy again. I kept her at bay for a while, but after close to an hour had gone by, she started to insist that I open the door for her. Finally, having run out of options, I had to comply. The poor girl had to scrub my sheet out of her carpet with stain remover. Meanwhile I pretended to have some flu-like symptoms and went to bed. I was so embarrassed I ended up telling my parents I'd had a terrible time and didn't want to go back to their house. I never saw her again. When I was in third grade, I went to my best friend's sleepover where all the girls from our class had been invited. I went to a very small Christian school that combined classes for the lower grades, and in the class above us there was only one girl, so my friend's mom had my friend invite her too. I think the girl, I'll call her Jay, was in 5th or 6th grade. I'm not sure why she was interested in coming to a 3rd graders birthday party but she was. Just with the age gap, Jay was kind of the odd one out. She made this big deal of having this orange folder and none of us were allowed to see it. At first we were kind of fascinated by what may have been in it, but eventually we just decided we didn't care anymore and went back to whatever we had been doing while Jay sat in the corner with her orange folder. When it was time to go to bed we rolled our sleeping bags out in the living room and put on a movie. Jay still had her orange folder and still wouldn't let any of us know what was in it. When the morning rolls around Jay is still asleep after everyone is up and we decide we could try the hand in the warm water thing. My best friend walks over with the bowl of warm water, a group of giggling 8 year olds behind her. When we get over to Jay, her orange folder is sticking out from under the sleeping bag. I look at the rest of the girls, they look back in confirmation and I pick up the folder and hand it to the birthday girl. My friend opened folder and paper fell out everywhere. The only one that hadn't fallen out was folded over and my friend smoothed it out. The image is stuck in my head forever. Kim Possible Born. Kim was on top of Ron, Bazuma Sablas in a field full of flowers and Rufus watching from the foreground. We discovered the entire folder consisted of born from different cartoons like UGIO, but a lot of Kim Possible. We gathered up all the papers and tried to stuff them back in the folder correctly, but just settled for back quote in the folder when we heard my friend's mom wake up and we put the folder back next to Jay. TLDR went to sleep over in third grade. Friend invited weird girl several grades up who brought a folder full of Kim Possible born. Okay so when I was about 10 or 11 years old I think. I was in the 5th grade. Anyway, my cousin, who I really didn't like, came over to stay the night because his mum was way too high or some sheet and at first, all goes well. We played some PlayStation, watched TV and talked Pokemon. I showed him my team on Pokemon Blue, and for some reason, the little douchebag grabs my Gamma Boy and throws it across the room then laughs when I get angry at him. My parents hearing the commotion come and check on us and my mum, who hates his mum, got angry at him too and more or less told my dad to take him home. Only my dad didn't want to do that. So my parents start fighting. Full on screaming at each other. My younger brother is crying, I'm in shock, and that little sheet cousin of mine has picked up my gamma boy, started a new game, and saved as soon as he could. Anyway, I just kind of sat in the corner for the rest of the night, while my parents fought, and my mum ended up leaving my dad that night. I felt extremely guilty for a long time, because I thought, if I'd kept my cool, and not gotten angry at my cousin, maybe my parents would still be together. So that's the most awkward thing that's ever happened to me at a sleepover. My parents splitting up. The next year, my cousin's family moved away though so at least I didn't have to deal with him anymore. Until they moved back in my final year of high school that is. 
Being the kind of person I am, I thought I'd give him a shot again to see if he changed. My friends asked him if he knew any funny stories about me since we grew up together, and lo and behold, this is the story he tells, laughing the whole way through it. Nobody was impressed. My best friend actually punched him in the face though, so that was nice. TLDR. Cousin came over for sleepover, and my parents got angry and split up leading to their divorce. I was never big on sleepovers when I was little, but when I was about 6 or 7 I started staying over at my friend's house about once a month. Most of the time we'd fall asleep watching Nick at night. What kid doesn't love reruns of Freeze Company, Taxi and Welcome Back Cotter. She'd be in her bed and I'd be on the floor. One night her brother loans his friends the sleeping bags for a camping trip, so I have to sleep in bed with her. So I go to get in bed and this girl is butt as naked. She has never slept in the nude on any of the other sleepovers we had. I refuse to get in, and she offers to create a pillow barrier. She tells me that she normally sleeps this way and tries to convince me to do it too, since it's more comfortable to sleep in the nude. I was thoroughly freaked out, so I get up and lay on the couch in the living room and commence watching reruns of Dragnet. She comes in, naked, and begs me to go back in the bedroom with her. I put the couch pillows between us and try to ignore her while her brother's girlfriend walks through the living room and sees this. She looks at the girl and says girl's name, this again. Go to bed and put some clothes on. Then the girlfriend stays in the living room all night with me until it's time for me to go home. That was the last time I ever stayed at her house. I was in such a hurry to leave I left about half of my littlest pet shop toys at her house. Not long after that I moved and didn't see her again until high school. By then she had come out as a lesbian, which was no surprise to me. In high school I'd stay with my friend whose dad let him have an insulated and heated shed out back as a room. This place had cable and internet too. A group of guys would get together and jack off into glass bottles so they could throw them at people's houses in Christmas day or later on. More often than not I'd just be hanging out in the room with them. While all this was going on, I didn't realize this was abnormal until I met my now husband and took him over to hang out. The funny thing is that none of us ever tried anything or even thought about it in a sexual way. I had known these guys since we were little. Thinking back on it, it was weird as hell. TLDR. I had a sleepover at 6 sevenths with a girl who tried to beg me to sleep in bed naked with her. Apparently, this was a thing as it had happened before. Later in high school she came out as a lesbian. I used to hang out with male childhood friends in high school. They would all jack off in front of me like it was no big deal at sleepovers and I didn't realize this was abnormal until I brought my boyfriend, now husband, over to meet all my friends. I should note that both my husband and I are still good friends with quite a few of these guys. Perfect time for me to share. I was a chronic sleepwalker as a kid and was always trying to find an excuse not to sleep at my house. One time at a friend's, I fell asleep while my two friends were playing video games together at around 3am. I get up from the ground, look at both of them and say crystal meth don't you know? Then pass out again another time at a different friend's I went around in a confused stutter and started to pee all about this one door. I never mentioned anything and slept over the friend's place multiple times after. The 6th or 7th time this must have happened, my friend saw me do it and tried to wake me. Turns out they thought it was the dog, but I guess it was me every time. Last one was at my place during a snowstorm. Powers out and my neighbor and friend are over and were just hanging out by the fireplace reading stories with my dad. I fall asleep and sometime in the night, I get up, start screaming and running around while all the while sheeting myself. I end up curling up on the floor by the fridge where I was told I was silent and completely still. My neighbor asked me what was wrong and I started to ask about a raven. TLDR I'm no fun at sleepovers, but I keep getting invited back. I was 5 years old, and so was she. We were sleeping on the pull-out couch in the living room of my parents' little place. It was only 2 bed 1 bath and the dining room was the living room, so we could practically reach the stove from the bed, and my bedroom door too. I was a cuddler. She knew that we'd been friends since we were 3. This wouldn't be unusual for us. 
I reached over to hug her around her tummy while I was falling asleep. As a frequent flyer of Nightmare Express, hugging people or things made me feel better as I fell asleep. I hug her as expected, about a half hour after lights out, and I realize her PJ pants are missing. And her underwear. And this kind of wakes me up because what? I asked her, where are your underwear? She said, I took them off, because it feels good like that. It's okay to keep hugging me. Feel it, the skin is soft there. I was too curious to ignore it, and she wanted it, so I did, even though I thought it was faking weird. We never slept over after that again. I just said it was, because sleeping in the living room gave me nightmares really bad. So I guess, that was the first of many lesbian experiences I've had. I have two, one that was probably the most awkward for me, and the other was probably the most awkward for other people. The first, when I was young, probably about 10, I made a friend at my new school, and was invited for a sleepover at his house. When I went over to his house we had a fun time, but when it came time to sleep his mom made us go up to his room and tucked both of us into his bed. I protested a bit because I was not comfortable sleeping with another person in a bed, but she said it was normal for kids to sleep together. Nothing weird happened other than that, but I remember not being able to sleep all night. I just stared straight at the ceiling in discomfort. In the morning I got out of bed at 6 and used the phone to call my parents to pick me up. They came and I met them out front. My friend and his mom were not even awake. I don't know if his mom ever called to find out how I got home, but I never spent the night over there again. I'm a pretty experienced dude, but that experience still haunts me. The second, in high school my parents were out of town and my grandmother was watching me. I was a pretty unruly adolescent and this was not a great matchup, since my grandma was a bit old fashioned and soft spoken. I was under a mandate to not have any parties while my parents were gone. This had been a recurring problem in the past. I convinced my grandma that I was allowed to have a couple of people over. I ended up having about 12 of my close friends over. Of those 12 were my 5 best guy friends and 6 girls that we were friends with that we all incidentally had crushes on. One of these girls was a total sleeper babe, sophomore year she came back with giant boobers after already being cute to begin with. At this point, I was already an accomplished streaker at my high school, and was known for not keeping my clothes on at parties. We started playing truth or dare, and I was pretty quickly dared to go skinny dipping in front of everyone. I was able to convince one of the girls to go with me, and in a matter of minutes everyone was in the pool naked. It was awesome. The thing was, my grandmother had decided she was going to chaperone the event, and was looking on from the chair in the living room the whole time. At some point all of the nakedness got to her, and she felt the need to call me over the outdoor intercom speaker to go in. I instantly realized I would have to deal with this once she told my parents, so I kind of had to own the situation. I did not want to look stupid in front of all these girls, so I did the most reasonable thing I could think of, I walked into the house, buck as naked, walked right up to my grandma, and acted like nothing was wrong. She was so confounded by my hubris and nudity, that she agreed to let everyone stay for 45 minutes, but asked that everyone put bathing suits on. I then said I did not feel that was necessary, and went back to the pool. I then informed everyone, that the party was over. In 45 minutes, I felt like the coolest dude in school. The next week everyone had heard about this party and people kept coming up to ask me if it had actually happened. Such a great memory. When I was 12 made out with my best friend's stepsister, while he watched during a sleepover at my house with just the three of us, he gave us instructions on how to kiss, was kind of new and exciting at the time, but mildly creepy in retrospect. We became girlfriend boyfriend that night, and broke up the next day, because I changed became arrogant. The kids turned out fine in case you're wondering, I went to the girl's wedding last year, and her stepbrother is married, and has a kid. Another time, when I was 15, me, this girl, not his stepsister another girl, and the same guy from the last story, were all messing around in my room. I had a 24 pack of iced tea cans lying around, and being silly kids we decided to have a water gun type fight with them, so we punctured the cans, and started spraying each other with them. We all took our shirts off, 
because we got wet, and at this point my mom comes in, and sees her son, his friend and the girl all topless, she had her bra on, and covered an iced tea and the walls were covered in iced tea, so that was fun, especially because we weren't able to clean the walls so eventually, when we sold the house they had to repaint my room. A few years ago I was visiting family, and one of my cousins invited me to a sleepover with two of his friends, one male and one female. He was madly in love with the girl, and was constantly hugging slash being near her. Although she clearly didn't like it, I guess he was blinded by love, which was awkward anyway. Anywho, we get to the sleeping bit and we are all sitting on bigger's chairs in the living room. I pretend to fall asleep, because I enjoy listening to what people talk about when they think I can't hear them. Make of that what you will. He decides it's a good idea to confess to her, to which she has to tell him she doesn't feel the same way. She's a nice girl and starts bawling her eyes out, and apologizing because she feels terrible that she may have hurt his feelings. My cousin responds by constantly saying stuff, like I guess it just wasn't fate or sometimes hearts only connect one way, which makes her cry a lot more. Thing is he won't stop talking. Every minute another sad poetic thing comes out in a really semi angry slash unhappy tone. So there I'm pretending to be asleep next to a wailing girl who is being cradled by the other friend that came along, with my cousin in a heartbroken angry trance spewing sheet one line love related poems. Worst. Sleepover. Ever. Most of my awkward sleepover stories either involve creepy underage sech, or wanton property destruction, that makes me look like a realer's hole, still sorry about the house, J, but this one isn't so bad, B14, me and three buddies, Fred, Berry and Stroker, hanging out at fourth buddies, Steve, house, his mom out of town, there was a guy, that would sell us two dollar joints, so we each bought one, and got completely baked, went back to Steve's, and proceeded to eat everything in his house. I mean everything. Last thing I remember, was cooking hot dogs on forks over the electric stove burners with Barry. The next morning, all that remained, was like a bag of flour and a can of okra. The kitchen was demolished. Steve was sitting on the couch, reading an advertising flyer, commenting on the bras, that were on sale. I apologized for the kitchen, and he says yeah. That was all the food I had, until my mom comes back. Oh well. He never really spoke to any of us again. Here's a bonus story. About a year later, Fred, Berry and I had been eating mushrooms, and ended up at Berry's house. Berry's mom and three sibling, had been mysteriously missing for a couple of weeks. I passed out, and was woken up by Fred around 4am. He was shaking me and saying dude, wake up, you need to go get us cigarettes. I told him to fuck off, they could just smoke mine. He told me they already had smoked all my cigarettes, that is why I needed to get up and go get more. So I'm putting on shoes, and Barry leaves the room, and that's when Fred whispers to me that Barry had tried to fuck him, and Fred wanted me to take Barry out and kill him, Fred was kind of the leader of our little group. I was all incredulous, and asked how the fuck am I supposed to kill Barry, and Fred hands me a bicycle chain. I sigh, and mutter damn it, fine, you guys are as holes. So Barry and I are wandering down the street through suburban Houston. I stay a couple of steps behind him, watching him walk, looking at the back of his head and kind of playing with the chain in my jacket pocket. We come to a set of train tracks with a train stalled on them, and I'm thinking this is perfect. I hit him, then throw him on the train. Problem solved. Barry wants to climb on top of the train, which is even better, but when we get to the top of the car, the sun is coming up, and I guess the combination of sleepiness and hallucinogens makes me all hippie, and Barry and I just marvel at the beauty of the world, and I decide not to kill him. Barry looks down into the field in front of us, and sees two horses, and says to me man, fuck this walking, it was still a couple of miles to the store, let's steal those horses. So two 15 year old goth slash skater slash club kids, still tripping balls, wander into a field, grabbing handfuls of grass, and mumbling here horse good horse, come here. Barry gets up to the one he has chosen. I may have been tripping, but the horse looked like a frankenhorst, brown torso, grey legs, dapple neck, etc. No saddle or bit. Barry manages to heave himself over its back, and it takes off with him laying across it, yelling at. I watch them ride off, and turn to my horse. 
I have chosen this animal because it is much smaller than Berry's monster horse, plus it has what I believe to be a muzzle, which seems like a good idea to me. I'm feeding it grass, telling it what a nice little horse it is. Berry and Frank and horse continue to ride by every few moments, the horse at full speed, terrified of the idiot on its back, Berry still yelling, terrified of the beast beneath him. I decide to make my move, petting the nose of my horse with my left hand, and my right hand comes down on its haunch, ready to boost myself onto my steed. That's when my horse decides to show me he is actually a donkey, immediately pivoting on his four legs and kicking me in the groin. I lift about 3 feet off the ground and go backwards about 5 feet, landing hard on the ground, clutching my narrowly missed balls and moaning. I lay there, rolling from side to side, Berry Ann. Frank and horse continuing to make passes. Finally, Berry falls off and comes to find me. I'm still laying in the grass. I pull down my pants and discover a massive hoof print quickly becoming a gruesome bruise on my right thigh, maybe 3 or 4 inches from my junk. I put my pants back on and Barry helps me up and back to his house point here's the awkward. When we get to Barry's, his mom has returned and Fred is standing outside. Barry's mom is yelling at him. She sees us, ignores me completely, and tells Barry that she and her boyfriend have moved the family to Kentucky and he is on his own now. Fred and I stand in the yard and watch as she grabs a few things from the house, Barry chasing her and crying and asking what the fuck is he supposed to do now. She gets in the car and drives away, and Barry just sits there crying. Fred and I just kind of looked at each other, then told Barry we had to go home and would see him later. <laughs> Haven't thought about this in years. This was in college, a little old for a sleepover, but still. I spent the night with a new girlfriend, kind of shy, who lived in a tiny cottage hidden among the trees, well away from the campus. It had been a big step for her to ask me over and into her carefully guarded, meticulously kept personal space. First thing in the morning, Sunday, she had to go to work for a few hours and left me alone. She had fixed us a massive dinner the night before and now my system wanted to release the results. I took a huge, marathon, luxurious dump into the cottage's one ancient toilet. I released one shiny grogan after another into its narrow pipes. When I flushed, Chaos ensued. The pipe was jammed with my excreta and the bowl water rose. I knew enough to yank off the tank lid and grab the bull cork to arrest the upward flow, but there was no plunger or anything close by to force my hideous product through the system and out. After some time the foul brown bowl water receded, and I released the bull cork gently. The water rose again, imperceptibly. All my young toilet inexperienced brain could think was, I need liquid plumber to break the log jam but there wasn't any in the cottage. I dressed, jumped in my car, and drove two miles to the general store and bought some. Returned just as the poo water was about to crest the lip of the bowl. By now the whole cottage smelled like a major sewage accident, but I grabbed the bowl cork again, stabilized the water level, and tilted the whole bottle of liquid plumber into the bowl. Many minutes passed. Nothing happened. My fesses were wadded, impervious, into the toilet's outpipe. The bowl water level receded again, but when I released the tank's bowl cork, it resumed its slow rise, despite the quart of caustic chemicals I applied. Nothing worked. It was like being on a sinking ship. I panicked and decided to flee. I left a note and took off. The water was still rising. By the time the girl got home I'm sure the bowl overflowed, and the whole cottage was awash in sheet. I had promised to bake Pillsbury biscuits for her return, but instead she came home to no brunch and an environmental disaster. We never had much contact, let alone more sech. After that, I was beyond embarrassed. She had shyly, nervously given her first blue job the prior night and now look. I know from Facebook that today, years later, she has intimacy issues. I'm sure this episode is why. Okay. This is so faking weird but hey ho. When I was 14 my house was the sleepover house, my parents were lovely, I had a PS2 and more VHS than you could shake a stick at, only films that were 15 and over because that was the consensus at the time. So there's three of us, one guy is now asleep, the other is downstairs taking a sheet, prior to this a good night was had by all. My scumbag pubescent brain decides it's time to jerk off with available material on my laptop, which I do and was thus, successful. 
I walked downstairs in comfort as my friend had now walked from the bathroom and we said we'd play some warriors multilayer when we got upstairs, however. I had forgotten that a thick, gooey dose of human mayonnaise all over my right hand was the reason I was walking to the bathroom and in slapping his back as a friendly gesture my gravy was then thwacked again the left side of his back. It was not some sexually deviant Etonian ritual, but a mere mistake which I sometimes mill over in the back of my mind and feel very ashamed about. We still had sleepovers after that, but never talked about that messy moment again. I had this crazy such obsessed friend who always acted really strangely. I used to chill with him nearly every day, since ages 10 to 15. Let's call him Joe I. There are a myriad of stories to tell about him such as him trying to have sex with his sister and his dad kicking his ass, him ejaculating on his sister from the top of a bunk bed, dressing up as a girl, and putting my cube on, I actually joined him in this, and him playing safari, trying to catch his cat in a washing basket whilst being completely naked, I joined in also. Well this one time we were having a sleepover at my buddy's house after a long day of skateboarding, me and my other friend were getting ready for bed. Joe I was way ahead of us, and was already in bed, and under the covers. He always got naked for bed, but we kinda got used to it. The whole time Joe I was covertly jacking off under the covers. Within about 5 minutes he called us both, and just as as he climaxed, he threw the covers clean off his mattress, and ejaculated all over himself. We got to see him spray cum all over himself as he just laid there laughing. A year ago, when I last saw him, he was a student finishing his masters going into a very high paid job. A pretty respectable person from a good family. Pretty weird how stuff pans out. I was in 6th grade and my 7 very best friends in all the land were having a sleepover. I had to leave before the actual sleeping part because my parents were controlling. We were going on a trip the next day and they wanted me to be well rested. On Monday at school during lunch, I was gently taken aside by one of my friends and solemnly told that they had taken the sleepover opportunity to discuss each other's faults. Since I hadn't been there, they wanted to sit me down and fill me in. They told me I was too perfect. They said I was too pretty, too nice, and my grades were too good. They said I did too well in softball and academic competitions. Too perfect. And it wasn't a joke. The one telling me was extremely serious with a dash of expectation, as though there was something I could do to fix this fatal flaw. I was ostracized from the group within months. We soon entered 7th grade, and they made a point of telling me often that they didn't like me at all. I was bullied. I experienced everything from being shoved into lockers to harassed on aim. I spent 3 years eating by myself, not bathing as much as I should, and reading voraciously to hide from reality. That was definitely the most awkward thing that happened at a sleepover, and it was also one of the darkest moments to reverberate so long through my life. So back in high school I was sleeping over a girl's house with a few people 9 to 10. It was in the summer and the parents were gone. It was a fairly big house so usually everyone had a place to sleep. We usually smoked black and milds and just chilled in the jacuzzi and or pool. We were fairly far away from her neighbors, but didn't cause too much noise to piss them off. It was around 2.30 in the morning and we all kind of called it a night. Then at 3 colon 30 ish in the morning I hear my name being whispered into my ear. It was the girl who I kind of liked. She was the host and just snuggled into bed with me. It was great. She mentions that she is so wet. So yeah no one thing turns into another, and we start having sex. I noticed that Ibussy was abnormally wet. Turns out the previous hour she was faking some other dude who splodged inside and just passed out because he was drunk. Chick was so horny she wanted more. Probably the guy was so drunk she didn't get her O. I happy gave her her O but it's a little gross to think that she immediately went from faking this guy to faking me. Anyways. It was a little awkward the next morning. So I dipped out early. We all talked during the week and the awkwardness faded and nothing was mentioned. Here comes the twist, we still had parties over the summer and I ended up banging her younger sister for the rest of the parties. It was in the 6th grade, and I was at a best friend's house for a boy slash girl sleepover on his birthday. It was around 3am, after we had all gone to sleep, and I had woken up needing to pee. I tried to ignore it, and hope the urge would pass, 
so I could go back to sleep, but after a few minutes of squirming around in my sleeping bag I was forced to get up and tiptoe out of the room towards the hallway bathroom. Well after a long night with lots of sodas, what had been a mild urge had quickly become urgent. After I had made it out of the room, where we were all sleeping I dashed down the hall feeling my full bladder sloshing with every step. After what felt like ages I reached the bathroom door and yanked on the handle, but the door didn't budge. I looked down and saw a light coming out from the bottom of the door and realized someone was already inside. So I danced around for a minute or two hoping whoever it was would hurry up, as by this point I was really desperate. However, soon my patience was wearing thin and I knocked on the door and told whoever was inside to hurry up. I couldn't quite identify who it was though I could tell the voice was definitely female as she responded that she would just be a minute. Well it turned out it would be closer to 5 minutes and right as I heard the toilet flush my 13 year old bladder couldn't take it anymore and I started soaking my jeans right outside the bathroom door. An accident at that age was pretty humiliating and knowing that I had no spare clothes with me and I was in a house with 12 other kids made the situation pretty humiliating. Well things were about to get worse as whoever had been inside the bathroom at long last opened the door. There stood my childhood crush in the lead bathroom doorway with her mouth agape as she realized I was standing there with pee, soaked clothes and a massive wet spot on the carpet. For a long moment neither of us said anything me from absolute humiliating and her likely from surprise. In the end she broke down in a wave of apologies thinking it was her fault because she had taken too long. She ended up grabbing a bunch of towels to help me clean up the carpet and I ended up sneaking into my friend's room and borrowing a pair of his jeans to change into. No one but the two of us knew what had happened and she never said a word about it, but every time I saw her at school I was forced to relive the embarrassment. TLDR boy girl sleep over at my friend's house, wake up in the middle of the night needing to pee, bathroom is occupied, wet myself outside of the bathroom door and the girl I had a crush on walked out to discover it. An acquaintance of mine and I were doing some work in the park, trimming trees, cleaning litter, that sort of thing, when it started storming something fierce. She was kind of a jolly girl, so, to avoid the rain, we ended up running to the house of a mutual friend who lived close to the park. She's a huge book nerd, so we'll call her Bookworm. Being the friendly person she is, she invited us inside. That's when the awkwardness started. Jelly girl starts being a total beach to me. She had been careful not to get herself dirty, but I had mud all over myself, and she demanded that I hose off. I hadn't planned on making a mess in Bookworm's house, but still. Rude. So, when I finally got cleaned up and got inside out of the cold, they were sitting there smearing these mud masks all over their faces. Seemed a little hypocritical to me, but that's just an opinion. I pointed out how silly it was, and Jelly Girl blew me off. Basically the whole night went like that, Jelly Girl being a drama queen and Bookworm trying to make things work. Did I mention it was Bookworm's first slumber party? We were trying not to ruin it for her, but try as I might someone just didn't want to get along at all. After some scathing truth or dare and a really vicious pillow fight, we went to bed. Jelly Girl is obsessive about the way she sleeps and ended up complaining about me wrinkling the blanket. Well, about midway through the night, a branch fell into her house. Nobody was hurt, but it broke through the window and let in all the cold air and rain. Bookworm didn't know what to do, and Jelly Girl just wasn't willing to get anything done besides trying to gussy up the room and things. Eventually, I did manage to get her to help me clear the branch out of the room, but it took some doing. After that, though, the night took a turn for the better. It seemed like it was a lot easier to get along after we shared that experience. We're all still good friends. It was a cold brisk fall evening of 2006 and my younger self was in 5th grade attending a sleepover party for my friend that was moving away. The night was fun, we played airsoft outside and played sparks after that. As the night went on the parents told us to calm down and go to bed. So we all got into our sleeping bags in the living room, 8 to 12 kids. We were all young at the time, so we were whispering back and forth to each other, too excited to fall asleep. My friend's brother, the one moving away, whose name I know not, took it upon himself to quiet us down, and for this story I will call him Mekas Hole. 
Somacus holstered above us all pacing past everyone, as if he was a guard watching prisoners. He had an airsoft gun, and was threatening to shoot anyone who talks. One rebellious kid, who I will refer to as young boy, did not want to be quiet. So, young boy would talk anyways, taunting Mikas Hole. Mikas Hole then shot young boy in the head with an airsoft gun. Young boy was furious, and got up screaming, and pushed Mikas Hole. Mikas Hole, in an attempt to show his dominance, shot young boy three more times. Young boy then ran to the door leading outside, opened it and picked up a large wood splitting hatchet, and ran back inside threatening to kill Mikas Hole. I was scared sheetless, thinking I was about to witness a murder while my neighbor, who also came, had been out cold since the beginning. Luckily, young boy screaming, woke up the parents, who rushed out disoriented and confused and figured out what was going on. The parents prevented any bloodshed, and scolded Mikas Hole. Anticlimactic, yes, but for a 5th grader, that was the scariest sheet I had ever seen. Till this day, no one facts with young boy. Nobody. I guess this is probably a bit late to make any real impact, but I had this one really weird friend that matured sexually well before the rest of us. That was his contention, not ours. He was over at a big sleepover that I used to have about once a month on my family farm. It was your standard country kid thing with water balloons and tree climbing, that stuff. We were in maybe 7th grade, but the sleepovers were that safe place where we could still do sheet like, have karate ninja fights, and not worry about girls thinking we were losers. So anyway it gets late, and we are all getting tired. We used to pull in all of the mattresses from the various guest rooms in the house and make one huge mat in the living room for karate ninja fights and sleep on that while trying to find softcore on HBO. So at this point there are probably 7 guys sprawled out on this 20 foot mattress, all drifting to sleep, but this one dude keeps saying guys, I know it sounds weird, but I got a jacket. What? So this is Andrew. Andrew was a great tennis player, and was the only one of us that knew how to use gel in his hair. This meant that he was the designated ladies man. And now Andrew is lying here with 6 other dudes just reciting this mantra I got a jacket. We honestly have no idea what is going on until he finally gets up and is like I'm gonna jacket. He then goes into my bathroom and locks the door. We are all piled up outside the door wondering what the hell is happening and this dude is giving us a play by play of jacking it. No shame, no hesitation, no quarter. It gets really weird when he starts going oh man you have crest, awesome. Apparently dude was getting to business with toothpaste and this next quote changed my life. If you jack it with two different kinds of toothpaste, it feels just like two chicks. Well, okay. So at this point we are all dumbfounded and we go back to the living room to sit and wonder about the whole hair gel thing. I'm now 30 years old and every so often I look at my toothpaste and think, to chicks. This is a true story, so I'm using my throwaway account, obviously. I think I was about 10 or 11 years old the time I stayed the night at my cousin's house. They had satellite TV, so it was my chance to finally see some boobies. So I decided to stay up longer than everyone else, so I could watch TV by myself and not get caught. On this particular night, my cousin and his dad had already fallen asleep in the living room where the TV was. I scoured through the TV channels for something good. I found out that Cinemax was showing Bikini Summer 2, so I left it there. For some reason, I couldn't change the volume on the TV, and it was blaring. I decided to risk it though, and I kept my thumb on the button on the remote that lets you go back to the previous channel. I would switch over to Cartoon Network every few seconds, and I did it at least once, when my cousin's mom came out of her bedroom. Yep, there I was at 4am watching Fantastic Four on Cartoon Network. Yeah, right. I had even went as far as stacking pillows in front of my cousin and his dad just in case they woke up. Ha. Huh. This would give me an extra second to flip back to Cartoon Network and act like everything is normal. Well, anyways, I saw some boobies that night and everything went fine, except for one thing. After the movie was over, I left the TV on Cartoon Network and fell asleep. A little while later I woke up and discovered that I pissed and crapped my pants. Plot twist. It was a rare thing for me to do. I think it only happened 2-3 two, two, times in my childhood. 
So I took my dirty clothes and put them in my clothes bag. Then I think I wore my last pair of clean sweet pants. Not sure. I might have put dirty clothes back on because I was still a bed wetter at that age. So it's possible I had a whole bag of piss soaked clothes. How I ever got the courage to stay over at their house is beyond me. Maybe I just lacked total self awareness at that age. Probably. Well, this became one of those situations where I ended up going back to sleep and waking up around noon, long after everyone else. Not only did I feel weird, but my cousin's mom had taken my clothes bag and was washing my clothes. To this day, we never spoke about my poopy pants and all the piss. As I think about it now, it occurs to me that, while I was asleep, Someone probably could smell the piss and sheet smell coming from my bag of clothes, and there was probably a discussion about me while I lay there asleep in the living room. But as they say, ignorance is bliss, so I surprisingly never gave it much thought as a child. I always figured the poopy pants was a secret between my cousin's mom and I, but now I'm old enough to realize I'm sure the whole family tree has heard about it. I was 16, and my parents had jobs that made them travel a lot. They were once gone for a weekend on independent business trips, and I seized the opportunity to have an empty. It was small, about 30 kids, and somewhat calm, because we have a small two-bedroom condominium, and I have boring friends. All we really did was drink, take some map, listen to electro and ENB, and eat. After about 1 in the morning, most everyone left, except for this one guy whose I only knew a bit. He talked to me about how his dad wouldn't be happy if he showed up, and that he could only get out of trouble if he pretended to be at his mother's house, since his parents were divorced and not on speaking terms. I'll let him stay, why not, and I found a place for him on the couch. It didn't suit him, because he was this tall, lanky kid. Eventually, he fell asleep on the floor beside my bed in my bedroom, with myself in the bed proper. We got to talking, because I had no reason to sleep, he talked about his family problems at great length, and I decided to roll off the bed and sit with him on the floor. I gave him a hug, and he completely lost it. He blubbered into my shoulder something about how he always wanted me to help him, about how I looked strong and indomitable, I was about 5 minutes and 11 seconds, 140 pounds at this point, and this bit made me laugh. He eventually held onto my shoulder on the floor, and just kind lay there on me, spilling his guts out. After a good long time of this, and thanks to the help of MDMA that we had earlier, we sort of fell into this cuddle position on the floor, and his crying stopped after a bit. After about an hour, maybe, in this position, we started making out on the floor of the condo, and we later graduated to full on gay sex on the bed. He left next the next morning, and we'd shoot little covert glances at each other in the halls. I never was really exposed for it by anyone, but the teacher body at my small charter high school never really looked at me the same way after a couple weeks had passed. I wouldn't really call it a sleepover as I was 25, and it was just a drunken, hey I'm crashing on your couch. But I got so drunk, after falling asleep on friend's couch, pissed myself, all over the couch and buddy's blanket. When I woke up I was still drunk and clothes were soaked, so I decided it'd be a good idea to throw the piss soaked blanket in the back of one of his closets, strip down but naked and head home. But, being drunk still, I left my shoes there, walked outside but naked in the middle of winter, two days before Christmas, in Germany, got in my truck and drove two towns over to where my house was. Right outside my town, hit a patch of ice around a curve, truck fishtails and I go sliding off about a 4 foot drop off the side of the road. Truck nose dives in, completely faked the front end, ended up being totaled by the insurance company. Still but naked. Truck won't start, so I'm freezing my drunkers off sitting in my truck. Decided best not to be there when the cops or any passerbys show up so run, completely naked and shoeless, the last mile or two to my house in the snow and freezing cold. Pass out at my house, to be woken up by the German police knocking at my door saying they found my truck. I told them I had come home, to get warm clothes, before going back to my truck. Somehow I didn't get charged with fleeing the scene of an accident, didn't get charged with DUI, and my insurance company covered the total truck, even though I was driving drunk. One of my dumbest and luckiest nights of my life. Started off as a simple sleepover though. TLDR. 
piss myself on friend's couch after getting smashed, drove home but naked, crashed truck, walked last mile in snow, and freezing cold completely naked. Didn't get any charges pressed, insurance paid for total truck. Dumbest night of life. When I was somewhere between 8 to 10 I thought Michael Jackson was pretty much the best thing ever, but my guest didn't like him. I put on Moonwalker, and then got up all in his face, and sang and danced along to the songs. He was visibly highly uncomfortable, but I didn't care. When I was 13 I got it on with my friend's 16 year old sister while he was, theoretically, sleeping in the bunk below. It wasn't sech, but it was everything but, and I'm sure we were less than perfectly still or quiet. Also at 13, my other best friend had a different 16 year old sister who would frequently give me blue jobs, sometimes for as long as an hour. He was always in the same room, often watching. It was a very unique friendship. Listing these off like this, it really sounds like I was a scumbag friend. Edit, thought of another one, where I wasn't the one being awkward. However it wasn't a childhood sleepover purse. When I was around 22, myself and another guy, Steve, were spending the weekend at a mutual friend's new apartment. So this mutual friend, James, had just graduated from the school we all attended together, and was giving it his first go living on his own. He rented the smallest, sheetiest apartment I've ever seen. It wasn't so much an apartment as a large closet. There were no windows, or a kitchen, and the whole place was barely big enough for a bed to fit into. It was terribly depressing, and also frustrating, because my friend had his priorities in all the wrong places, with the crappiest apartment in the world and no job, the first thing he did, after leaving school was spend most of his savings on building himself a $2000 gaming computer, that was his pride and joy. Anyway, this was our first time getting drunk with Steve, who was a big burly guy and ex-meth addict. Steve ends up spending around $120 on alcohol, just for the three of us. Jaja Meister, Gold Skledger and some other stuff. Then, he ends up drinking most of it himself. James gets pretty wasted too, at one point he got up in the middle of the night, and felt like he had to go out onto the street, to do god knows what, and we spent like an hour on the stairs physically restraining him. Finally, in the wee hours of the morning, we are all back in the total darkness of the hide hole of an apartment and sleeping. James is in bed, and Steve and I are on the floor. Steve, this huge, blasted drunk guy, is evidently a bit cramped, and starts to kick something in the way of his foot. A couple more kicks and there is the hugest, loudest crash. James and I bolt awake and turn on the light. Steve has kicked out the leg of the desk and everything that was on it, including James' new $2000 computer, has tumbled onto the floor. Immediately, James begins to swear at the top of his lungs, and it just gets worse, when the machine doesn't turn boot up, just gives an error code. Steve wakes up to the scene, sits up a bit, vomits, then lays back down in his own vomit, and continues to sleep. I convince James to go back to bed as well, that we'll handle it when we get up. We do so. Steve and I spend the rest of the following morning taking the computer apart piece by piece and reassembling it, while James watches, fuming. Eventually, much to everyone's relief, we do get it working again. That was definitely one of my most uncomfortable nights. When I was 12 I went on a weekend long field trip with the rest of my class to this really sheety countryside farm. It was horrible. We were all forced to study on a weekend with teachers. As for sleeping conditions, there were about enough beds on the second floor for all the girls to sleep in but all the boys had to sleep on the floor of the living room of the first floor. This was even though there was still a vacant bed on a different room from the one of the girls, because the teachers didn't want for anyone to feel privileged over the others. Well, there was this old TV on the room we were sleeping in and some of the guys decided to watch this late night reality show where they invited some girl to let an actress trick her boyfriend into cheating on her, complete with scenes of the boyfriend getting it on with the actress. The guys who had already hit puberty were all over that show and the rest wanted to look as if they were as mature as the ones watching. I was pretty much the only one that didn't care about that show and just wanted to sleep, and since I was the social outcast anyway they just told me to fuck off and deal with the TV noise and surprisingly bright light. So I took my sleeping bag and cuddled myself against the corner with my back turned to the TV. 
one of the teachers overheard a DV noise and came in to see a bunch of preteens practically circling around soft corborn while I was on the other end of the room trying to sleep. He unplugged the TV, took the cables with him, and said tomorrow we'll talk. Afterwards he pointed to me and said you can go upstairs and sleep in that vacant bed TLDR not being a horny preteen saved me from sleeping on the floor for an entire weekend. Haha <laughs> so this time way back my friend and I decided to sleep over at one of our friend's house who we played soccer with, we were like 10 to 11, typical soccer mom time, and we thought it was going to be so sick. We went through the usual sleepover stuff, playing Donkey Kong and Super Smash Bros on N64 until this kid and his friends wanted to play some other motocross game on his GameCube, like really? What a cork smack. Either way, it was late anyway, so my friend and I went to bed. Keep in mind this was the first time we were at this kid's house, I had only known him for 2-3 to three months from soccer. Anyway, we had broad sleeping bags and hit the sack no problem, a couple kids were already asleep, all in this kid's room, when we started to fall asleep. Now this is where it gets weird. About one hour later, it could have been longer, I was half asleep, I started hearing these moaning noises from the bed. What the fuck? I kind of rolled over, only to see this birthday kid with some other soccer player in his bed with his erect dick getting choked like a motherfucker. I glance at my friend, who is faking wide awake staring at this abomination like the antichrist has come upon him, almost about to cry. I don't even know how to react, so I just roll over, trying to go back to sleep. Now little did I know, these cunts were doing the old mutual jerk, classic, and they started getting louder and louder. Finally, the birthday boy decided to reach his peak, effectively blowing his load off the bed and hitting my friends, whose sleeping bag was in the fallout zone, hand. My friend, who was wide awake, laid there for about 3 minutes, just staring at the roof, debating whether his life was even meaningful anymore. I hadn't even known this had happened until he just let out a scream. Like the loudest faking 11 year old scream you'll ever hear. Wrong move motherfucker. The birthday boy's parents ran in, while the birthday boy was still slapping gizzard on this other dude, and my friend was crying hysterically. The parents went up a sheet, kicking everyone out of the room, and we heard screaming from up there all night. My friend washed his hands, but was still sporadically crying. Another guy and I played Super Smash Bros. for about an hour until the parents came downstairs with the most distraught faces, and contacted our parents to pick us up. I faking killed it as Samus that night. 8th grade. Me and two of my friends, Scott and Daniel were spending the night at Scott's place. It was a warm night, so we were just sitting on the back porch. It was getting late and Daniel started to fall asleep. We had one of those citronella candles, and for some reason thought it would be funny to move it really close to Daniel, so the smoke was blowing into his face. He started coughing and sheet. Hilarious, right? All of a sudden, he gets up, still appearing to be asleep. His eyes were open, but he didn't seem lucid. He started walking around. We followed him all around the house. It was pretty damn amusing, until we noticed him eyeballing the cutlery on the kitchen counter. He goes after a knife, and we try to hold him back. Suddenly, it seems as though he has superhuman strength. Realizing we can't stop him, we hand him a ping pong paddle. He then starts stabbing us with it hard. Eventually we all go to sleep, but Scott and I were pretty freaked out about the whole thing. In the morning we were like, what the fuck, dude? But Daniel claimed to have no recollection of the previous night's events. TLDR, don't inhale citronella candles or you might try to murder your friends. Spent the night at a friend's house when I was around 10. We had the bright idea of setting his alarm to go off at 6. So we could get up to play video games and have a good while before my dad came to pick me up. At some point during the night, my friend got up to go sleep in his parents' room for whatever reason and left me there. When the alarm went off at 6, I couldn't find him and for the life of me couldn't turn that damn thing off, so I went looking for him around the house. When I got to his parents' room, the way the house is set up their closet is directly in front of the door and I saw his mom walk in. I started walking in, so I could ask her to turn off the alarm, but before anything could be said, she started getting undressed, and I got a full view of her topless. 
normally a moment 10 year old boys live for, but I was not about to be known as that kid in school who spied on his best friend's mom getting changed, so I got the hell out of there. I went to the kitchen to compose myself and headed back when I thought she'd be done. I ran into her just as she was leaving the room for her morning jog and pretended like nothing happened. Looking back, I was probably stuttering like a mofo and was avoiding any and all eye contact with both her and my friend for the rest of the day. TLDR, accidentally saw my best friend's mom topless while wanting to ask her something, went away and nonchalantly ran into her again like nothing happened. My family was best friends with a preacher's family when I was maybe 6. They moved to another town and our whole family spent the night. My older brother spent the night in the room of the boy his age. I was assigned to sleep in the basement with the girl my age along with my little brother. The parents were playing cards upstairs in the kitchen. The girl decides she wants to play I'll show you me. Northeast and you show me yours. I was completely mesmerized by her vagina, which she most eagerly exposed without the slightest request, but I was way too embarrassed to whip out my mini sklang. She kept pressuring me to do it, but I just told her I wanted to see hers again. When I wouldn't give in to her demands, she ran up the stairs screaming, telling our parents I kept trying to get her to take off her pants. Worst part was, while I was chewed out and ostracized as some kind of 6 year old rapist in my own bedroom slash cell for the rest of the night, my little brother spent the rest of the night with that sweet little innocent tart. Oh god, I have a few. I'll post one for now. I was really drunk one time after a party and my friend said I should stay over. There was about 4 of us sharing a bed and we were pretty tight, so it was normal and nobody suspected anything sexual would happen. So we are all just laying there, chatting away in the darkness, and at one point, I really needed to piss, so I go to the bathroom. Here is where my memory ends. The next day, I woke up in a strange bed. I was sheeting it, where was I? What the fuck happened after the bathroom? I heard voices and determined I was still in my friend's flat, but I was in one of the other flatmates' beds. Ah fair enough, I must have stayed in his B because he wasn't in and there was limited room in my friend's bed. All was well. Nope. I leave the room, go back to my friend's room and see her flatmate standing in there chatting to everyone else who stayed the night. Then I have a flashback. After the bathroom, I climbed into bed with him. I seriously to this day have no idea why I did that as me and him were not even that close friends. We just said hi whenever we saw each other and that was it. He went away to rugby practice and started babbling oh my god this is so embarrassing what happened why did I do that etc and my friends kept joking about how they thought he was gay so maybe that's why I went in there they thought I just went home after I pissed. Then I had pieces of memory come back to me. After the toilet, I went to the wrong door, not my friend's room with everyone in, but the one next door, where her flatmate was having sex with his girlfriend. I went in, watched them for about 10 seconds, they saw I was there, but they carried on. I then walked out, and walked across the hall to her other flatmate's room climbed over him, and got into bed with him, and he simply said hello, and covered me with quilt. Why did flatmate A plus girlfriend continue, having sex with me watching? Why did flatmate B act as if me climbing into bed with him was normal? Why did flatmate A not mention me watching him having sex and pretend it never happened? What was going through my head? <laughs> Setting the scene, late 90s, middle school, buddy Dan's father's house. Parents separated. Dan likes to vent his frustration regarding said separation. Dan's special, strength, 9, perception, 9, endurance, 9. Charisma, 9. Intelligence, 1. Agility, 2. Luck, 1. These will come in to play a later in our story. Not that much later though, as 8pm rolls around bedtime. Slam in Pogs in Dan's room, his father come in, in nothing but his underwear. Scoops up all the Pogs, shuts off the lights. Not much of an effect though as the sun is still up. My buddy Ralph and I are confused. More by the bedtime than the underwear scene we had just witnessed. Regardless, break out the nerf guns. Knowing his dad would get pissed we set up an ambush. Made a crap ton of noise for like 30 seconds then pretended to be sleeping. Dad comes in, not happy nerf master blaster to the face courtesy of Dan. 
Now, he's pissed. Another sound. Ralph and I are going home. This leads to laughing fits for the next 30 minutes and inevitably a game of dare or dare. The only turn I remember is Dan's. The dare was simple. Sneak out of the room. Past his father's room. Down the stairs to the kitchen. Grabbed the entire box of shark bites and returned and never returned. He tripped coming up the stairs. Alerting his father. He panicked and went into a sprint for his room. Tripped as he got to the door. Horror movie dragged point gif. Agility minus one. All we heard was slamming, screaming, and crying for the next 30 minutes. Can't confirm, but fairly certain shoes and belts were involved. Weapons were not nerfed. Endurance plus one. Strength plus one. Ralph and I sat in a terrifying silence for a solid hour after that. Then, suddenly his dad came in. Dragged his mattress off the bed and out of the room. Dan will be sleeping in the closet tonight. Typical middle school sleepover. I had a sleepover with several of my friends when I was in the 6th or 7th grade and we were upstairs in my room, lived in a tree level, and we decided we wanted to do something on the computer, which was downstairs in the basement. My sister and her boyfriend were passed out on the couch and two of her friends were drunkenly passed out in the two recliners in the room next to the computer room, so we just quietly snuck in there and kept the light off, trying to keep it down as not to wake them. We mess around on the computer, I forget what we were doing, and suddenly we hear weird moans coming from outside. Eric peeks his head out the room, and sees my sister giving her boyfriend a blue job, so we all hide in the corner of the room, where they couldn't see us, and try to wait until they finish. Someone, not me because at this point I was just panicking, and didn't want to see my sister doing anything, just kept looking out, and then they started just having sex, on the couch, in front of her two passed out friends. So we decided to one by one sneak past the couch, and up the two flights of stairs, that would take us back to my room. Also apparently before we all started sneaking back upstairs one of my friends who stayed upstairs came down to get a drink and saw them doing it and quickly ran back upstairs. Needless to say all my friends found it hilarious but I thought it was awkward as fuck. They never did catch us but I foolishly told my mom about it a few days later and my sister got yelled at for doing it when I had friends over. I wouldn't call it a sleepover, I was 20 at the time. I was already really drunk one night and dropped off at another party my friend told me about. My friend had already left and it was an after prom party which I knew nobody at. But I was already really drunk and didn't have my car there to pass out in so I had a few more beers. Then they started turning off the lights at like 1 or 2 am and half the people were crashing there. So I just laid down, took a couple Zanooks to help me sleep and passed out against a wall. I woke up the next morning with everyone being evacuated from the house in a panic. I go to ask what was going on and if I could use someone's phone to call my friend to pick me up. I apparently scared the sheet out of the guy and he almost punched me. I didn't know why. He told me that everyone thought I was dead and they were getting all the drunk miners out of the house before they called the cops. That is how I became known as the random drunk guy and the title lasted a long time. TLDR. Passed out at a random party drunk and everyone thought I was dead. <laughs> Lived in the country, pretty rural area. I had a bunch of friends, sort of, but never spent the night with any of them. So, one winter, two of our classmates crossed one of the farms to see if we wanted to go sledding. We did. We didn't usually like these two. One was loud and the other was scary, but we had a lot of fun. We played all day. The next day, we all went hunting. It was good. So, they asked if we wanted to spend the night and watch some movies they rented. I had never watched a rented movie before. I was in 7th grade and my family didn't own a VCR. So, I said yeah. We're over there watching Commando. It was pretty cool, but after that, his older sisters took over the television and watched Pretty in Pink. When his dad got home, Sheet got very uncomfortable. One of the kids was my age, the other was a year older, but got held back in school. Their dad came home, grabbed a bottle of whiskey, and sat in his chair to watch television. Their mother cooked dinner. Everyone was quiet. I mean quiet. They didn't make a sound while he was in the room. He patted his leg and had his older daughter, 16, 
come sit in the chair with him, and they all watched television together like that for the rest of the night. When he finally went ate and went to bed, everyone went back to joking around, but quieter. During the night, I had to share a bed with one of my friends. I don't know if he was cold or what, but I woke in the middle of the night to find him humping my side. I slipped out of bed and just slept on the floor for the rest of the night. Next morning, woke to find my friend's 16 year old and 15 year old sisters sitting on the couch in their panties watching Pretty in Pink, and it was an image that fueled a thousand dreams. They were hot for the most part. I asked my friend why he kept trying to hump me while I was asleep, and he turned back into the bully from school and ordered me to leave. I was happy to leave. My father's farm was a mile and a half away, but I preferred the walk to spending any more time in that crazy household. Never wanted to spend the night at someone's house ever again. Had a sleepover at my house during second grade. About six of my friends were there including my cousin. While I was playing around in my room I walk into my playroom to see my brother peeing all over my cousin who happened to be playing with my GI. Joe's got faking pee all over my GI. Joe's and I flipped out. Also one time I went over to one of my friend's house to just spend the night with him. So we are sleeping then all of a sudden I wake up and I got a sheet. Like really bad. Like about to shoot of like a freaking rocket sheet. So I run to his bathroom happening to leave a trail of liquid sheet leading to the bathroom. I happened to get my liquid sheet all over his frog rug in his bathroom and the only thing I thought of the time to hide it was to flip over the rug. After I was done I got back in the bed and started fatching like crazy. Luckily for me, it wasn't a fatch it was a shot. So I got liquid sheet in his bed, lead a trail of it to the bathroom, and got it all over his frog rug. The only thing I could think to do with all of this happening was sleep so that's what I did. In the morning we were then eating breakfast and his mom said I smell something really bad. So I admit that I did sheet last night and I didn't wash my hands. Best excuse I could come up with at the time. So after washing my hands I sit back down to eat breakfast and his mom still says she smells something bad. I then admit that I had a sheet storm in their house last night and we then proceed to clean up the carnage of the liquid sheet. It was pretty embarrassing, but I'm still good friends with the friend, and I joke about it till this day. I was in second grade when this happened, and they didn't find the sheet on the frog rug until a week later. They couldn't find out why the bathroom smelt so bad until they flipped the rug over. I guess I hid it pretty well. A little late to the party, but what the hell. I was about 10, and it was my best friend Josh's birthday party. We were all asleep in his room, in sleeping bags. My other friend Jordan was also there. There were several other kids there that Jordan and I didn't know because they were from one of Josh's other social circles. There was this really annoying kid there. He was fat, loud, and very obnoxious. He ended up eating too much birthday cake and falling asleep before everyone else. Well, earlier in the day Jordan had showed me this cool cinnamon breath drop stuff he had gotten back when that sheet was all the rage in the mid 90s and I had a brilliant idea to put some drops in the annoying fat kids as crack. It took a deft hand, but we were able to open his sleeping bag, shimmy his pants down enough, and surgically apply no less than 10 drops of cinnamon breath drops all down the length of this kid's butt crack. Giggling ensued. The next morning, when he woke up, he kept complaining about how sticky his butt was. I found the whole thing quite brilliant, and still do. I was at youth group at church on a Sunday when I was 12 or 13, and it was Labor Day weekend or something, so we had that Monday off. There was this kid who I was sort of friends with because his mom and my mom were friends. He seemed pretty normal for the most part, but he was home showed so all of his friends were from church and whatever other after school activities he did. He wanted to sleep over at my house that night, so he forced his way in by asking my mom before mentioning anything to me. She said it was fine, so obviously I couldn't make up an excuse and say no, so I just went with it. I wasn't all that close with the guy, so I asked my best friend at the time who lived in the neighborhood if he wanted to sleep over also. He came over, we did the usual 12 year old sleepover deal like play video games and watch movies while drinking soda past our bedtime, etc. 
so I'm finally about ready for bed and tell the guy he can sleep wherever but that I was going to head to my room and sleep in my bed because I'm a shitty host like that when he blurts out I'm really hard right now and pokes his dick out of the top of his shorts. My friend and I are yelling at him to put it away and shielding our faces until he asks us if we want to compare dick sizes. We both tell him no, that we just want to go to bed, but he keeps begging us and telling us that we have to rub our dicks some until they're hard or else it won't be fair. This went on for about 25 minutes until I finally told him to go to bed and that I didn't want to beat my meat in front of two guys or see the tip of his dick again. He ended up moving away pretty shortly after, that which was a nice relief. From what I know, he is straight and has a girlfriend. I'm guessing it was just a case of awkward homeshold kid doesn't know that whipping your dick out in front of people is weird. TLDR, awkward homeshold friend from church whips his meat out, hopefully eventually realize that's not normal. I'm mad this is late, but even late it's worth telling. So about 6 or 7 of us are all sleeping at my buddy's house. We were in 8th grade so basically old enough to not be complete idiots, but young enough to act like idiots anyway. After the host's mother yelled at us for running around in the street yelling the F word while shooting each other with their soft guns we decided to go inside and sleep. One particular party guest named Brandon kept turning on his cell phone light and he wouldn't let anyone sleep. So we all started picking on him and telling him he was afraid of the dark. This went on for about 20 minutes until he made a proposal. Alright, he said. If I do something crazy, will you guys stop calling me a bussy? We all agreed. Okay. I'll eat my own sheet, Brandon said with an ingenious smirk. We all almost pissed ourselves with excitement. The entire slumber party turned into a rager. Brandon went into the bathroom and soon emerged with a small piece of turt inside a little disposable apple sauce cup. We all huddled around the bathroom as Brandon corralled the turt with a hot dog bun. This was it. With our eyes all agaze we witnessed our extremely stupid friend eat and chew a human piece of sheet and swallow it. He even washed it down with an refreshing Pepsi. Almost immediately, he projectile vomited into the toilet. Like a laser beam of sheet and Pepsi. So after all the commotion calmed Brandon recognized he had completely destroyed his reputation by eating sheet. So this genius decided to give us the money back we paid him as extra incentive to eat his own sheet. I didn't actually do it. Here guys have your money back. But there was no denying him eating that sheet. I'll never forget the time I saw a kid eat his own sheet and vomit it into a toilet. He came back to school the following Monday and already his fecal eating endeavor was front page news. He got sick and didn't come to school for two weeks. Not sure if it was e Carly or embarrassment. I was 15 going on 16. It was my birthday and I had a lot of boys and girls as friends come over for an up all night birthday party. At the time of my age, I just started smoking the devil's lettuce and cigarettes, which obviously was wrong and unknown by my parents. Anyway, I had a make friend who was one of the kids that started me on marijuana, and I told everyone we couldn't do any of that until I knew my parents went to sleep. So, we waited until 11pm to pull out goodie bags. One of my friends brought the classic Cheech and Chong movies and we started. Halfway through, it turns really sexual, and I'm seeing a pair of people making out, two guys comparing dick sizes, and then there's me and this girl, I'm a girl as well, she was a friend of a friend they invited, but I was the type of person who welcomed almost anyone into my life, so it was fine, that I'd never spoken to, or met this person before. We were sharing a joint, and she leans on me, striking my arm and says, I'm gonna fuck you tonight, birthday girl. My male friends overheard her and swarmed over to us, expecting a show. Just as she's shoving her tongue in my mouth and a hand on my tit, my mom comes storming downstairs, flings open the door and stands there, stunned. All of us are frozen in fear, especially me. She looked around the room, boy to girl, zippers undone and her lovely daughter being felt up by another young woman. Mouth agape, both of us, she finally managed to stammer, get, your, hormones out of my house she stated at me as she slowly backed out and closed the door 
Needless to say, my friends had a good time, but not when my mom is awkwardly standing at the front door explaining to each parent on the phone, in detail, everything she witnessed. As my friends crept out of the garage window one by one to avoid my mom. We couldn't find a shovel, so our first thought was to use a couple of baseball bats to beat a hole into my friend's backyard so we could bury a bottle of his parents' wine. We just watched a history channel thing on wine cellars. I forget why, but we thought it'd be better if we did it in our underwear. After burying the bottle we found a ladder ball kit. It was late and overcast, so it was dark outside. Like, advanced darkness. We couldn't play inside so we went and found a candle so we could go outside and play a ladder ball by candlelight. Looking back it's even weirder, but all four of us took off our pants and played one-handed ladder ball. One hand for our nads and the other for throwing. I guess you could say there were four guys playing with each other's balls at 2am. It only got really awkward when his parents came out in the morning to find us pouring the hot candle wax on each other. We were trying to see if we could get it to stick to our body hair, not that hair, and rip it off. I don't think they ever found the bottle of wine. I already typed one up, but I remember this gem. I was friends with this guy for like a month in 7th grade. He was known for not giving a sheet for other people, and I wanting to be cool, tried being his friend. We're at a sleepover, it's just me and him, and we're 13 he steals his dad's bottle of rye, while his parents are out, and we get plastered. Well he then proceeds to show me all his dad's such toys. His dad had a giant rubber cork that you put over yours in order to better please your women or something. Well this kid did not say a word, we're just drunk, and he walks out of his parents room, but naked with this faking, rubber sklang on his dick. The idea of both him and his father wearing this fake rubber dick over this, and the idea that it's been inside his mom really freaked me out. At this point I'm trying to leave, and he's trying to convince me that we should go to the mall to go buy and sell some weed. At that age I was very innocent, and was freaking out. I called my mom, and asked her permission to go on a drug deal with said friend she came over in like 5 minutes flat from across town, to pick me up lol. The year later, the guy kept getting suspended from school for sexually harassing the hot low twenties teacher he kept asking her if she had nipple rings, if he could fuck her, etc. A kid had a screw loose mo. I was about 11 and had invited over a kid who I had been very good friends with for 7 years but was slowly drifting apart from. He was a farm kid with hyper-religious parents, one of whom had yelled at me when I was 8 for practicing black magic because we did the light as a feather thing. The kid had a pretty oppressed slash repressed home life where I don't think they did anything other than chores and church. Anyways, we've been hanging out and spend most of our time playing video games, which he wasn't supposed to do. We go to bed and decide to both sleep in my bed. For some weird reason I thought that putting a stuffed bear between us would make it not gay. I can't sleep, and my cat is lying by my arm, purring, and I'm petting him, while waiting to drift off. After a while, I feel my friend moving on the other side of the bear, and I suddenly see his hand slowly sliding over the stuffed bear, and he begins to gently caress my arm, and then my chest, and then moving down my stomach, and I had no idea what the fact to do. So I suddenly and awkwardly said dude do you want to pet the cat? And his hand freezes on my stomach and he goes up and no. And then very slowly retracts back across the bear. When I woke up in the morning he'd had his mom come and pick him up early. We only spoke to each other in passing after that. Fast forward 18 years and I'm now married to a girl who went to high school with us. We are reminiscing about people, and she mentions the kid, and how he was the perfect Christian boy, and the boyfriend she always wanted, and he was so perfect. And I just slowly prodded her with. Did you ever see him with a girlfriend growing up? No. All his friends were girls weren't they? Well yeah. I'm pretty sure he's gay. No he isn't, you're just jealous, that I had a crush on him. He groped me, while he was sleeping at my house. He was going for my dick. WH, what? That was satisfying. The thing is, I never saw that kid so much as look at a girl, or talk about a girl, in a sexual manner. His hyperfundy parents eventually had him doing missionary work, then running a hyperfundy radio show in Alaska. 
but last year, out of the blue, and without any dating, or previous pictures or any hint of a relationship, he's suddenly married to a woman. And the thing is, I just don't buy it. I know that guy's gay. I'm 100% sure of it. There were way too many signs, not the least of which being his hand searching for my business in the dark. I don't even buy that he's B. I'm convinced his parents and fundamentalist upbringing have him extremely sexually repressed. We were friends on Facebook until he fell off the map and disappeared from it altogether, for reasons I'm not sure of, and I haven't heard a word about him for some time now. I saw a lot of awkward little moments on there. I feel really bad for him, and I wish he hadn't had such a painfully fundamentalist upbringing that I'm convinced really faked him up in the head when he started to discover he was gay. And looking back on it, maybe I should let him get in one good tug, just as a way of saying it's okay, man, this is the only chance you're likely going to get. Have one on the house. When I was a kid I had a good friend who I had over at my house all the time for sleepovers. He was awesome. We'd often have my mom barge into my room and demand we go to sleep because we were giggling in the dark over nothing. Well it was finally his turn to host me for a sleepover and I was major excited. We played with the cool toys like the plastic tube towers you'd build up really high and put marbles down. Well, it was almost time to go to bed and I started to feel a ache in my legs. As a kid I suffered horrific leg cramps, like so bad my parents recall me waking up in the middle of the night screaming from the pain. It was hell. Imagine parents holding a kid trying to console them and saying don't tense up to a kid who can't even fathom why his legs are killing him so badly in the first place. My house was well stocked with chewable kids painkillers. Well my legs started cramping and I knew it was coming. I did my best to ignore it. Maybe it will go away this time. Maybe I can have a night where I can spend it over at another kid's house. Nope. Life decided otherwise. My parents were called and as my dad carried me out the last thing I saw was my friend sitting on the floor. Heartbroken. His eyes filled with tears but not a sob was heard. He hated it as much as I did. I went to a church gathering, JW, at a friend's house where lots of other people were hanging out and a few people were sleeping over. Dinner was being served on the first floor and the dinner table was about 5 feet away from the smaller bathroom. I went in and for some reason thought it was a good idea to take a sheet there instead of the bathroom upstairs that was much more private. I ended up dropping probably one of the biggest dumps of my entire life and attempted to flush the toilet. It clogged and the logs were just laying there. There was no plunger and people were knocking on the door. Because they had to use the bathroom point I freaked out and was nearly in tears from the embarrassment that was bound to come. My last result was a metallic towel hanger which I thought I could use to dislodge the toilet stuffing. I emptied the garbage in the waste bucket and wrapped my hand in the plastic bag. I grabbed the hanger forced the hanger along with my hand into the toilet trying to clear the clog and thankfully it cleared. I flushed again, put the bag back in the waste basket, put the garbage back in the waste basket with bag, and cleaned the hanger, and placed it on the table again. I want you to imagine the looks I was getting after opening the door. Guess I'm way too late, but I couldn't pass this up. For my best friend's 10th or 11th birthday she had a sleepover. We were a small group my friends so there was only me and another friend from school and she also had her 12 to 13 year old cousin over. I had never met the girl before but she was a little older so I thought she was cool. We stayed up really late laughing and playing games and eventually the cousin suggested we play truth or dare in the bathroom. I why the bathroom was chosen but it is semi important to the story. We started playing and as far as I can remember it was pretty normal at first. But then the cousin dared everyone to strip and do a little dance. So. We all did. It was so uncomfortable. But I thought well the other girls are doing it so whatever. We each like took off our shirts and our pants and underwear. And wiggled around in a little spun. I remember the cousin had like little boobs already. And I thought it was weird point needless to say I was pretty embarrassed. And ashamed of this later. Because that same year our classmates started rumors that my two friends and I were all lesbian together because we only spent time with each other. I'm still a little traumatized by it to this day and it's one of the main reason it's hard for me to get close to other girls. 
multiple awkward things in a row at the same sleepover. Actually, so this was last year, my junior year of high school. I got to be really good friends with this super cute chick who I had a mega crush on. Problem was, she had a boyfriend in college. So it's New Year's Eve and she invites me to sleep over and celebrate the new year and all that shit. She also invites two of her other female friends and her boyfriend, of course. So she and her boyfriend are cuddling together on the same couch throughout the entire night. They barely fit onto the couch and I'm just sitting there chatting with the other girls and secretly wallowing in my own self-pity at how I'll never have a chance with my crush. We stay up really late like anyone else at a teenage sleepover, and at 3 o'clock in the morning, we are all talking about what college is like, and the boyfriend chimes in, because he's in college, and says college is pretty much one big co-ed sleepover. My crush suddenly gets incredibly angry, because she's constantly paranoid that her boyfriend is cheating on her with other girls at college, and this comment sets her off. Her and her boyfriend start shouting at each other, and me and the other two girls are sitting there silently watching it all unfold. Eventually, my crush and her boyfriend leave the house and continue the shouting match outside, in the freezing cold, on New Year's Day at faking 3 in the morning. They're outside for a long time. Me and the other two girls start chatting it up again, but then I hear the boyfriend driving away in his car. When my crush walks back in, me and the other girls immediately fall silent. We all stay up for about another 30 minutes in complete silence, and then we start getting ready to sleep. The other two girls in my crush have already staked out all three couches, leaving me with nowhere to sleep but the floor. My crush says to me hey, you can share this couch with me. There's plenty of room. Now, anyone with eyes could see that there was no room on that couch, and that we would both have to press up really close against each other to fit. My crush was probably expecting Sech from her boyfriend, and now that her boyfriend had left without Sech, she was horny, and I was the only other guy at the party. Naturally, every brain cell in my head was screaming yes at me, but then my pride took over. I would not play second fiddle to anyone. So I ended up declining her rather obvious offer of Sech, and slept on the floor. I woke up in the morning sore all over the place from having slept on the floor. I also had a raging erection after having dreamt about my crush for the millionth time. I killed my bonner after everyone started waking up and then peaced out. In 7th grade, one of my friends Peter decided to sleep over at my house one night. We played video games all night, but eventually got bored and wanted to do something else. We had a female friend who was also our age who lived down the street, so we decided to ding dong ditch her. We got a whole mess of things, spaghettius, boxes, pennies, and threw them into a brown paper bag on went to her house. Put the bag at the door, rang the doorbell and hid. We saw her come to the door, but didn't come outside, mind you this was at 10pm, so we did it again, and again, until eventually she didn't come to the door anymore. Admitting failure, we decided to walk back home. One of the neighbors came out with a flashlight, and was like what the fuck are you doing? and escorted us back to my house point little did we know that what was actually happening was our friend thought someone was trying to break into her house and she was in the master bedroom closet clenching her younger sister and crying hysterically. She had called her parents who were at a wine and cheese festival an hour away who immediately drove home. The parents found out from the neighbor that it was us and came over to my house and the father began furiously yelling at us telling us that he was going through an hour of pure hell. The mother was upset, but she understood we were just messing around. Then the father sat my father down and lectured him on controlling his children. One of the most awkward nights and subsequent weeks after I've ever gone through. TLDR ding dong ditching a friend went horribly wrong. When I was in grade 5 or 6, I was looking forward to getting a puppy. Mine was only a few weeks old and I couldn't bring her home yet. My best friend wanted a pup and rescued one from a shelter nearby. Myself and a few other friends slept over at his house and I got up in the middle of the night to take a leak. Now keep in mind this pup was 8 weeks old and already house trained. When I woke up on the top bunk I noticed the floor was laid out in a minefield of little puppy sized cheats. I carefully navigated my way to the door much like Indiana Jones. I went to the bathroom and returned to the room we were sleeping in. 
I completely forgot about all the poo and stepped in one pile that happened to be still warm and it smooshed between my toes like terrible smelling play-doh. I panicked and kicked my foot in the air to remove the poop as soon as possible. I sprayed a pattern of warm wet sheet up the wall in front of me. Now to remove the crap from between my toes I used the closest blanket I could find. It happened to belong to the evening's host. I cleaned between my toes and any other leftover poop from my foot and placed the blanket back on his bed near his face and went to sleep. In the morning the host woke up by stepping in some poo himself and yelling. Then he noticed it up the wall and on his blanket and started yelling. I didn't laugh, I just felt bad. I helped him clean up and when it came to the wall, he asked how that could happen. I suggested the dog fetched it while pooping and sprayed the wall. Seemed likely to me, but it wasn't well received. Shortly after my friend couldn't care for the dog or exercise him enough and they gave him to a family with a farm where he could poo wherever he pleased. Wow these are a lot tamer than I expected. I've had so many more awkward sleepovers than I can even remember. Here are some of the highlights. 6th grade at my friend's sleepover. Probably about 10 people from our grade and his one older neighbor, by a year or two, were there. His neighbor decided to show us how to mass new bait. We spent at least an hour with all of us bearers trying to bait. Our one small skinny friend would go from guy to guy sitting in their laps naked because he has the most feminine body and it helped. The neighbor eventually came and we were all amazed by how much it shot up. We also rubbed our dicks on the face of this one guy who passed out. I think someone stuck their dick up his nose. A couple years later, 7 8th grade or so, my one friend would have regular sleepovers at his place. His parents were foreign and not entirely up with American culture, so we were able to get his dad to always rent us our rated born. Commence circle jerk, although we usually used pillows or some other form of cover. We had some modesty. Our one friend would always take this one spot on the carpet. Years later, we noticed that the whole area was very obviously stained with semen. He also eventually got banned from the house for mooning our friend's younger sister. Our friend's dad sitting us around a table and explaining, in broken English, why that was inappropriate, was one of the most awkward things I've ever experienced. Another time, we got a video camera and made a movie that involved far too much dry humping and spanking than most should be comfortable with. Around the same time period, I had a sleepover at my house. For who knows what faking reason, we all ended up in the basement, decided to tie our one friend up with tape, and started jamming sheet in his asshole. I kid you not. We eventually went upstairs and kind of left him down there with a soda bottle still stuck in there. Fuck, there's so much more too. All this sheet is making me cringe. Hard. I always assumed that this was kind of the norm for adolescent boys, but reading these other comments kind of tells me my friends and I were a little bit more facty. It was my friend's birthday and he decided to have me and two other guys over to stay the night. We were all about 11 at the time. Everything is going great and everyone is having fun until it was time for bed. My friend didn't really have room for us to all sleep in his room, so we had to make camp in his living room. Okay. Everybody is situated and ready to sleep, except for Greg, we'll call him that, because that's his faking name. You see, Greg got shafted and didn't get a pillow. Let me give you a little background on Greg. He's not a wise fellow. He spelled circle like circle, if that tells you anything. Alright. Now, Greg just wasn't gonna be denied a pillow tonight. Next thing you know I see Greg in a tussle with John, the host who reminds me way too much of Cartman, over a pillow. Somehow, over the course of the tussle, Greg blood is John's nose and got the pillow. Greg had won this battle, but the war was far from over. John was absolutely pissed. Me and my other friend, Jerry, were just laying on the floor watching this mess unfold. Hoping it was over, we proceeded to try and get some sleep. Nope. Another confrontation was to be had. A fight night, round two so to speak. All of a sudden John gets up, turns on the light, and just sits on the couch and stares at Greg for 20 minutes. I'm genuinely creeped the fuck out and just wanting to sleep. And so it begins. John's retaliation. He gets up, walks over to Greg who was laying next to me and Jerry, and kicks him in the side. What comes next will forever haunt my dreams. Now, John lives right in the middle of Redneck Village. 
So what's the plausible idea of retaliation in his mind? WWF wrestling moves. Important note about John. He was roughly 270 pounds at this point in life, about twice the size of me then. Anyways, John climbs onto a recliner right next to where we were all laying and jumps. He attempts what appears to be a diving elbow drop on Greg. Well, Greg may be dumb, but he's not that dumb, so he rolls just out of the way. Who's left to take the brute force of this move? Me and Jerry. P.O.W. He crushes both of us. I got the wind knocked out of me, and Jerry had an end table come down on him from the impact. It hurt like hell, but it was over. Even though John completely missed Greg, he had apparently decided he had proved a point. Of course, this earth-shattering event woke up his mom, and she put a stop to it, which helped. John ended up with the pillow and the rest is pretty much history. TLDR my large friend has a sleepover and gets his pillow stolen. Decides to do a wrestling move off of a recliner and crushes two innocent victims, one of them being me. Mom breaks it up, and my friend gets his pillow. Mine was an impromptu sleepover. I was not invited, but was thankfully welcomed. Freshman year of college, my roommate and one of my best friends wanted to make a road trip to Truman State to see a girl, and then the next night drive to Columbia to visit our other friends at Mizell. So we get to Kirksville and start partying, hard. We went to the Sigep house, my fraternity at my school, to meet some of them and see how their chapter runs. This house immediately turns into a raging party, chicks everywhere, beer, liquor, kegs, we couldn't have them at our parties at our school. Well I get obliterated, and we end up leaving. Go back to the girl we are visiting's room and I go to sleep in her sweet mate's room as they are out of town, so my buddy could try to put the moves on this chick. Well her suitamates had bunk beds, and turned them into mini lofts, so in my drunken idiocy I pushed them together, so I could have one giant bed. Needless to say, that was the end of my engineering career as I managed to fall between them, they slid apart, and land hard from about 8 feet up onto tile floor. Unfazed I decided I needed to piss. Stumble out of the room to the community bathroom do my thing and head back to my room, or so I thought. I ended up going into the wrong room, couldn't figure out where I was, and decided the floor was as good a place as any to sleep. I woke up a few hours later to a black family staring at me wondering what the fuck this white boy is doing on their daughter's floor. Apparently it was parents weekend and this girl's parents stayed in her dorm room with her. After much apologizing and almost cheating myself in a panic, the girl's mother spoke up and said verbatim white boy, you're drunk and has walked in here, turned on the goddamn TV, took off your pants and just laid on the floor. If it hadn't have been so goddamned funny I would have had your as arrested, but I gave you a blanket and a pillow instead after a good laugh and panic attack, she told me that I seemed harmless and lost, that I spoke a lot of gibberish, but she figured out who I was and where I was supposed to be staying and walked me down to the correct room. That is my most faked up sleepover story. I always write a damned wall of text. Sorry. I had a few awkward moments with a friend's mom during my ages of about 10 to 14. She was a single mother to a good friend of mine. Because of this she would often go out on Friday nights. She would leave us a $20 to order pizza and head out at night around 7.30-8 point. The rule was we could stay over as long as we were in bed asleep by 2 a.m. Bar time. On one lucky but awkward night I was woken by my friend getting up to use the bathroom. Once I was awake I realized that I too had to use the bathroom. Knowing that my friend had gone to use the downstairs bathroom, I went about my normal ritual of heading upstairs to use the other bathroom. In order to get to this bathroom involved walking past his mother's room. As I quietly walked to the bathroom I noticed that her door was open. Being the curious kid I was I took a glance in. That's when I saw her. There she was riding the sheet out to some guy. I could see that his arm was tied to the headboard. This confused me, but I needed to see more. I had always found her pretty but this may have been the first time I was actually attracted to her. I must have just stood in that doorway for at least 5 minutes. On the other side of her was a window and there was just enough light to silhouette her curves. Another year or two, and I rolled a busted a nut on the spot. Anyways as I'm standing there in amazement, she turns and looks right at me. I'm positive to this day she saw me, but it didn't stop her. 
she just kept riding away. It did jolt me enough to make me do a 90 degree turn and continue on to the bathroom. Honestly I was more scared of the unknown male being upset than her. The next morning he was gone and we were up earlier than her as usual. When she finally came down she just said hi to me and went on about her business. I just said hi back. I'm not sure if she was drunk and didn't remember, was embarrassed or just didn't care. I never told my friend this story and it would be the first of many awkward situations between me and her. I just remembered, I've been trying to think of a terrible sleep over all day, and this one really scares me. Okay so me and a friend decide to have a sleepover, so anyways I'm in grade 6, and I'm really really sheltered. I come over around 4 and just hang out for an hour. Around 5 she decides to invite her friend. By friend I mean really fake girl who gets bullied, because she's really mean. So she comes over, and we all hang out and finally she goes where are we going to sleep my friend and I look at each other, and assure her she's not sleeping over. She tells us she already called her mom and her mom is bringing stuff. We finally say okay, and have her over. First part is us just eating macaroni and chatting. Later as we are changing pajamas she asks us if we want to experiment. I looked at her and said hell to the no she gets upset, but it doesn't really affect her. Later we're goofing around and she slaps me and invites the host's brother to play. Anyway she got a little too rough and I find myself at 60 pounds being thrown around and finally I put the line down as she drags me to the bedroom causing carpet burn all down my back. I become distressed and shout to my host friend to get her the fuck off of me. Her mom comes down yells at the girl and takes her son. A little while after she asks both of us if we've ever tried witchcraft and she then forces us to do it like it's no biggie. Again I look at her and call her crazy. She then goes into a really angry state and cries into a pillow on the couch. Me and my real friend began pillow fighting when I accidentally hit her. She screamed and I backed away, and my friend who was the host became really stressed, because now it seemed the girl would not cooperate, unless she kicked me out. She ran upstairs, and told her mom, and ended up separating her child and me from the girl. Me and my friend slept upstairs, while she got the basement, it was 12 when it finally quieted down. Next morning was no problem, because the girl acted, as if it didn't happen. Needless to say I was thankful, because I had a baseball game early, and I left around 8. Got another one, for anyone who has ever played the game Dork Knob. So, whenever someone fatchts, you're supposed to slug them in the shoulder as hard as you can, until they touch a Dork Knob. We had the bathroom door across the room. Well, my friends and I are trading blows all night, getting up randomly, and sprinting for the door. Finally, the one who has been dealing the most hits, we'll call him Joe, I hear him let one rip. Before he can get up, I'm bearing down on him and put all of the force I can into one punch, but Joe sort of veers to the side at the last moment and I catch him directly in between his shoulders. Joe sort of bends over for a moment and look at the floor. All of us realize something's wrong and I ask, dude, you okay? I didn't mean to hit you there, too which Joe sprints to the bathroom and immediately vomits, like, five slices of pizza and a two liter worth of Pepsi into the toilet in the bathroom. He tells me between gags that I socked him so hard it suddenly made his stomach lurch. I felt awful a sheet. He walks out a bit later, belches, and goes, I'm hungry. We all laughed about it for the rest of the night, but for the ten minutes he was in there, I felt faking awful. All of us had just been kinda awkwardly standing around in the basement while he was puking. We agreed not to play door knob anymore. I had this friend, let's call him Rainman. In the third grade he stayed at my house for the first time. I noticed that he brought diapers, and being the asshole I am, I ridiculed him about it so much my dad had to pull him over to the side and tell him it wasn't a big deal. So I understood that he couldn't control bedwetting. So diapers were a great idea in my eyes. Fast forward to 5th faking grade. We slept head to toe in my bed, and I woke up to my comforter being not soaked, but saturated in piss. This wasn't no water pee, or whatever. It smelled like faking riper's piss, that almost has a hint of maple syrup to it, thus why I'm not a fan of it these days. I jumped out of the bed, and I said Rainman. What the fuck dude you just pissed my bed. 
What does this Mathurfica say? Dude, it's just drool. That is when I lost it. I instantly ran downstairs to my mom. Mom, Raymond pissed my bed. She didn't seem too concerned until she set foot into my room. What the hell? He said it again it's just drool. Nobody faking drools that much. Then he knew he was caught. But being Raymond he had to said it. I had a wet dream. I believe his squeaky voice ended that argument quickly. Besides I would pay to see a load that size. It's inhuman. Needless to say he never stayed the night again. And I found new friends. Also, he is a dropout that looks no different than any of his yearbook pictures. He gets beat up a lot because he is a white trash hillbilly gangster I guess. Lol okay bye. Oh, another one. About 16 years old, stoned as hell in my friend's house. We had a smoke, didn't really know the guy whose house it was all that well, but we were a group of mates and just ended up crashing there. Morning comes, Jamaican hangover and I'm not thinking straight, had another joint and it hit me hard. I would just like to clarify how stoned I actually was at this point. Go to take a sheet in his toilet, either that, or cycle uphill for half an hour with that thing lurking inside of me. Big poo equals toilet clogged, panic mode. Stoned brain thinks the best idea is to pick it up and take it outside. Cue me walking into the kitchen, asking where the bin liners are, everyone's confused grab one, dash back to the toilet thinking, how narrowly I escaped this awkward situation of having a clogged toilet. My stoned brain kicks back in, after I've scooped this jerky monster out of the bowl, you know how people pick up dog sheet, like that. Walk back through the kitchen, open the back door and toss it over the fence into a field. I was baked as hell, I escaped no awkward situation. Because I realized everyone witnessed everything and got ripped about it for weeks. And finally that field turned out to be the grassy area of a church. Sorry god. I'd spent the night at my friend's house a couple times. And his dad always made us go to bed really early. Like 10pm latest. We were around 12 or 13. So we stayed up later just chit chatting. I started complaining about how his dad was being dumb by treating us like little kids. A few minutes after we'd shared our complaints, we hear the sound of footsteps descending. First the second floor stairs, then the basement. We did the usual of hushing up and pretending to sleep, but his dad came down anyways and said you shouldn't talk poorly about adults like that. After he returned upstairs we sat up and were both flipping sheet. How the fuck could he hear us through two floors of housing? We continued talking until he returned again some time later telling us to shut up and go to sleep. It was honestly really terrifying. We had no clue as to how he kept hearing us. After he came down the second time we just called it a night, but our speculations continued for days afterward. Turns out he'd used some sort of walkie-talkie device to listen in. While it felt nice to know he didn't have superhuman hearing, it still creeped the fesses out of me, and I never spent the night there again. When I was in the third grade I was invited to the weird girl's house for a birthday sleepover. I was not a mean girl, I was not so overly popular that going would have affected me socially. This girl and her siblings were just a bit off in an unexplainable way. Either way, my mom said, wouldn't you feel bad if everyone didn't come to your party cause you were weird. So I packed my overpass and was dropped off. Here is what I encountered. The house smelled of poop, reason as I found out, when I went to the bathroom, they did not flush. Instead the poop was left to pile up, until it was scooped out, and used in their garden for fertilizer. Question mark question mark. What? Their giant Saint Bernard dog had some sort of skin disease, and was hairless down one side, and covered in blue goo. Not awful except, that he insisted on rubbing up on me transferring the medicated blue goo all over my and my clothes. The food served was all unidentifiable meat which was caught in the yard by the older brothers and part of mine still had fur on it. So, hungry, covered in blue dog skin medication and sick from holding my pee, not wanting to use the poop piled toilet, I climbed into my sleeping bag on the living room floor with the other girls and tried to sleep. Still awake and sobbing a couple hours later the girl's father came into the living room to watch TV. I peeled my head out, if the covers to find, that he was watching a movie with all naked people, which as I got older learned was born. He was watching born, while 5 third grade girls slept on the floor between him and the TV. 
I didn't understand the severity of what he was doing at the time, but I understood that he should not be doing it. I got up immediately, asked to call my mom and she picked me up 30 minutes later. I explained the weird things to my mom, and from that point on she never made me go to a sleepover if I didn't want to, and came in to meet all of the parents at any house I was being dropped at. When I was staying over at a friend's house, we were changing in adjacent rooms, as we had just gotten out of the pool. I hear him say, hey, Oliver, followed by something unintelligible. I was fairly clothed, and, assuming he was too, open the door. What I see is him, completely naked, helicoptering his dick around. And, no, this wasn't a prank. So, my friend, Jens was staying over. We were, and are, bosom buddies, so we are both pretty close, and open, about things. He tends to talk, and move a lot, in his sleep, which will become important later. So, he was sleeping on my couch, and I was sleeping on my living room floor, which I didn't mind all that much. I was having trouble sleeping, so I thought, well, both my parents are asleep, and I'm on my own turf here, so why not have a wonk? I start, and it's going well, until, as I'm about to finish, I feel a hand petting my head, and someone mumbling something, and silently freak out. I then realize it's Jens, and I finish. Next morning, I mention to him, that he pet my head in his sleep, without going into the details, which he said he remembered doing, to a cat, in his dream. A few days later, at school, I mentioned to him, I was about to climax, when he pet me, and he seemed very understanding point so, I was invited, when I was quite young, to my friend's house. His friend was also staying over, who has since moved. He was really creepy, to say the least. So, I was trying to get some sleep, as he loudly fantasized about having a girl he liked in his bed with him, as my friend's brother searched up born on his computer. The next morning, he tried searching up Bourne, when his mom was literally in the other room, with no doors or headphones, or anything. I, being quite young, was pretty creeped out by all this. I've got a few stories, so settle in for the long haul. I was in high school during the days when Sparkslove was first starting to get big, and Halo 2 was the game of choice. Many a LAN party were had with dozens of people over at a single time. Lucky enough, I had a fairly large house, so this wasn't a problem. It was usually pretty great fun times had by all, but, there were the dark times. One night, it was about 4am, and all of us had finally decided that we wanted some sleep. As we settled it, we heard noises coming from the room next to mine. In order to fit everyone in my room, I had moved my bed against one of my doors, blocking it off. The handle was rattling and banging against my bedpost. We all woke up and were like, what the fuck, with the exception of Chris, who stirred, looked my right in the eyes, and said tied, and then fell right back asleep. Immediately after, my door erupted in faking motion, slamming against the headboard so bad it cracked. Everyone, but Chris, who slept through the whole thing, pushed everything we could in front of the bed, until it finally stopped. We sealed off the other door, and in the morning, when we went to see what the fuck happened, we saw that one of the pool cues for my pool table was smashed into faking splinters. To this day, no one knows what happened. Other than that, there was the time I ferociously punched my friend in the face several times, while he was sleeping, only for him to casually wake up and eat some Doritos. Or, the time another had his finger broken for waking John up with a rare soft round to the face. Even more hilarious was the time I waited for my friend to come up my stairway, and I then proceeded to lob objects at him, including a plastic barrel, while declaring, in my own words, that it was Donkey Kong, Beach. I've got a ton more, lol. Weird ones. Maybe not a true sleepover, but I think it counts. My parents and I plus my buddy, let's call him Steve, and his parents took a vacation together in the late 90s, my friend and I were around 10 years old. We had a two-bedroom suite, so my parents were in one room, his parents were in one room, and Steve and I were on rollaway beds. One of the mornings we were awoken to someone knocking on our door around 6am. My dad opens the door to a random couple returning Steve to our room. 
apparently Steve had slept, walked to this couple's room and they coincidentally slash accidentally hadn't shut slash locked their door, so sleeping Steve just walked in and crashed on their floor. We have no idea how long he was in there, but it was definitely a decent amount of time as the other couple had no idea he was in there until they woke up and noticed him on the floor. I actually woke up in the middle of the night and noticed he was gone, but I just assumed he was in the bathroom and fell right back asleep. Okay I know I'm kinda late to the party, but this was too good to pass up. When I was in grade 5 sixths me and the guys did some real stupid sheet that we now think back on and just ask why. One of these things we used to do at sleepovers was chibagging. Essentially a reference to Halo. You would pull your pants down and them rub your balls on someone who is sleeping's face. Yeah. It was faking weird. Although to be honest, I never actually did this to any of my friends, at least from what I can remember, but unfortunately this came at the price of being th's multiple times when I was trying to sleep. No one was safe, but this wasn't the only fun activity. Among others, they would pull their pants down and up there, but hold and sit on someone's face while they were sleeping. I think the worst of it was one of my mates at a school camp, let's call him Mac who decided to this to a kid in our cabin and he actually fatched it on his face. Needless to say, the morning after the kid bits of tiny sheet pasted to his face. Fuck, this whole ordeal makes me cringe just thinking about it. My childhood was faking weird. TLDR mates of mine would rub their balls on each other when they are sleeping, calling it teabagging. They would also open up their but holes and sit on each other's faces while they were sleeping. Okay, here's an adult guy camping story. No pissing or fapping or sexy stuff, but there was drinking. Lots of drinking. We are talking Olympic levels here. Not just by us, but by everyone in the campground. So my friends and I go camping one weekend. The plan is to go tubing on the river, but the river level is too low, so we spend the entire time drinking in the river scoping out the ladies. It really was the only thing to do. Also this was around spring break, so there were a lot of topless college girls. Fun. But I digress. Okay, so the entire place is full of drunks, mostly college kids drinking Keystone. My friends S, P, J and I are drinking scotch. Everyone is standing around in the river drinking. All day. The river is about 50% urine at this point. Around 11pm I decide to turn in. S is sharing my tent with me, J is sharing a tent with P. I get woken up in the middle of the night by someone stepping on my arm. Through the tent. Some drunky has decided to find his way back to his campsite, in the dark, stone drunk, with no flashlight. Because that always turns out well. So drunk he steps on me, then I see him through the mesh top of the tent stumbling around. He trips over a tent stake back into the tent and ends up kicking S in the head. He stumbles back into the picnic table and I see all our stuff on it go flying. Now, I'm drunk, I'm in pain, and I'm pissed off. This idiot has woken me up and is wreaking havoc in my campsite. He's just given us a concussion. He stepped on me. God knows what he'll do next. He must be stopped. So I did what any rational, forward-thinking individual in my position would do. I pulled a gun on him. Now this is the part of the story where people gasp and some will get pissed off at me, but this happened 10 years ago, so get over it. I point the gun at Drunky and tell him he needs to leave now. Drunky sees the gun and understandably freaks out and runs for his life. Not really runs, but more of a series of flops like a dying fish on a riverbed. This extremely slow hasty retreat takes about 30 seconds for him to move about 10 feet. Then Drunky realizes something he hadn't before. Our campsite is on a hill. And he's just reached the edge. Drunky, meet gravity. The next sounds I hear are bumpity 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 clang. And ouch. What exactly happened? Don't know. Don't care. Drunky is gone. I'm going back to sleep. The next morning my friends and I get up to survey the damage done by Hurricane Drunky. Half of the stuff on our table was on the ground. My tent was half down and there was a sneaker smoldering in the fire. But the coup de grace was a head sized dent in the back of my truck. Also he left his hat. Apparently drunk he goes to a and M. But there was no sight of him, never found out what happened to him, and there were no police called or any charges pressed for drawing on a lush. My friends and I still laugh about it to this day. And I still have drunk his hat. 
There was four of us all camping next to a stream on a friend's, George, farm. Oh there was also his younger sister, Alicia, 15, 16. Anyway, we all have a few drinks, not too many. We are camping, so we all go to bed pretty early. I'm staying in my tent with my friend, Michael. We are trying to go to sleep, but we can hear everything going on in the tent next to us. Alicia had gone to sleep with Justin. Justin was a real ladies man. A total man slouched. He was also my friend, and he once bragged to me that he had faked 7 girls in one week, one for each night of the week, and he wasn't lying. To him this was just another conquest. Anyway, like I said, Michael and I can hear everything. Alicia is pretty drunk, and is half crying half saying I don't want to eat EC. Justin just kept saying it's alright, it doesn't hurt etc. So he was basically rapping her, that's what it sounded like anyway. Meanwhile George is outside still at the fire, pacing around, half talking to himself, growling over what was happening. At one point he yelled out to Justin that's my little sister man, Justin just said, don't worry man we are not doing anything. I remember at one point George smashed something in his helpless rage. Anyway, so this is pretty hot, he isn't really rapping her, it's just kinda like taking her virginity, me being a 17 year old guy of course I get a boner. It's been a week or so, and Alicia is pretty hot. But before I can do anything I can already hear the guy sleeping right next to me jacking off faking gross I think. But I go ahead and take my unders off, so I have something to come into, to avoid a sticky situation. It was a well stealthy wank, super awesome, I just had to try and forget Michael was laying right next to me. Listening to Alicia lose her virginity to a man slutched was pretty hot. The day after next Justin came up to me with his usual brag. He claimed he didn't do anything with her that first night in the tent, but that the next night she had asked him to meet in the loft of a shed. He said he faked her like three times. They sort of casually dated for a little while after that. Justin and George remain good friends to this day. So yeah, does that count? Some of the weirder stories here reminded me of one of mine. I was about 16 years old, and at this point I was practically living at my friend's house. He lived just a few blocks from the school, whereas I lived an hour and a half to two hour bus ride away, so it was more convenient just to chill there most nights. My dad was cool with it, and his parents were cool with it, I didn't even know his mom's name, she was just mom to everybody. Anyways. After this had been going on for half the year, one weekend our mutual friend Kyle came over and stayed with us. Kyle was openly bisexual, or claimed to be, there was a time where is, was considered cool in some social circles to be be. He has a kid now, so I dunno. I liked Kyle, he had a car, and was fun to hang out with, but she changed that night and I never spoke to him again. We were hanging out in my friend's room, we were crashing on the floor, and being teenage boys we were just sleeping in our underwear. While Kyle starts wrestling with me, and tickling me, hella weird, but at the time I was so tired, had really bad insomnia as a teen, and had been awake for a few days at this point, so I just went with it. I only started to get concerned, when I suddenly realized, that Kyle was now shoving his hand into my boxes trying to grab my dick. I dunno what happened exactly, I think my junk sucked up inside my body, so that there was just a gaping hole where my manhood should be, but even with his hands down my pants he was not able to touch my dick, as I was moving away from him and trying to shove him off me. My friend on the bed is just laughing his ass off at this, and I kinda am too, as I'm starting to feel uncomfortable, but my tired as brain is failing to realize what is happening. It is only after Kyle says, where is it? That I snapped the fuck out of it, threw him the fuck off me, grabbed my blanket, and stormed out to the living room, and slept on the couch. I never spoke to Kyle again, but I did confront my friend about it, who tried to brush it off as a joke. I stopped staying at his house after that. This won't ever get seen, but it is a disturbing scene from childhood, that I sometimes reflect on. I was sleeping over my best friend's house, and we were 11 ish. Her family was very poor, and she was the second oldest of 5 or 6 kids, all from different dads. Her mom was physically abusive, neglecting, but also had an odd way of being able to spoil them with treats and trips to Six Flags, a place that my family would never go. 
I recognize now that her mom was probably bipolar, given her extreme swings, that or on drugs, she was always in the basement with some guy and the door locked. Anyway, my friend and I were hanging in her room, doing whatever 11 year old girls do, and something sets her mom off. Her mom is screaming and chasing my friend with a belt. I sat frozen, conditioned by my own family's similar problems, to not move in a situation like this. The attack finally made its way to right in front of me. Her mom lunged, my friend slept away, and her mom just starts smashing the first thing she sees, my friend's computer. I'm just staring at this grown woman in front of me, strangling and shaking a computer monitor. Then she just breaks down. She breaks down and starts confessing to me how hard it is and how much she tries. She pours her so loud to 11 year old me, pleading for understanding, as if I'm the judge that will decide if she is living a good life. I try to simultaneously comfort and not further antagonize this erratic animal that sits in a crying mess in front of me, feeling a strange mix of hatred and the obligation to absolve her of this burden. I know I'm late to the thread, but I really want to get this off my chest. I was sleeping over at a cousin's house when I was 12. I hadn't slept over there in a while and really wanted to go. My mom asked me if I was sick or anything prior, so no incidents were to occur at night. I denied being sick in any way shape or form, but the through was I had explosive diarrhea. So at night, I wake up from a rumbling sound from my stomach. I'm under the blanket, and my cousins usually keep their room freezing cold at night. I try to hold it in, but it won't stay. After 5 minutes of debating to myself about it, I say fuck it, and jump out of bed sprinting to the toilet. That glimmer of hope that passed through me once I got to the toilet was soon gone, after I pulled down my pants and vomited a brown and green paste from miles all over the bathroom floor and rug. I was in shock and stayed in there for a good 30 minutes deciding what to do point I took off all my clothes, washed them and hid them in a hole behind the sink, had a quick shower and put on some of my cousin's dirty laundry. However, there still was a pile of sheet all over the floor. Luckily for me, they had gotten a cat the other day and some of my sheet landed in his litter box 12 year old me decided to spill the entire litter box, creating a larger mess and run back into the room. So I basically blamed it on the cat. I lay in bed with a huge concoction of piss, sheet, and litter all over the floor of the bathroom 10 feet away from me. I closed my eyes and cried myself to sleep. The next morning I woke up in a pool of my own piss. TLDR. Blamed it on the cat. Still pissed the bed. Imagine this won't be seen, but here goes anyway. It was some holiday when I was about 6 and my cousins who were Jewish, were staying over at my house. They get dropped off, and while my sister, my cousins, and I go to play, my uncle stays in the kitchen just shooting the sheet with my mom. My sister, who is a few years older than me, was just beginning to learn about Nazis. So she decides to play a nice little game called Nazis and Jews. Me, being six, had absolutely no idea the sort of horror about to unfold, duly accepted my role as a Nazi guard. My sister put my two, Jewish, cousins into a closet and called it a concentration camp, of which I was supposed to guard. Needless to say, five minutes of that any my two cousins are sobbing and screaming. My uncle runs upstairs and finds me blocking the door to a closet where his two daughters are trapped. He asks me what the hell is going on and without missing a beat my six year old mouth goes we are playing Nazis and Jews. Of course since I was a boy it was assumed that I perpetrated the whole situation and being sick I don't think I had the wherewithal to really explain my way out of the situation. Nobody in my family has mentioned anything about it since but I have a sneaking suspicion that my aunt slash uncle think I'm a massive anti-semite tldr. I have a sneaking suspicion my uncle thinks I'm anti-semitic. I have two point, when I was really young there were these two brothers that lived across the street and I went over there a lot and played Halo with them. One night me and one of their other friends spent the night and we all slept in one room with only one bunk bed the brother slept on bottom and I slept with this guy I didn't know on top. I was watching TV from the bed and I noticed the sheets moving, so I look over and this mother faker is rubbing his dick. Not fapping, but he had a grip on it, and he was rubbing his other hand on the top of it. I don't remember if I knew what jacking off was at the time, 
I asked what the hell he was doing, and he explained that it felt so good, and he encouraged me to try it. Thinking back, that was pretty faking gay point in second grade I had a best friend named Nick. He had an older brother and his stepdad was mean and fought with his mom a lot. I was spending the night over there and I was really hungry in the middle of the night. His older brother, Alex, was only a year or two older and he was pretty cool, so we went to the kitchen for some midnight munchin. Apparently his dad left food out covered up on the cabinet, but we didn't see it. Alex starts warming up some ravioli when the asshole stepdad comes in with one of those so angry you look constipated faces. We all stood there in silence for a second and Alex looked scared sheetless. Suddenly he starts yelling at Alex for warming up food when he already made some and Alex's eyes got really big, then this guy punches Alex in the faking face. Alex starts crying and his stepdad shakes his head and goes back to his room. Me and Alex stood there for like 10 minutes too scared to move. Didn't speak another word all night. Way back in the 6th grade, I had a some friends over for my birthday party slash sleepover. Bedtime eventually rolled around, and we all got into our sleeping bags. Friends started doing silly pranks. Hand in hot water, etc. Things continued getting more rowdy, until we got to the teabagging stage of the night. The one poor bastard who had been asleep the whole time was quasi gang wrapped by all of our little testicles. The last guy to Arabian, goggle the fellow put his balls completely in his mouth. Dude woke up crying and demanding to go home. Everyone had to beg for the kid to stay and not tell his parents. On another occasion, we were all over at a friend's that had a hot tub and we were all in there for a couple hours. The friend's house who it was eventually showed the other three of us that the jets served as a great place to stick your dick in. There were conveniently four jets waiting to be serviced. Fast forward a couple of minutes and you have four testosterone fueled teenagers all against each side of the hot tub with our dicks in a jet. A couple more minutes later, and we were back to chatting and doing normal hot tub things. At one point the motion sensor light came on and there was a murky white layer of shame on the top of the water that we were all relaxing in. We got out and didn't really talk about it again. Well I have two stories. One of them was about how I got it on with this chick at my first ever party where we drank way too much in a room filled with people. They were all sleeping except for one lost soul who quietly informed us that she had heard everything when we were finished. The second story revolves around my birthday about 6 months after that party. I had gotten a handle of vodka from my cousin and was bummed that I didn't have much of a party so I invited some friends to come over and drink. There were 4 of us total. One of us didn't drink and that left me, my buddy, and oddly enough the same chick who had to endure the proceedings from the first story. Welp we started drinking and soon enough the handle which started nearly full was gone. I don't much remember anything after that. However I was privy to the events that happened because we did have a sober friend there. Apparently we drank all the booze, then me and my one buddy got shirtless because fat shirts. Then I passed out almost immediately in my bedroom where we were drinking. Then the girl who had come over broke down for some reason and was crying profusely. I think she was just way too drunk for her own good. We three were and she called her parents who came over and picked her up. My other drunk friend who was shirtless thought he would act professionally and greet her parents at 4am whilst my parents were still asleep. Worst part being I knew her parents really well. Her parents pick my up right about the same time I start projectile vomiting around my room all exorcist style. Fun night. Best part though was when my dad cleaned it up and I told him I was sorry. Then he said it was okay and that I couldn't have known she was such a lightweight. I went to my friend's house for a sleepover when I was in year 2, so I was about 7 or 8. Me, my friend, his older sister were playing video games in the living room while his mum was making dinner. His dad comes home, from what I assume, is the the pub, and the mood changes. I had been around my friend's dad before, and he was a pretty cool guy, but I had never seen him like this before. He made my friend and his sister scared. His dad walks into the kitchen and starts talking to my friend's mum. I can't hear anything, because they're in the other room, and I'm distracted by the game. Eventually, the parents' discussion starts to get louder, my friend and his sister look at each other and sigh, not again. 
The argument gets even louder as his mum starts yelling. The sister takes my friend and I by the arm and takes out to the front yard. They both start sobbing, and you can still hear the argument from outside the house as plates can be heard smashing and crashing. The door swings open and my friend's dad storms out followed by his mum. He yells something like get faked I'm going to the pub. And she yells yeah, and why don't you drop in to see before you get there. We go inside, and she rings my mum to take me home. My mum and here talk for a while and we leave. Turns out my friend's dad was cheating on his wife with one of her friends, and I was sleeping over the wrong night. They got divorced a few weeks later, and a few months later my friend moved away. TLDR. Friend's angry dad has argument with wife, while I'm sleeping over. I have a ton. I'll start with three. I woke up my friend was screaming something about bandit, my dog. Apparently he woke up, and my dog's tongue was in his mouth. So naturally he pushed bandit away to which bandit freaked out and crapped, diarrhea kind, all over a ton of monopoly money, left out from the game we still had to finish. It was an intense morning. It was a code sleepover at the age of 13 and the parents had strict rules about rooms. Basement and second story separation. They slept on a sofa blocking the stairs coming down from the second story. So you would think nothing would happen, right? Wrong. Turns out, on the guy side, I woke up to some weird noises, to two guys giving each other hand jobs. No one else woke up. I decided to ignore it. My girlfriend, if you could call her that, because it wasn't much more than googly eyes, caught two girls in the same bed furiously going at it apparently, fingering which led to oral slash both. So the parents plans were foiled. Which I thought, was ironically awesome at the time. One guy apparently had night terrors and no one knew. So five of us, typical high school guys laying video games to late, wake up to the sixth freaking out hardcore. If you're not familiar with night terrors, they're not like nightmares at all. There's no waking up in the middle screaming. It's just screaming. Finally two of the guys wrestle him back down onto his sofa and put a pillow over his face to muffle the screaming. Giving him two black eyes to which he freaks out about the next morning. It was an intense morning of a lot more screaming and arguing. He was never invited to group sleepovers anymore, though I invited him over to my house alone often, just to screw with my dad who couldn't be a jerk to my friends. I was mean to my father as a kid, but he was mean to me, so I think it worked out well. I have tons more, but my wife's calling me from the bedroom. If you want more, I can post more in the morning, just ask. But since she has to work each night the rest of this week, I'm not missing out on my last chance for 5 days. Night Reddit. This was in the 5th grade, so we were all about 11 years old. Me and a friend of mine were invited to a birthday sleepover party from one of the other boys in our class, which, personally, I was never invited to pretty much anything, so young me got really excited for that. We got there, and the evening started with the birthday boy playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater, while everyone else watched, because only he knew all the good tricks, and didn't want anyone else ruining his score. Then, after food, we all go outside, and find out we'll be sleeping in a tent in his backyard. It was about 30 deg point f outside that night. As the tent is being set up, he and his younger brother suggest that we all play humping tag, if you're it, then you tag others by pinning them against the ground and humping them. As a child this was the first time I'd had any attempt of something related to such involved in any social situation, which already made me uncomfortable. Then, just to make things worse, birthday boy's younger brother is it and proceeds to play with his pants off, which his brother is encouraging. My friend and I climbed a tree too tall for him to reach for us to escape. As there wasn't really any way we could think of to keep from playing, real brilliant 11 year old logic. Oh, I should mention that this kid's parents were outside with us the whole time and didn't say a word. The already awkward night was capped off with us in the tent finally trying to sleep, and birthday boy kept everyone in the tent awake with some of the most loud, dank, wet shots, half sheet, half fatched, I can remember. He tried to invite us over again and hang out at school, but I just avoided that kid completely after that night. This wasn't during the sleeping part, but I had a birthday party in 3rd or 4th grade and there were maybe 5 to 8 kids that were staying over there for the night. 
I can't remember how this started, but we were in the back of my field near our tool shed. My one friend then convinces us to lock him in there to see how long he could stay. I know it doesn't make much sense. Not two minutes later has bashing on the door screaming let me out let me out. Well like what you've been in there for 30 seconds what the fuck. Turns out he sheet himself. Purely bad planning. He had to walk from the back of my field to my house. One half mile. Where his mom came and got him. As he was walking the sheet started to fall out of his shorts onto his leg. While we were all watching. He came back in 30 minutes, and it was quite awkward for the rest of the party point here's another one, I was sleeping over at a friend's house for the first time, he would usually stay at my house, because his parents were really strict, and wouldn't let him have more than 2 hours of computer a week, of course that's all we did, so we're playing unreal tournament switching every life on his computer, when it crashed, turns out it was in a cabinet with no ventilation, and would overheat. I told him that this was pretty bad and would damage his computer. It's fine w slashy. Later when we go to get some snacks he talks to his dad about this. By talks I mean they literally screamed at each other like fuck you dad are you trying to death story the faking computer etc. Dad replying in the same manner. This went on for 15 to 20 minutes while I'm just sitting there. This was in middle school, and his family seemed nice, but that really caught me off guard. I wasn't sure if I started the whole thing or not, but it's just how they talk to each other. I don't give him computer advice anymore. This was at a stay overnight during a summer camp I went to back in elementary school. Every summer we would have a two night stay at a camp not far from the city, and the thing that we all looked forward to the most were pranks. The most memorable year was when a new kid joined us. We had a group of us that would return on a regular basis. He was a year older than everyone else and really liked to throw his weight around. Pranks to him were things like spitting in the salt and pepper shakers, peeing on the cabin floors, and wiping his butt with his hands, and then chasing us younger kids around with dump on his fingers. I don't think this kid quite got the picture. Anyways, the second night of camp rolled around, and we had all decided that we had had enough. Before bed, we were all forced into the communal showers, stripped down and left our clothes on a set of benches, and were given little to no time to dry off and get changed. We all jumped in the showers except for one of my buddies. He stayed behind with the clothes and presented a tub of tiger balm. Without anyone noticing, our counselor would stand outside so as not to get wet, or maybe it had something to do with legal issues. We didn't know back then. He rubbed some of the ointment and on the crotch of the bullies skivvies. He hid the jar away and quickly jumped into the shower after us. Not long after, our counselor yelled at us to finish up and get dressed. We all knew what was coming next as we discussed the plan beforehand. We raced to get changed before the big guy was able to get his knickers on, so we could bolt as soon as he reacted. When he stepped into his tighty witties, he didn't notice at first, but all of a sudden, he looked up with an angry face as his gaze darted around the room at all of us. He shouted, what the heck did you guys do to my UN? Picture someone accidentally walking in on their grandparents going at it, and in that moment the bed collapses. A mixture of disgust, and what do I do? What do I do? Crosses their face. That's the look that he had while he tried to vigorously pluck his briefs away from his dingleberries. He would rapidly gaze down at his privates, then to us, then back down again. Once he caught his breath, he screamed the loudest I've ever heard someone scream in the highest pitch possible. He would bend at the knee and bob up and down rapidly, as if it separated him from his jitch. Eventually, he whipped the things off and put his testis under cold water, relieving him of the burn. He left the camp that night and never showed up again. TLDR, we put Tiger Balm in a bully's underwear and never saw him again. I was sleeping over at my friend's house for the first time, and when we were about ready to go to sleep his mom brought us into the bedroom she pulls me aside for a moment and says that my friend has a bed wetting problem, so he has to wear diapers every night and ask me not to make fun of him or act like it's weird. I said I understood and didn't have a problem with it point, but instead of just giving him the diaper and having him put it on in the bathroom or something, she lays him down right on the floor takes off his pants, wipes him with baby wipes, and puts the diaper on him. And this wasn't some adult sized diaper make for people with incontinence, 
It was like an extra large pampers, made for toddlers at that point I was really creeped out, but I still tried not to judge or say anything to make my friend feel embarrassed. He thought it was normal though, and went into the bathroom to brush his teeth. Then his mom says to me that she told her son that every boy wears diapers to bed so he doesn't feel different and that I should put on a diaper Two point I tried to say that I didn't want or need to wear one but before I could convince her she had me lay down on the floor to be diapered. I remember covering myself once she stripped off my pants because I was so embarrassed and I saw my friend looking at me from the doorway as his mom lifted up my legs and secured the diaper on me point after his mom left and we were trying to go to sleep I had a hard time because of how uncomfortable I felt. Luckily my parents were picking me up in the morning and when I woke up I went to the bathroom, took off the diaper and threw it in the trash and left. Needless to say I never slept over at his house again. I stayed over at a sort of friend's house when I was in elementary school, probably around 4th grade. She was a very strange child with few friends because she had very poorly controlled ADHD. She was destructive and a bit learning disabled as well. I don't know why, but my mom insisted I spend time with her. One night she started humping a pillow, saying it was one of the boys at school that she liked. Then she showed me her vagina. She completely spread eagled and spread it open. I did not know what the fuck was going on, again, like 4th grade or so, but I remember that she had some kind of thing sticking out of the hole. It was like a triangular thing sticking out. When I got home, I snuck a peek in one of my mom's Dr. Ruth Setch books to try to find out what it was but never did. Looking back, I worry that she might have been molested or something because she talked about sexual stuff a lot 5th grade at a sleepover with my best friend. We were playing with Play-Doh and Clay and we decided to make Clay Benizes and Vaginas to put on our Barbie and Ken dolls. At some point later in the evening she ended up making a Play-Doh binus and putting it up in there. Another sleepover at her house, we stayed up late talking about the boys at school we liked. I don't know how it started, but we were talking about how many of them we would want. She'd say something like, I want 10 Johns, so they can all tell me how pretty I am. And I'd say, well, I want 50 Michaels, so they can all kiss me. I will never forget when she said I want 100 Johns and I want to shrink them and put them all in my underpants. Immediately after that, we heard giggling from the hallway. It turned out her older brother and his friend had been listening to us the whole time. That was awkward. When I was in maybe 0.5 th grade, I was invited to this kid's house with some other kids, maybe 6 or so. I was really good friends with one of them and knew the others decently since they had been at my school since grade 1. I was excited to be there since the kid just got Marvel V's Capcom on the Dreamcast and I loved playing Mega Man on that thing. The night went by normally for a while, playing games upstairs, eating pizza. One kid had to leave when he had an asthma attack, then things got weird. My buddy and I were upstairs playing MVC and the others were downstairs. Apparently they were daring each other to do stuff, as one to come upstairs and mooned us, which was whatever, we are gaming. But then, the others decided to join in, and all came upstairs to chase us around pantsless, ass backwards, giggling in the most horrible of ways. We ran downstairs, beat on the host's older brother's door, and hid under the table. The host kid's older brother came out and called them all gay, and they quit shortly after as one would expect my buddy and I were the only ones who have ever talked about that night, and I never saw any of those kids, except him outside of school hours to this day. Okay, so before I get into this a little bit of a backstory. My friend Paul hates bodily fluids slash anything remotely gross. If he catches a whiff of something he will have a catastrophic meltdown. So it was good ol' Paul's birthday, and he wanted to have a sleepover at his house. Me and my friends were like okay cool whatever, and we went over there. His folks ordered pizza and all of that fun and uneventful stuff, and eventually it was time to hit the hay. This is where it gets interesting. I woke up in the middle of the night, kind of like one of those I feel like something is wrong experiences. I was sleeping near the wall of his room and I just looked at the wall and sprayed chunks all down the side and onto his bed. This causes him to wake up and he just looks at the throw up and starts screaming. 
His mom rushes into the room and walks me to the bathroom, etc. And when we come back Paul is sitting in the corner crying his eyes out and rocking back and forth in the fetal position. Needless to say I called my mom after the sun rose and noped the fuck out of there. TLDR ate pizza and threw up all over my very germaphobic friend's room which he had a mental breakdown. This beach. I was forced to be friends with this beach that my uncle's friends adopted. My parents became really good friends with them after meeting them. She has some sort of learning disability or something. So her birth mom didn't want her. So these people adopted her. Anyway. I was forced to be friends with her. And not just be friends, but hang out with her like 3 plus times per week. So her parents decide to go out of town for the weekend for some church thing. My parents obviously offered to have her stay at our house. We were like 10. Keep in mind, this girl has some serious issues, including major separation anxiety. She also doesn't have the best sense of hygiene. Usually, when a friend would stay the night at my house, we put an extra mattress on the floor for them to sleep on. Pretty good accommodations, if you ask me, since I always just got a sleeping bag on the floor at other kids' houses. But this beach. She throws the biggest fit and forces my mom to let her sleep in my bed. So there I am, sleeping on the floor in my own house. I'm pissed. Then she turns on my radio super loud and says this is the only way I can sleep. Except she doesn't sleep. She just lays there crying loudly. So I ask my mom to call her parents because she's just being plain awful and no one can calm her down. But my mom is like, no, they're out of town. She can deal with it she'll stop crying. She doesn't stop crying. It's like 1 in the morning. I'm pissed off. Then she finally stops crying for a second. Then she gets up. She gets my mom. My mom comes in my room and starts taking all the blankets and sheets off my bed and eggs in my pajama drawer. So I ask her what she's doing. She tells me that this beach pissed in my bed. So I start screaming at her and tell her she needs to call her parents and tell them to come get her now. I was pissed off. Her parents drove like 4 hours that night to get her. No one slept that night. TLDR I was forced to be friends with this beach. Her parents go out of town. I'm forced to spend the entire weekend with her beach. Won't stop crying and screaming. Makes me sleep on my own goddamn floor. And pisses in my goddamn bed. We were 10. Friend of mine was a really deep sleeper. The kind of guy who you could slap in the face and he wouldn't wake up. We used to think he had a medical issue. But I just think he was always really tired. Anyway, we had been friends for a long time. But he had never slept at my house. I invite him, he says yes, and we end up sleeping in the living room downstairs. Sometime in the middle of the night I woke up to piss and walked past the kitchen. I noticed the moonlight seemed to be reflecting off the linoleum quite impressively. Wait, a little too impressively. Our linoleum was pretty sheety and not reflective at all. I step into the kitchen and gingerly step into the reflective area. It's wet 12 year old me does the first thing that comes into my head. I put my head down near it and smell it. Nothing. It's not yellow but then again, our floor is a little yellowish. Next test, my head is still down there, so I faking tasted it, naturally. But it's faking pee. Now all the lights are on and my friend is sleeping like 10 feet away. My mom came downstairs and asks me what's going on. I do not tell her I taste tested the floor piss, but we determine that it must be from my friend because a cam's razor. Anyway, my mom and I mop up the floor talking about how gross it is that he peed on the floor while he was sleeping right there. I don't know if he heard us, but we never talked about it again, and he never slept over. Also, I'm more careful about tasting things. I remember one time me and our group of school friends had a sleepover at one guy's house. No parents. We were all 15 to 16 ish. We were all generally tame people, an assortment of gamer buddies and other outsiders in class. For most of us this was the first time being in such an adult situation. What with there being beer and pizza and staying up all night mostly playing video games one of my friends, a great but somewhat sheltered guy, had been dating the only lady in the group for a while previously. She was his first love. After a couple of months of awkward cuddles and kisses in the cafeteria, she broke up with him. A week later, she had a new boyfriend. It was the guy's best friend. 
the two had known each other most of their lives. All three were part of our rather close group of friends. He was torn up about it, and at that point, was already on bad terms with both his ex-girlfriend and his former childhood buddy point feeling out of place and miserable, the guy decides to go to bed early. A couple of us are playing video games upstairs, while downstairs the others are watching a movie. Bored with the game, we come up with the brilliant plan to put shaving cream on the guy's hand in the hopes he'd touch his face or something. It works. The guy wakes up covered in cream and flips out. Storms out of the bedroom, punches the first guy who started laughing, and almost falls down the stairs on his way down. I mean this guy's mad. So he ends up downstairs where the couple is snuggling on the couch, and this only fuels the guy's rage. He's now directing his anger towards her, saying she broke his heart and stole his best friend. She's not taking it kindly, and they end up arguing hard. Argument ends when he slaps her in the face. As it was 4 in the morning he couldn't leave, he lived 20 miles away, and his mom had brought him there. So the guy ends up back to bed, and the couple goes off to sleep in a different room. He was pretty much shunned from the group after this, I quickly became his best and only friend. Looking back to it, that night really faked up his later teen years, and I still feel bad about that point the party didn't end there though. We ended up prank calling someone's parents waking them up with thatched noises through the phone. It was pretty hilarious. I have two different stories, let's start with the first one. In 5th grade, I knew this girl which was generally pretty damn weird, but so was I anyways. On the same night I was sleeping over, their turtle ran away, I had to do their dishes and help with laundry and my friend had been grounded, so I was literally not allowed to speak or interact with her in any kind. On a sleepover. You should have seen my face when my mom came to pick me up in the morning. I was so grateful. Second story, in 6th grade I really made myself look super weird. I was at another friend's house for the first time, not the same one as before, and at the time, we were alone. She says she had to go to her Aikido training, so I wait for her at her house. After 30 minutes or so, I hear the door open. My first reaction? Hide. Little did I know that for the next couple of hours as her family members one by one came home, she was having an extra long course plus party at the Aikido. When she returned home, and her whole family was downstairs in the living room, she asks them where I am. Of course, everyone is looking at each other like she's crazy, and then I ascend from the stairs looking creepy as fuck, while awkwardly waving at everyone and introducing myself. They still think I'm weird to this day, especially her sister, because she'd been in my friend's room as she was gone, and I was hiding in there. I was so goddamn embarrassed about it years later. My drummer and I went out drinking. Ran into my roommate's ex-girlfriend at the bar. I hit on her, she reciprocated, then my drummer hit on her also, she also reciprocated. We went back to my apartment under the pretense that a three-way was possible. We were all drunk. She and I made out on the way home, heavy petting, all the naughty places, drummer drove separately cause fuck drummers. We got back to my apartment and the making out continued. Then my roommate came home unexpectedly. The girl instantly forgot us, proceeded into my roommate's bedroom with him, and that was that. My drummer was still wasted, I offered my couch. I went to bed, probably jerked off, unimportant. I woke up around 7 to 8 am, only a small handful of hours later, to discover my roommate's cowalker on the couch opposite of where my drummer was, as he had apparently left. I was baffled, since only 2-3 to three hours previous he could barely complete a sentence. I shrugged it off. Later that day, my drummer calls, says dude, who the fuck was that out in the living room with me? I says Nick, he works with my roommate, must have needed a place to crash. Drummer says well. Whoever the fuck he is, I woke up cause I heard a weird noise, like someone smashing cold macaroni. I looked over my shoulder, and saw the crack of some fat white guy's ass, and his right arm moving furiously. He was faking jerking off into your couch. I just got up, said fuck this loudly, and left. 10 years old, stay over at best friend's house. They have this tiny as like fold out couch that's made for toddlers. I sleep on it. Thought I was past my bed wetting days, wrong. I wake up middle of the night drenched, it's late, everyone is still asleep, 
so I change, put my clothes in a plastic bag in my overpass backpack, perfect crime, except for this bus covered miniature couch. How do I solve this dilemma? Well, I fold it up to sitting position and everyone starts waking up, it's normal for me to be up early, I usually am, when I stay over there. In playing Super Nintendo sitting on this couch, friend comes out with milk slash cereal and we start eating cereal, the milk is right there, my plan, I'll spill the half gallon of milk on the couch to cover the piss, and explain the wetness, perfect crime. Except that, my friend's baby sister, a two year old, cute little girl, plops right down on the little couch right next to me, and smells a piss and reaches her hand into the couch, and just screams I peed and starts crying. I'm sitting there, realizing this is probably the best scenario, the two year little angel has just saved me from a lifetime of embarrassment at the hands of my best friend, except, then the mom comes over, gets livid that the little girl peed on the couch, and spanks the living sheet out of her, I feel horrible about it to this very day. She was such a cute little girl too. Fact the throwaway. I was sleeping over at my mate's place, like I would do pretty much 2 or 3 times per month. I grew up in the bush, and had no electricity, let alone cable, and lots of shit happened. This was between the ages of 12 to 18 point I was once woken by his dingo ex humping the sheet out of me on the spare bed. My arms were pinned under the covers, so there was fuck all I could do about it. We found a stash of his dad slash mum's weird born. There was a teapot with a dill, do spout, and maybe a shemale. Like I said, wit. We watched it to the end. Then there was the time I couldn't get to sleep one night, and just lay in the spare bedroom thinking. The the noise started. I knew that noise. My friend's not so little sister was going hard at it. I did what anyone would do in this situation. I stayed right the fuck where I was, and didn't make a noise, until I thought she was asleep then I fapped with the fury of million teenagers. When I was in my early 20s I ended up having another sleepover, just with little C's. Still one of the most mind blowing such adventures of my life. Girl I knew staying at my house, after we'd went to see some bands. She suggests putting on a movie and looks through my DVD collection before lifting out the Spongebob Squarepants movie, and ask me if we could watch it. She then mentions she brought a bottle of rosé wine, and so naturally I go and grab two glasses when she requests. We sit there watching the movie intently, before we both simultaneously take a sip of the wine. Turns out neither of us liked wine, so we then just neck the glass of wine. She asks if I want another, to which I replied, only if you're having so between us, we begin necking glass after glass of this wine which we both hated. During the point where Spongebob and Patrick are crying, because they aren't men, I feel something moving up my leg and glance over. She's running her hand up my leg, and looking at me with this look of let's get frisky. Both of us were virgins at this, so we didn't really know exactly what way we do things, both incredibly nervous about it, but we proceeded in a sensible fashion. For play for a while, before actually having sex. We are having sex, and then at the point, when we both reach climax, the movie comes to the point and the soundtrack for our first penetrative Oscarism comes on. I'm a goofy goober, rock. We both start laughing uncontrollably at that, and she begins asking me to keep laughing, as the plug was still in the plug hole. At that stage, her mother rings her, and somehow catches on exactly to what had just happened, and her mother the following day asks her did I hear Spongebob in the background? Tell me that wasn't on when you two started. TLDR lost virginity to Spongebob movie, girl's mother didn't approve of our choice of adult entertainment which got us started. I have a best friend that I live 3 hours away from, and so when I spend the night at her house, it's always for a few days. One time, when we are 17, about to turn 18, we decide her house is too small for us. So we get her boyfriend to take us to their friend Dane's house, who I didn't know. He was 24 and kind of creepy, but oh well, he had a nice house in the middle of nowhere. But then we decide that we really need to sleep in a tent right faking now. No one has one, so we try to buy one. But the problem is, she's not allowed to sleep where her boyfriend does, and his parents are at Walmart, also trying to buy a tent. I don't fucking know. We have to leave to keep from being caught, and we come back an hour later, and buy a tent and haul us back to Dane's house. 
We set up the tent and go inside for hot dogs. Dane's cousins and aunts and uncles arrive, and we are in the midst of a family reunion I think. They all just stare at me, Ariel, my best friend, and John, her boyfriend, as we watched Donnie Darko point it's about 3am and the family is still there, staring at us in between conversations, waiting for us to leave. So I mention that I'm tired, and we go out to the tent, and Dane's 11 year old cousin decides she wants to sleep in this 3 person tent with us. Well Dane takes up 2 third s of the space in the middle, Ariel and John are on one side of him, and me and his cousin are squashed on the other side. We forgot blankets and mattresses, but oh well, it's summer we fall asleep, and I wake up to my friend, having sex with her boyfriend. I pretend I'm still asleep, wondering why they felt the need in front of an 11 year old. I fall back asleep, and about an hour or so later, I wake up to a huge snort. I thought it was Dane at first, but he hadn't made a noise all night. Then I hear two at once, followed by dogs barking. I punched Dane in the face, and asked him if there were bears around here. He said no, why? I told him what I heard, and then it happens again, and he says, oh shit, my sister's horses. Apparently his sister had free range horses that we are right outside our tent. I thought we were gonna die. I couldn't sleep the rest of the night point the next day. We decided it was a good idea to stay again for some reason. Dane's family was still there, so we went out hanging out all over town and we rented some movies like Vampire Suck and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've never seen it and we were trying to get John to watch it. We hang out till it's night and we go back to Dane's. We start watching the first one, while Dane's grandfather watches, which just made things really awkward. He's a hardcore religious guy, and watched it like it was the spawn of Satan. So we turned it off and he left. Ariel put in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and goes to the bathroom once it starts going point after the girl pulls the gun out of her hula, John, who is 19, starts to cry and hold on to me for dear life, I'm trying to calm him down, when Ariel comes back. I try to tell her this movie is too intense for him, and she just stares at me, like I made him latch onto me. I pushed John off, and turned the movie off, and he went back to normal. We had enough of the horses, and decided to sleep in the house on the couch and floor. I was thinking about how weird everything had been, and I couldn't get to sleep when I saw John move next to Ariel and cover her with a blanket. I decided now was the time to turn up the volume on my music, and try to drown out their sech. It didn't work, and I know Dane's whole family heard it. I didn't sleep that night either. We stayed another day. That one was normal. We played Left 4 Dead and Scott Pilgrim. I told Ariel I thought his family had enough of us, and that we should go back to her house. Weirdest stay I had while with her. When I was around 11 or 12 my friends and I decided to spend the night at my house. It was my brother, Connor, my two friends. Kurt and Mike, and I and it was going to be a standard night of watching movies and playing games. Well my family had just moved into a bigger house with more land, so we were in a new place that was not very well lit compared to what I was used to, and I was already trying to get used to the new place. Well, we decided to rent the ring that night from Blockbuster as it had just come out on DVD. Even though this is a horror movie we are all acting brave and saying that a movie won't scare us. We head back to my house and pop the DVD in. Right away things are bad, when the menu is freaky enough to bother us somewhat, but we continue agonist out better judgement. So, after roughly 2 creepy hours the movie is over, and we are all thoroughly scared sheetless. Kurt decides he needs to go home immediately, and calls his grandma to pick him up. The rest of us try to go to sleep, but are too afraid and end up staying in my mum's room the entire night. On a side note the Cowboy Bebop episode on that night was the one with the hitman who looked like an older guy but had the mind of a child. Good episode. Every year, a good friend, Bailey, of mine has a few friends sleep over after his birthday party. So, this year was a little interesting. One of his best friends, Christian, is younger and so I always used to give him crap for being like the puppy that would follow Bailey around, but the kid's alright in my book, though pretty spoiled, not relevant. The prankster friend, Joe, of Bailey's wants to do the hand in the warm water trick, and decides to do it on the first kid that falls asleep. 
so, it's getting to be about 1 colon 30 over 2 am and the lightweights are starting to pass out slowly. This starts among two kids, one of which is Christian, we were going to leave the other kid alone, because he's a little more rigid, and we didn't want to be as holes for waking him up, and also he asked us not to, so, Joe gets the water all set, and Christian's pretty deeply dozed off. As Joe gets the water to Christian's fingers, Christian, of course, wakes up for half a second and moves, but also mumbles something we couldn't really make out. This becomes semi-important. Fast forward to another two kids being out, this time Bailey is one of them. Joe decides to be dumb, get Bailey's open laptop, take a picture, and make it his profile picture on Facebook. It was the funniest thing at 4am. Joe gets it taken, and has just finished changing the profile, when, undisturbed, Christian learns forward a perfect 90 degrees, eyes closed, and says Bailey. Where's Bailey? I've got to tell him. I've got to find him quick. We call to him. Nothing we obviously had a new funniest thing. Sleeping over at my friend's house, probably the second time my friends had decided to drink in our high school career, GR10. I was staying sober that night, since I had recently been sick. We were all sleeping over at our friend's house for the night, before his mom and her boyfriend left to go out for the night she gave us a 10 minute speech on drinking responsibly. Fast forward to 2am when her and her boyfriend come back home hammered, screaming at each other, smashing sheet upstairs. Of course all of my friends can hear this going on. The drunk boyfriend comes downstairs to the bed that I'm sleeping in and starts harassing me and slapping me. I wasn't a small guy even at this age, so I decided to follow him out to the basement living room where he was trying to unleash more terror. He throws a huck at me, I dodge it, and knock his drunkard's head first into a dehumidifier. This man is begging me to stop, so I go back to the bed. He literally runs in 2 minutes later, and starts feeding me shots to the head point. As soon as we saw sunlight we got the fuck out of this place. Only to be greeted by my friend's mother who offered to cook us breakfast after her boyfriend assaulted us. I don't know why we didn't leave sooner. Probably very awkward for my friend. So I was sleeping with the rest of the guys in a fairly large tent. We had just finished a very long day running around and playing in the sand that we were completely exhausted and fell asleep pretty quick. But the problem was that it was freaking hot all day and we sweated like no tomorrow doing our activities together. So in the middle of the night, I awoke with the strongest faking urge to pee, as if Poseidon himself cursed my bowels and demanded the flujits to be released. So I hop out of the bed and as quick as I could start to don my gear. Getting the helmet strapped on, burlap sack with metal plates for the chest thrown over me, everything because we couldn't leave the tent without it. But I couldn't hold it in and run 300 feet to the bathrooms in time, I had to go now. So I ran outside the tent and started pissing near the entrance, right behind one of the guys sitting on a chair in front of the tent. The dude was going what the fuck? I kept saying over and over, I'm so sorry, I couldn't hold it. I'm so sorry. The moment I was done I quickly ran back inside the tent and fell asleep promptly. I was horrified the next day if he was able to tell who I was, but I don't think the night spotlights gave enough light near our tent for him to see my face. Needlessly to say, I felt embarrassed as sheet peeing right behind him and knowing he had to stay there for another 3 hours with the smell of piss behind him. I was 22, the gear was battle rittle to simulate flak vest, we had been running around filling sandbags all day, I had 16 canteens of water just to stay hydrated, he was a tent guard, and I was in worry a week of basic military training. TLDR, pissed behind a guy's chair in which he had to stay by for 3 hours, because I couldn't make it to the bathroom. My parents were out, and we had a babysitter for the night, but I got a call from my friend late in the evening to spend the night. The babysitter okays it, so I hop on my bike, and ride three lights over to my friend's house, and leave my bike on their lawn. We proceed to party hard with Nintendo, junk food, and a special screening of some Nightmare on Elm Street sequel, which freaked us all out to say the least. We retire to the bedroom for more Nintendo when his dad pulls into the driveway. My friend and his brother starts to flip their sheet, because apparently he was not allowed to have anyone over after all but didn't think their dad would be home. 
they make me hide in the closet and said I could come out after he went to bed. I hear him ask whose bike is outside and they say that I left it over so he puts in their garage. After about an hour or so his dad opens the closet door, looks for something as I'm hiding under clothes in the corner, my stomach flips over, balls go numb and retract. It was the scariest moment of my life, lol, what would he have actually done? He shuts the door and eventually goes to bed. My friends return, open the closet door and the window, and tell me to run for it. So long after dark, after being terrified of a nightmare on Elm Street and traumatized by hiding in a closet for hours I have to walk home. Just as I get within the glove the first street light it goes out. My terror goes from 9 to 10 and I book it to the next light, blink, that one goes out as well. So I run straight home completely convinced I'm about to die. I run into a completely dark house no babysitter, no sisters, no notes. I'm just freaking out confused, panicked. Then the babysitter and my sisters walk in as they decided to go out for some late night ice cream what a weird night. Stealing this story from a friend of mine, but I know both people involved, and the versions match up. My buddy's youth group had a lock in one night, where they all go, and do churchy cult ish stuff, and go to sleep. When it is time to go call it a night, everyone retires to their respective sleeping bags and passes out. Now my buddy Trevor is a sleepwalker, and it can be bad at times. He could do anything while in his trance state, so he usually sleeps on the top bunk. Unfortunately, this was not an option. At around 3 o'clock in the morning, my buddy John is stirred by the rustling of a sleeping bag towards the middle of the room, but falls back asleep. Point it is now 3.20 when John hears more rustling, but closer this time. He is on edge, but again falls back to sleep. Not 5 minutes later, and John feel movement near him, and pops his eyes open. Less than a foot above his face, is Trevor's bare ass, puckering as he tried to shove a log out the chute. Luckily by this point John is awake enough to thwart the initial assault, and wiggles out of the line of fire. Unfortunately for Trevor, the launch sequence has progressed too far to be aborted, and he casually drops a steaming care package where John's face was moments ago. As soon as John recoils from the series of events that just ensued, he woke Trevor from his sleepwalking slumber and informs him of the gross miscalculation his slumbering mind made. In a rush of whispers and stealth Trevor works as silently and diligently to remove all traces of evidence from ground zero. Luckily for him, he barely escaped with his reputation intact, although we will never let him live it down. TLDR, sleepwalker nearly sleep sheets on sleeping friend. When I was in elementary school, there was this kid in my neighborhood who would always try to bribe us into being friends with him by running to his house to give us soda. Well, I always kind of felt bad for this kid and tried to befriend him. This one day he invited me over to his house for a sleepover. Everything went normal at first, his mom gave us food and we did normal kid stuff. At around 1100pm, my friend and I were lounging on the couch in his basement watching ESPN. This is where it gets really weird for me. I remember dozing off on the couch with the SPN still on in the background. I don't know what made me wake up, but I jolted awake, and in front of me my friend was completely naked. He was doing this weird as dancing thing, and was grabbing both of his as cheeks, and making really crazy noises. I was so shocked, that I initially didn't say anything, then out of nowhere he turns around thinking I'm still asleep, and he starts like walk hopping backwards towards me, and while still grabbing his as cheeks he starts flapping and spreading his cheeks together really fast. All I remember doing is saying dude what the fuck. Grabbed my pillow and ran back to my house point needless to say this kid eventually went on to become a middle school teacher, wound up diddling one of his students. Not too surprised by that one. Nearly everybody at the sleepover was a couple so imagine 5 pairs of boyfriend slash girlfriend in sleeping bags in a row. When everybody in the room had gone asleep I was still restless and couldn't sleep. I turn over and the guy next to me had his head on his girlfriend's shoulder and was just staring at me. I whispered to him you're right. But no answer. It took me another hour to fall asleep but every time I turn around he's still there staring at me. The next morning I ask his girlfriend what was that about, and she goes oh Carol, yeah he sleeps with his eyes open, don't worry about it, he's a heavy sleeper, and probably doesn't remember anything. 
as we are all leaving the house he walks up to me, puts his face close to mine, and whispers I know exactly what you did last night, and then glares at me and my girlfriend as we walk out the door. Strangest thing ever and neither of us know what he's on about. Other stuff happened too like finding a someone's condom collection and two girls making their bras kiss when they thought nobody was watching, a very good sleepover. Okay, I can do this. It wasn't my sleepover, but my 11 year old little sisters. She had around 10 or so friends over from our Christian school. Being Halloween me and a mate, both 15 at the time, decided to get drunk for the first time on a bottle of scotch. Some queen's coronation stuff my parents had bought 16 years earlier on the birth of my brother for his graduation. Anyway we basically mixed it with cheap coke and sculled a whole bunch 10 minutes later we were stumbling around mattresses in a room full of sleeping 11 year old girls, slurring all kinds of bullshit, tripping on sheets, laughing uncontrollably at nothing, just being general fuckheads. Anyway, these girls didn't know what the fuck was happening, perhaps a mixture of dread, curiosity and bewilderment overcame them, so they just watched. We carry on for what feels like an hour or so, but was most likely just 5 minutes of vile misconduct. Next thing I remember was laying face up on our newly carpeted lounge room floor. My friend sprawled on the couch next to me and the silhouette of a gang of 11 year old girls standing in the lounge archway pointing, mouths covered, screaming he's throwing up on him. As me and our friend violently emptied the contents of our stomach onto everything in proximity. Luckily, I blacked out after that. Next day was the worst hangover I have had to date. My poor mum, I love you mum, had to explain to each and every parent, including the parent of my mate, how we both had food poisoning or some shit. My dad was very disappointed, and I was made feel pretty low about it for the next few weeks, not to mention retold, for many months following, stories of how important the bottle of scotch was. My sister was quite distraught, as I recall, but she got over it. Meanwhile our carpets smelled like rancid scotch for a good year or two after that. We laugh about it today. I was 16, had gone to a different state, to house sit with my brother, 21 at the time. He tells me some of his friends are coming over for a couple nights. I figure awesome, I get to hang out with a bunch of college kids. First night, everything was awesome. Smoked a whole bunch of weed, watched some TV, played kings in the hot tub room, and got blisteringly drunk. Passed out in my bed fucking awesome. Second day, different story. Smoke a whole bunch of weed all damn day. Like all day, like wake up at 10am and smoke a bowl every half an hour for the rest of the day. And this was some of the finest sheet any tranny from the Lower East Side could get you. This sheet was fired to trips to Amsterdam, and I still haven't been that high again. Anyways night time rolls around, let me make something crystal clear here, I was so high I don't remember any of this, it's been told back to me by my brother, so right, it's night time and apparently we were all watching firefly in the living room and I get up and start walking around, going from room to room in a slow zombie shuffle, never leaving the first floor, just tacking a cruise around, I did this for about half an hour, the whole time mumbling to myself about god knows what. Then the pants come off. I continue to walk around until finally my brother stops me and asks what the fuck I'm doing cause I was freaking out his friends. My next words will live in infamy. Time to piddle. I was about to piss on the ground in front of 10 to 15 people including my brother. He quickly said, the fuck man geo to the bathroom. He walked me there. I peed and after that I passed out on the couch. No one said anything the next morning, no one mentioned they had seen my junk, or that I had nearly peed on one of them. They played it really cool, and didn't make me feel like a jackass. I didn't find out about my piddle escapade until a week later no memory, no idea what the fuck happened. All I actually remember, is getting up that morning, eating breakfast and smoking that first bowl. After that, nothing. My friend invited me over because he had tickets to a football game that night, and it ran late. Well he invited his other friend who I had never met before. So after the game my friend wanted to score some weed. So in my mind I'm like, okay I'll see what I could do. Well we finally got some, and he was so excited to smoke it. But, I forgot my pieces, so I had to improvise with an apple. Yes an apple. So I make it and will, 
for the sake of the story, wanted to keep it in the fridge to keep it cold. Well I wanted to keep it in my bag, because his parents weren't dumb. So I give in, and let him put it in the fridge. While he does this, I go to take a shower. While I'm getting ready to take a shower, I hear his dad yelling at him asking him what he was using the apple for. Well I'm freaking out, so I run out in my bath towel freaking out, only to be staring face to face with the Will's friend, half naked, and about to pee myself out of fear his dad would catch on. Just when I think anything couldn't get any more awkward, Will comes in crying about how much sheet sheet he will be getting into. So I'm standing there half naked with a crying teenager and a random kid I've never met. Twas an odd night. A little late, but I'll just leave this here, maybe it will entertain you in class. When I was about 15 or so my two best friends slept over, and we took a bottle of white wine from the pantry, never to be noticed. Killed it in about 10 minutes, got another, and a bag of Aureus. In the middle of eating Aureus and telling a story, I suddenly feel well, you probably know the feeling. I'll be right back, and I run to the bathroom. I never understood the term projectile vomit, and kinda assumed it was a made up thing it is not. I hurled Aurea wine quite perpendicular to the floor, a few feet across the bathroom, and bank shot it off the toilet seat. In my drunken stupor I managed to get most of it in the toilet that way. Then I passed out, hugging the bowl. Woke up around 5.30am to my mom trying to get ready for work, banging on the bathroom door, and asking what the hell was going on in there. I woke up, hastily tried to clean the vomit, which reeked and looked like mud slash poop, and staggered out like nothing happened. To this day, don't like to drink white wine. I'm a little late to the party so nobody will see this, but I have a fun one. I'm probably about 14 or 15, and am sleeping over at a friend's house. His parents and sister were somewhere on vacation, so we had the whole house to ourselves. So we are watching movies, and playing games etc. At one point he leaves me alone watching the movie, and is gone for a while. So I go check on him, and find him in another room sitting on a couch watching something else. I ask him what's going on, and he makes up some excuse to leave again. Don't remember what it was. So I sit down on the couch, where I had just found him, and watch what was on TV their point, when I reach into one of the cracks between the cushions, probably just my ad striking and me doing random sheet, and feel something weird in there. I pull it out, and see that it is his underpants. Guess I found out, why he needed some alone time. He was mass too, baiting there and probably pulled up his pants, and changed the channel quickly, when he heard me coming, and then made an exit again to finish. But if you think this is the end of it, you are wrong. I got horny by the thought of what he had just done there and what might have happened if I had been a little more quiet in my approach. So I in turn pulled out my dick and started jacking it. But I also still had his underpants and so after short consideration I decided to try what I had seen in Japanese born and sniff on them. The smell really turned me on and so I proceeded to jack it while basically breathing through them. Great oscgasm, I have to say. TLDR I outperverted the guy who jacked it at a sleepover, by a lot. It wasn't really a sleepover per se. Me and two mates went to Korea for a holiday. Let's call one of my mates Blondie, he is from South Africa, and the other is from Korea, let's call him Barksar. The plan was meet up in Hong Kong, where I lived, other Barksar and Blondie were living Sydney and Melbourne respectively, then stay in HK for a week then go to Korea for a week. So we get to Korea and everything is dandy. The Barksar's family live in Seoul, so he stayed with them some nights while me and Blondie were staying in a hotel room together. The plan was that Barksar would meet us most days and me and Blondie would work out what we wanted to do in the morning. I wanted to see the GSL and Blondie wanted to visit the border. Barksar's family didn't have the room and we didn't really want to stay with them anyway. We got drunk a couple of nights and Barksar didn't want to go home to his family because they were a bit strict, so he would make up excuses. Soju, a Korean drink is ridiculously cheap and tastes just like vodka, so that was a plus. One night it was too late for Barksar to go back, so he let his mum know that he would stay at our hotel room which we didn't have a issue with. The hotel might have, but they didn't say anything. So we get back and get into bed. 
I have the single on the left, Blondie on the right on a single, and Barksar on the floor on the far right near the window point I snore, so I'll let Barksar and Blondie fall asleep first, they complain while staying at my place. I drift off about an hour later. For some reason I woke up in the middle of the night and I can hear this really weird wet squelching noise, to me it sounded just like having a sneaky fap, but I couldn't be sure. Just this really slow wet squelching noise. I heard it once and dismissed it, but it would go off like every couple of seconds. Squelch, squelch, just like that, like playing with fetched goop. It's at this time that Blondie wakes up and I noticed. I roll over to face him and say hey Blondie, can you hear that noise? He is like what noise? The squelch goes off. That noise. He just says what the fuck. I'm trying to work out what's going on and I say I think Barksar is having a wank. It was the only reasonable explanation, because we and Blondie both had our hands above the blankets. Barksar didn't have a retainer or anything, he didn't snore, nor did he make any noise when sleeping usually. He had a jacket over him at the time if I recall, so we couldn't really tell. We have a quiet chuckle to ourselves in the midst of being completely grossed out. Me and Blondie ponder for a moment and I have a feeling just reach the same conclusion and tried to fall back asleep, but every time the squelch would go off we would both cringe. Eventually it stopped, and we fell asleep. A couple of days later Barksar stayed over again after another night of shenanigans. This time we were a bit drunker, so we fell asleep pretty quickly, but the same thing happened. Me and Blondie both knew it wasn't each other, we are quite close, so we would have owned up about it haha. We both woke up again, and this time it was kind of louder. Blondie rolled over, and I got out of bed, and we crept over to watch Barksar to see what was going on. We couldn't see his hands, but he just looked like he was sleeping. Maybe he caught on that we were onto him. Regardless we had no proof. The next day we somehow managed to get on the topic of pleasuring yourself, and I think it was me who blurted it out. Boxer are we you, you know, having a wand last night. Immediately he was like oh my god no why would you say that and Blondie replied well we heard squelching noises last night again and me and Chineman were both awake so we knew it wasn't us. Barksar said I didn't hear anything why would you think it was me? I said well who else could it be? Barksar replies well it wasn't me no way come on haha we both knew it was him but we weren't going to get it out of him. Just glad he wasn't there all the time. It was cold at the time so maybe he disguised it as snow or something, I don't know. Alls I know, is it sounded exactly like having a wank, and it wasn't me or Blondie. TLDR, went to Korea with two mates. One mate and I were sharing room, other had family. Got drunk a couple of nights, guy with family, stayed in our room. Squelching noise in middle of the night, was not me, or the guy I stayed with as he heard it, and we woke up at the same time questioned other guy, no real answer. I have many stories about sleepovers, when I was growing up, ranging from eating loads of nutmeg in a lousy attempt, to get high to waking up, and seeing my friend's mum naked in an open dressing gown, but here's my favorite, so, I was round my mate's house having a typical session of video games, tea, films, and cigarettes, we did this practically every weekend. Everything was going fine, me and three other lads chilling out laughing, chatting, gaming and whatnot. By the way the friend whose house it was had like a whole floor of a house to himself. Huge TV4 games, huge TV4 films, sofa, beds, surround sound etc. We were never bored and his family practically left him to his own devices. And we hear a huge crash come from something downstairs. His granddad comes home wasted, like stupid drunk. Anyway we all laugh and leave him be. About an hour later we are all eating some Mexican food, and the granddad comes upstairs. He walks over to one of my friends picks up his plate of food, and says hoss this? My friend who is really shy freezes up and says nothing. So I chime in, and say it's Mexican, nachos, burritos and stuff. He looks at my friend once again, and yells at the top of his voice, but where's the guacamole? Yes actually phonetically said like that. We all are pretty stunned from that. He then proceeds to walk towards the stairs marching like a brass band shouting guacamole ee 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 until he drops the food all over himself and bounces down the staircase at full speed. 
he landed on his neck, but was perfectly fine point the best par however is, when I wake up at like 4am he is standing on the staircase staring at me holding a pot of guacamole, yelling I found some. We ate our Mexican food at like 10.30pm the previous day. I said shiz and laughed. Woke up to find him passed out the next day at the kitchen table with food still all down his clothes and a pot of guac still in his hand. Funny old grandad. In high school I slept over my best friend's house. We were hanging out playing video games on the Gamma Cube, and then it was time for bed. When the lights were out we'd usually talk about girls. He told me all about this one girl, let's call her Erin because, well, her name was Erin. He really liked her and never had the balls to ask her out. It always came down to the same sad story about me telling him to talk to her, and he never did. Then I'd tell him about whichever girl was holding my interest, usually Jenny if I remember correctly she was a well endowed lass who only got better looking as we got older. But I digress. After we finished talking about how we were going to ask this girl out, or what not we ended up basically telling each other some such fantasy that played out with the aforementioned girl. This was actually a regular event for our weekend slumber parties, and so when the stories started I never thought anything of it. One evening after the stories were finished, and we were heading to bed he kept asking me how big my dick was. I told him the usual it's huge, but he wasn't satisfied. He wanted to see it. I, of course, refused. He kept asking, but eventually gave it a rest and we both went to sleep. I woke up maybe an hour, maybe 10 minutes later. I don't know how hell I'd been asleep, but I do know that he'd just unzipped my sleeping bag and was trying to unzip my jeans. I shouted at him, he clearly thought I was asleep and bounded back into his bed. I told him that wasn't cool and what the fuck were you doing? He just apologized profusely and said he only wanted to see how big someone else's was. I never told anyone and we never spoke about it again. We remained friends through college when he came out of the closet and after college we were roommates before he went apesheet, scared off all his old friends and disappeared halfway through the lease. That's when I started telling the story. By far, the most awkward thing that's happened at a sleepover, if not in life. Too late for anyone to see this, but I'm beyond bored and tired of studying so here goes nothing. I was always part of a cool kid group growing up, baseball players slash football stars crew, because, middle school, and we had a big spend the night party at one of my friends from out of town's house. Well, we had breakfast for dinner that night, bacon, eggs, sausage, etc. At the time, I knew I was allergic to eggs, but I didn't know how allergic. So, when his mom plopped a plate down in front of me, I mentioned it. But everyone else finished everything on their plate besides me, and I was peer pressured by my friend whose house I was staying at to finish everything, and I did, because middle school. Everything went fine the rest of the night, and I didn't feel absolutely terrible, just stomach pains here and there. We settled down to sleep in his basement on three mattresses all pushed together watching jackass. So there we are all lined up in our sleeping bags on the mattresses with me closest to the far wall, and we all drift off. To sleep point I wake up at about 4.30am and instantly know I'm about to throw up, but try to hold it back, because I'm unfamiliar with his house, and don't know where his bathroom is. The holding back lasted for all of 10 seconds followed by me projectile vomiting all over my friends. To make it worse, holding it back caused it to shoot out of my nose, causing extreme pain and my sinuses closing off altogether. They all arose from their slumber to find out they were covered in a terrible 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 mixture of stomach acid and bacon, egg, and sausage. Five of the ten were hit with the mixture including that one cool guy who thinks he runs a middle school. On top of everything, when I throw up, my eyes water 100% of the time and usually run down my face. So they all thought I was crying as well. They all got cleaned up after about an hour or so and they voted to have me call my dad to pick me up. And so I did, except this time there really were tears running down my face point needless to say, I became outcast from the friend group, and whenever I see any of the guys that were there they still bring it up 10 years later. When I was 11 years old I was invited to a birthday party sleepover of a friend. I still remember his face, because he was a red-headed typical ginger with 10 million freckles, and he had a father sister and mother that looked exactly like he did point weird 
Anyhow, the mother was a total freak germaphobe and you could tell she was uneasy the entire time we were there. There were six of us. She was wearing purple surgical gloves and a surgical mask. We weren't allowed to come directly into the house we had to remove our shoes and socks and leave them outside. When we were allowed in we were stuck in the hallway in quarantine, where we had to undergo decontamination because, Ebola point she then made us all put on brand new white socks. After all that it was time for the decontamination, where she brought out some kind of electric steamer that had smelled like Lysol and she disinfected us all. After that it was to the bathroom to wash our hands and faces. We each got our own towel and bar of soap because, cross contamination, which after we were finished, went each kid's towel went into a separate plastic bag to be burned. The entire house was blocked off with clear plastic sheeting, on the floors, tables, chairs, it was everywhere. The places we were allowed to go see followed us around with a bottle of Lysol and wiped everything down. Cake and ice cream came, and we all sat down at the table. She sat there for a good 5 minutes in complete silence just staring at us. It was the most awkward thing ever. Finally, we had cake and ice cream and he then opened his gifts. She opened his gifts for him with a razor and then folded the wrapping before she would let him touch the gift it was sprayed down and decontaminated. The beach was faking insane. Needless to say we never went to another party at his house. His sister was hot as hell and completely embarrassed by her mother. Found out the mother died several years later. Sepsis from gastrointestinal perforation. Everyone was talking about it. Not sure exactly what happened, but rumor was she swallowed razor blades or something. When I was in 4th grade we had class camping trip. I brought a camera. This was in the era of 35mm film cameras. Early 90s. With I had a tent that slept 8 and only had like 4 friends who wanted to stay in it with me, so I got some of the other kids from our class assigned to my tent, 2 of the weird kids, as it happens. Anyways, the camping trip was fine, but about a month later, my mother takes the film from my camera in to be developed at Walmart. Walmart called my mother the next day because of some issues with the roll of film. Walmart wouldn't say what, but that she needed to come down as soon as possible. My mother drove to Walmart, went to photo and they immediately asked her to have a seat and wait a moment 10 minutes later the local police arrive and pull her into a room to ask her some questions. Apparently, two of the faking weird kids had stolen my camera and taken pictures of their 4th grade packages. It also looked like they were drinking faking wine coolers. My mother explained that the roll of film was from a school run camping trip and that she didn't know the kids in the pictures, etc. The cops were understanding and just asked that the photos and negatives with the kid peen on them get destroyed and off she went. Mom gets home and starts to grill me about it. I had no clue and she let me off but I pieced together what happened. Thankfully it was summer and I didn't have to see weird kids until fall. Group of about 8 to 10 football players in sophomore year of high school are all sleeping over at football camp in some empty dorm rooms at a college. One guy is out getting food, which means the others are plotting a prank. This prank however, is gross as sheet point, so the guy thaps out as a case of powdered Gatorade in the room. One of the guys decides to piss into a bottle and mix the Gatorade with it. The guy getting food arrives and is promptly challenged to a chugging contest in front of everyone. Testosterone is blazing, every owns watching, and he accepts the pisser has the other bottle of clean Gatorade. We all cringe. The drinking begins, and the pisser sips, stops and watches with glazed eyes as the victim chugs faster than ever before, slams the empty bottle of piss down to the ground and flexes his muscles like the greatest piss drinking champion this hemisphere has ever seen. Point the room watches, watches, quiets, then bursts into laughter that shakes the building. The guy finds out, wants to fight the pisser, and kept to himself the rest of camp. It was faking brutal. It is time. Time for the story. Time for the story of Nate. Back in grade 5 I was a total pushover. I was that kid who befriended the kids that everyone hated. Nate was the ultimate lurk. The kid that watched from a distance, observing your conversation. The silent predator. Well since everyone hated Nate, and I was the only one decently nice to him, he thought we were friends. One day he invited me to his house for a sleepover. Out of kindness and sympathy, I accepted. 
I went to his house around 5 o'clock, not knowing what to expect. Outside, Nate said it was big and nice. Inside, it was a disgusting pigsty. The first thing I noticed out of the mess was the large brown stain on the wall. Being 11 years old I immediately assumed it was sheet, but just for closure I asked him what it was. It's just chocolate, see? Nate said, scooping a clump off and putting it into his mouth. That was the point where I realized I had made a mistake. The rest of the night was relatively normal, my standards weren't very high, as we basically watched videos on his computer and played his PlayStation. When the night came and it was time to sleep Nate brought me to his room. Nate's room was probably the cleanest in the house, but still very messy. I looked around and saw only one bed in the room, so I asked where I'd sleep. He simply said in the bed with me. I refused and demanded to sleep somewhere nice. He brought me his brother's room. His brother's room was at a scale version of the entire house. The highlight of his brother's room was the omelette on the floor, an omelette that looked freshly made. Nate forced me into the beanbag cushion on the floor. It served as an island out of a shark infested sea. I couldn't sleep for most of the night, too afraid of what Nate may do to me. I eventually did. I got up early as I could and left. Nate and I still talked a lot after that. Eventually everyone began to catch on to the hints I was giving out and started to call Nate out. Nate used to be my current friend's cult leader, worth shipping him out of fear and respect. To this day Nate still lives in this town and still lurks around and we are still in contact. If this post does well I'll post a few more Nate stories if you guys want. TLDR. Nate is love. Nate is life couple stories, went for a sleepover at a dude named Thor's house who said that he could arrange sexual pleasure for me. I go over there and he's got a multitude of stuffed animals with the crochets cut out of them. Turns out he was a stuffed animal faker and he pimped out his stuffed animals to his friends. I politely refused to partake in his eccentric brand of entertainment, but I had already agreed to stay the night and his parents were making dinner for me and all, so I stayed. That night was terrifying. I remained awake all night listening to the sounds of him furiously wrapping a giant purple bunny. Johnny Depp voice from fear and loathing in Las Vegas. You have no idea of the terror I felt. Yes, there is a previous story that I posted about a party I went to in an affluent neighborhood where people were smoking crack and having sex with stuffed animals. Both stories are true. No bullshit. Don't believe me? So be it point, when I was young, I lived in a house with a garage. Myself and some friends fixed the garage up in order to make it a hangout. It was on the ground floor of the house, obviously, so it was away from my mom, being that the living quarters of the house were on the second floor, who was a bit of a faking psycho. It had a TV, and we huked up the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. Yes it was that long ago, I'm faking old, so we pretty much had all the amenities someone in his early teens could want. It also had what we called the piss hole, which was just a hole in the wall that we would all piss into. The hole opened into an area under the stairs the floor of which was all dirt, so it was fine to piss in there, as the ground would absorb it. Anyway, one night my buddy Steve invited a girl he had been trying to bone over because there was nowhere for him to take her. I guess his mom had lost her job and was staying home all the time, so he couldn't take her there. Being that my mom would come downstairs to check on us periodically, if she knew I had people over, he told the girl to dress up in boys clothes in an attempt to fool my mom if she came down to check on us because we all knew my mom would never let a girl stay overnight with all of us boys down in that garage. So the girl came over and she did a really good job of dressing up like a boy. She put her hair up in a ball cap and everything. She looked like an effeminately featured boy. My mom did indeed come down to check on us and even talked to the girl and my mom hadn't an inkling of what was going on. She thought the chick was just another one of my friends. In a hoe, later on that night, we managed to go up to the corner store and get some local douche to buy us some beer. We all got 40 ounce bottles of malt liquor and that really plastered us up good. Keep in mind we were all like 13 to 14. So finally, we all decided to go to sleep, so we turned the lights out. We all knew that this was when Steve was going to pull his move on the girl. So we were all listening intently for any sounds of the score. 
All we heard was a bunch of shuffling around for about half an hour along with some lip smacking. They were making out. Obviously. I was just starting to doze off when I heard my other buddy Graham get up to take a piss. The sound of his shuffling over to the piss hole snapped me back into consciousness and then suddenly, my buddy Steve shouted almost at the top of his lungs, I found Duterte, I don't know why, which must have woken up my mom, because I heard her almost instantly get up and start stomping down the stairs. I told everyone to shut the fuck up and get back in bed, but it was too late. My buddy was pissing and Steve was sucking on a titty. My mom bust into the room and immediately turned the lights on and saw Graham with his dick thrust into a hole and Steve making out with what she thought was another boy. The girl had small breasts and was still wearing boy's clothes. She shrieked and went back upstairs and called my dad. My parents were divorced at the time and I could hear her telling my dad that we were having homosexual orgies in the garage. She actually said, it's like a Roman bathhouse down there. I had to spend the next few months trying to convince both of my parents that I wasn't gay. TLDR, friend makes out with girl, dressed in boy's clothes. Mom catches him. Thinks we're all gay four months afterward. A couple of unrelated incidents. In around 6th grade, I was at a buddy's, we'll call him Alan. There was another guy there, we'll call him Andrew. Andrew fell asleep first, so Alan and Andy were trying to prank him with the old, put his hand in warm water, so he will piss himself. Andrew never pissed himself, and we were getting anxious. So Alan decided, since he had to take a leak he would pee on Andrew's pants, while he was asleep in Alan's bed, wearing them. So he did. We woke Andrew up in disgust telling him to grow up, because he had pissed himself. It was hilarious, but now that I'm older I feel a little bad for the guy. Second incident. Alan's again. A few years later. Alan's sister's 21 birthday party. We were around 15 at the time, and we're all getting drunk for the first time. Alan's sister, get friends, and pants went to bed. Then things hated up between two friends of ours. Jake and Cole. They were mouthing off, and Jake being a bigger guy was ready to fight. He was always trying to fight. Cole told him to lead the way outside. Then Cole shut and locked the door, leaving Jake outside, in his boxes, in the snow. Everyone was aggravated at Jake, so we went to the deck above Jake and all pissed on it, so it would drip through to him. It was also hilarious, but Jake was furious and started making a lot of noise. Alan's sister made us let him, as long as he went straight to sleep. Which, he did. So we drew dicks all over him. Alan's parents were not impressed with our art was fun anyways, because Jake was a dick. It was 7th grade and 4 over 20, and I had never smoked weed before. I was hanging out at my friend Jake's house playing basketball in front of his house when a kid from our class rode by in his bike, Dylan, he's one of those guys that your friends with in school, but not outside of, he stopped and started talking to us. It led to us deciding that we would sneak out of the house early and go smoke weed with these kids at a park at 2am. I decided I would sleep over at Dylan's house and we would make it back to my Jake's house at around 2am and throw rocks at his window when we were there. So it's around 1am and Dylan and I decide to start making a move for Jake's house. We had to get out of his house first, he had the squeakiest floors and the loudest sliding door ever. We get outside and now we have to bolt it between street lights, because what reason would us two have to be out 1.30 am on 4 over 20? None. Every time we saw headlights, we'd bolt for bushes and duck behind them. We make it to Jake's house and throw rocks his window for 15 minutes, but he doesn't come out or open his window to acknowledge us. So we just go by ourselves and get to the park where three other kids are there with weed and an aluminum foil pipe. There was one insanely hot chicken to kids that I had no idea even smoked, they thought the same of me when they saw me. I actually chickened out and didn't smoke any when they passed it to me. One of the kids was laughing so faking hard and playing in the sprinklers that had turned on and started peeing while acting like he was a figure skater twirling. We started heading home, Dylan said he couldn't feel his legs or arms and we fell asleep. I woke up before Dylan did and just went home without anyone his house knowing because I faking hate waking up before the other kid their house. TLDR. On 4 over 20 I chickened out of smoking pot 
kid just peeing twirls while high and laughing in sprinklers fact waking up before the other kid at their house on a sleepover. So about two years ago my buddy and a few friends went out on the town and my apartment was close by. My friend and I were gonna crash there anyhow, but this girl that I was trying to get with came and slept over too. I was thrilled about it until I realized she was hair holding drunk. I had this L-shaped couch and she ended up sleeping right in the middle of it. My buddy Vinny and I had even gotten her a bucket in case she puked, but by the grace of god she didn't. So I wake up to her putting on a pair of my PJs and sliding into bed with me. I was fairly excited to say the least, but then Vinny wakes up and she rushes back into the living room making me think maybe she was keeping our little cuddle a secret. She sat right back down in her little L-shaped corner of the couch for the next two hours as we all reminisce about the previous evening. It's time to take my guests home, and she insists on taking my PJS which of course I'm more than happy to do hoping she will one day return them for a follow up snuggle. Later that day after a delicious hangover meal my buddy Vinny and I get back to my apartment and we start getting pretty lit. As we sink into the couch my elbow seems to be abnormally cold as it slides over the L-shaped corner of the couch. I go to investigate, and it's quite damp. I initially think Vinny has spilled a huge drink then as we are accusing one another it hits us. That girl's butt was right over the slit in the couch cushions. Of course we sniff it to make sure and right as rain it's piss, but we also get a hint of poo, but it's an old couch, so we think nothing of it at first, but as we peel those cushions open there is a turt ever so gently laying there like a hot dog in a hot dog bun. She never returned my PJS, and I never want them back. She sheet and pissed my couch, and didn't even try to clean it up. Thanks for sliding into my bed that morning. Had a few sleepovers as a child, nothing too memorable. When I was about 14 or 15 the popular thing to do stay over at a friend's house and rock some 4 player goldeny all night, no odjob allowed, and basically whoever had the lowest score would give up the controller. This was an every weekend affair, hopefully the kid hosting the party didn't have a 13 inch TV. One particular weekend we are all playing again at some own's house and I go downstairs around 1 or 2 in the morning to look for some drinks. Run into the host's sister who is a little less than a year younger than her brother, Irish twins, and maybe only a couple months younger than me who also had a friend over for the evening. Decided to hang with them instead. Great decision. Had my first encounter with girls that night. Serious making out. Some hand and mouth action and some boobage for play a golden e was fun. This was better. Ended up dating that guy's sister for a while afterwards. He was not very happy. I have two incidents that happened at sleepovers. The first took place when I was 6 or 7. I had just moved to a new house and a girl around the same age lived next door. Her mom invited me to sleep over and my mom agreed. This was probably the second or third time we had hung out, so I didn't know her very well. Despite that, I had fun. Until it was time for us to go to bed. This girl would not shut up. I lay there for 3 hours, just listening to her talk, never getting a word in myself, other than, can we go to sleep now? Every so often. Finally she trails off, and I start drifting off to sleep. I'm woken up abruptly by her hissing in my ear, I will kill you. She then grabs my hand and places a small figurine of a duck in it, and says you can have this if you want. I immediately got out of bed, and told her mom to take me home. Needless to say, that was the last sleepover we had. The second happened when I was 20, and my boyfriend at the time and I lived at his parents place. Our friend was sleeping over, and we had all had a lot to drink. His mom was sleeping downstairs on the couch, because her room was getting remodeled, and our friend was sleeping on the couch adjacent to her. In the middle of the night, I woke up to her screaming his name, and I ran downstairs to see him pissing all over her face as she lay on the couch. The funny thing was, he was still fast asleep. The even funnier thing is, that he did the same thing a few weeks later. Luckily no one was on the couch the second time, 